Welcome back to the Metropol Grid. My name is Andre. Thanks so much for tuning in. It's April 14th, 2024. It's a Sunday. We're not normally here. And thanks so much for dropping by, actually, on short notice. Um, it's nice to know that you'd be willing to hang out a bit. Are we about to 1.16.2.D ourselves? Hey, Spark, how's it going? This deck list is, like, unironically so cool. Uh, there's two deck lists that have uh, fun interactions recently with Bug Out Bag. Um, this one's the more practical one. Tuno posted another one, and it's really funny. Uh, but I don't think it actually does anything. Um, this one does have a win condition. Uh, we're probably not going to play this one today. We're probably going to play this one on Tuesday. How's everyone doing? Hopefully you're doing well, mind you. It's a good time zone maybe for a lot of people. Respect Matryoshka. Yeah, matryoshka has been like doing okay in competitive standard apparently in the last couple of weeks. Uh, we saw it in like Sid's and Jason's, um, what's it called? Uh, it's just uh, it's Chinyo deck. How's everyone doing? I was going to sit down today and do some capture for some video stuff. Mind you, we have no stream on Thursday, so we were kind of due for a makeup stream. Uh, we're not going to be here on Thursday. We're going to be on the road going to Mansion Runner. We'll be back the following Tuesday. There will be a Tuesday stream this week, though. So why not get a stream in this Sunday um, when it makes some sense, which is nice. Um, I'll try and get a video out for Thursday. It might not be like well produced. It might not be like a deck dive. It might just be like here's some gameplay uh, because I still have some gameplay to capture. Sunday stream, Jinx. Hey, Eric, thanks so much for joining me on, on Thursday. I had a lot of fun, as much as uh, we made Ace Group look really bad. That's on us, I guess. <laughs> hey, Rahit, Sunday stream. Nice to meet you uh, in person last weekend. How was your side of the clips? Rahit, mind you, came up with some friends to Montreal to go see the clips. We had a totality last week. It was quite, quite nice. These stream times are getting wild, and I like it. Yo, Vlad, what's up? Um, Congratulations, mind you. Something has to be said about Fight Club. Fight Club just wrapped up yesterday. The finals were like the final game was like two hours long. It was really, really, really long. And Fight Club for me is like, I don't know. I have like mixed feelings about it because it's super, super the coolest thing. Um, like the caliber of play, the sort of like camaraderie, the way that the the videos have been up, the people discussing, like everyone is just having the best time and everyone's so nice. Like you can't say enough for organized competitive runner is like so chill and so fantastic. It's fun to watch, especially in this tournament where there's a lot of diversity built in inherently for the decks uh, themselves. Uh, I, however, couldn't follow this. I didn't know what was going on in Fight Club. I feel really bad. I should have supported it more, I think. It did just come to a wrap. You can watch the final. It's up on Axie's channel. But like, I didn't know the format. I didn't know what teams are getting knocked out. We never did any streaming of it. And I'm glad that a lot of people are coming to other channels to watch that stuff. That's fantastic. Uh, but it feels like something that I wish I was a bit easier to catch up on. But I'm so excited for the future of this because like, check out the finals. I guess we're not going to exactly spoil the results. We're going to play one of the decks. I think that was at that event at the finals. But the finals was literally a two hour game uh, between, I believe, D and Tempest. It came down to the final uh, where like it was best of four, best of three. So the last match actually mattered. If you want to check that out, link in the description. It's absolutely buck wild out there. Uh, shout outs here. Uh, a lot of people were casting. Mind you, it was a six hours. I'm pretty sure they did not think it would be about a seven hour stream. The last game was very, very long. Um, but yeah, uh, Jat, I think was a pinch hitter in the last games, I think, and did really quite well. I didn't see the games, but I heard very good, uh, feedback. Excuse me, sir. It's Sunday. Pretty soon it's going to be just days. <laughs> Why? Kato, how's it going? Net dead as well. How you doing? Izzy, how you doing? You're at the start of one nice same strawberry pudding CML. Welcome to the stream. What's good, peeps? Bill, how you doing? To be clear, even after reading the rules multiple times, I have no idea ignoring all costs implies that a cost of X has been paid or not. I totally agree. That's fundamentally where this deck comes down on, is that you can pay X costs with Wizard's Chest. So the idea with this deck is, and it's actually kind of cool, is with Wizard's Chest firing, if you name resource, we only have two resources in our deck. Or four, sorry. So two different kinds of resources. And when you install an X coster, apparently the rules in Netrunner, which I think is very unintuitive. I think a lot of other card games have a force like zero when you pay an X uh, with like modular costs. But you can actually choose X to be whatever you want when you hit this with the wizard chest. Now, Bug Out Bag is a card I've played before. I've actually played combos like this before. As much as back in the day, we never had something like wizard chest. Like we honestly paid like $20 to draw our whole deck with Bug Out Bag. But the idea is that once Bug Out Bag hits the table, you say like 3000 um, I don't know if it's up to, yeah, it's up to, so you don't have to nail it. And then as long as you end your turn with no cards in hand, which is actually a bit trickier than you think it is, you can draw your whole deck. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, we have a win condition. Technically it's one big multi-axis. You can throw most of your hand and see like a lot of cards in R and D we've played 
cards. We played decks with this back in, in the day. This was never a competitive archetype, but it's always like a really fun thing. These sort of cards that are like maybe not consistently ever good, but they give you this sort of payoffs. Like, what could I do if I have an infinite hand size? And this is the answer. So with this, you can trash most of your hand, taxes all of HQ, all of RD. And in theory, with Ash and Epilogue, we can do it again, uh, which is pretty goofy. And you have a deep dive built into there. Mind you, once you're on the combo turn two, you can play like multiple copies of running cots and just over and over and over again, like continually play the same deep dive. I think it's possible. Like there's some really wild stuff you can do because basically you can set up a hand that has every single copy of running caught. And admittedly, if you lose one to damage, like you can maybe get it with Katurga breakout labor rights, I think is a big one that you labor rights and back in and you can do a lot of damage and have a massive turn, probably win in one turn. The combo doesn't work. Apparently the list started as a joke, got out of hand. I thought this deck was a joke because it doesn't work at all. Wait, why doesn't it work? Wait, it doesn't work. Wait, what? I thought this works. This seemed good. It didn't seem good. It seemed possible. It seemed within the realm of like entertainment. Hey, fix me. Sunday late afternoon stream. Love it. Hey, thanks for dropping in. I was thinking about the Ace of Group deck and I don't recall if we cut the Eli, but it seems really good. Ice on assets, archives for cohort. Yeah, Eric, it's like the really good midpoint between being taxing enough, annoying enough for the runner to deal with even without breakers and then like, you know, cheap. Uh, Hagen is only one credit more and has a pretty good face check into a lot of the meta. So it's up to you to decide which way to go. But Eli seems okay. Wait, the rules reference doesn't, it forces it to be zero? Oh my, so it actually, the rules don't do the thing that we wanted it to do. This doesn't work? What the heck? The gears turn, wizard chess ignores all costs and it can target resources. And with X cost cards, you choose X before paying the cost. X could be anything, it could be 10, it could be 1,162. So it actually doesn't work. Did I just eat the onion on this one? Okay, so the rules reference, like most other games, forces it to be zero. Well, we had a good run. It was exciting for a while. The combo doesn't work. Damn it. I remember being asked in GLC. Oh, this being asked, yeah. Thing That's for things like freedom versus blood in the water. Oh, because like, what is X? Yeah, so the idea is that if freedom hits something like, say, psychographics, the cost of uh, this is zero when somebody accesses it and has a card that says, what is the install or play cost? It's zero, technically. Hey, Ixerin, this is how cost reducers and X work on MTG, though ignoring the cost makes X zero. X is being paid. It is being paid, they ignored, and you paid zero. Ah, oh, man, this is really fun. This seemed honestly like kind of playable. Not very good, and you could draw in the bad order. But yeah, apparently it doesn't work. It works the way that we thought it worked. I thought there was some rules change that makes X not zero, because why would you post this when it gone and then make it the decklist of the week? No, I think that's very strawberry pudding. I think X is zero when you play this. because Or when you play this, excuse me. The Fight Club was such a huge event, but I agree it was a bit hard to follow in part because the coverage was split between different YT Twitch channels. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. I think Fight Club really needed, uh, I think the central source was a Discord channel, which was like more for the people playing and organizing and like commentators and stuff like that. I think if there was like a hub somewhere or a website where you could track, like I wish we could do updates week by week what was happening in Fight Club, but I genuinely didn't know. And I feel really bad because like Fight Club slaps and I don't want to like it ends and be like, oh, it could be done better. It was so cool. Go check the stuff. I hope someone can get like a, a VOD together, a list so we can get all the VODs. So sequentially you can watch everything if you choose to because the caliber of play, the mood, the deck list like it was all the coolest thing so let's focus on that for now i guess read the bottom of the description it just says it doesn't work but it means maybe it doesn't work because it's inconsistent we need the octopus for this but i think the rule on freedom versus psychographics and doesn't prevent this oh hmm hmm okay hey tondo well we had a good run um let's pack that up and never look at that again the other deck list, which this links into, which I think is really fun, is another really wild interaction if you can draw unlimited cards. Let me see if I can find out our Bug Out Bag decks, because we played a couple of Bug Out Bag decks in the in the past. They're not good. Mind you, Bug Out Bag was much more playable uh, when uh, you had this guy, Theophilius Bagbiter. Theophilius Bagbiter said that your hand size was equal to your credits. Wait, was this the combo? This wasn't combo. No, this is not the combo. This was a different combo. But like a lot of times back in the day, you could just like hoard money like a dragon on Caddy Jones and then just empty Caddy Jones and dump your deck. Yeah, game day. Uh, game day, Theophilus Bagbiter. That was a different one. Yeah, you're right, Terrence. How's it going, by the way? 
We used to have a card like this that says draw up to your maximum hand size, which back in the day, this was a separate deck. It wasn't a bug out bag deck, if I'm not mistaken. You could play Theophilius Bagbiter, get a lot of money uh, by, again, generally to get a lot of money. The more consistent way was to like, you know, work on Caddy Jones for a really long time until Caddy Jones had like 18 credits on her. You take 18 credits off. That's usually enough. Sometimes you can get a bit more. Uh, the other ones will play the gambling card, Push Your Luck. Some decks run Push Your Luck, which there used to be a card in Neverland that says Double Your Money. You probably know this one as the background art to Ysengrin's JNet. Uh, but yeah, you can just 50-50 gamble all your money and double your money. That's another way to get in there. So Guinea Pig. I don't think Guinea Pig was part of it, but Guinea Pig is a way to get a lot of money, right? It's like a six credit econ card, a 10 credit econ card. Technically six credit econ card. Yeah, it's empty your hand with Bug Out Bag. That's kind of nice. Actually, this deck doesn't have like, I wonder if this deck actually struggles to empty your hand. Oh, that's not where I wanted to go. This is definitely not the freedom versus psycho. Psychographics is not being paid when freedom accesses. This interaction could be described as voiding a cost of 1,000 and thus X is defined. Okay, so there's separate ideas. Hey, can I miss Caddy Jones and same old thing? I don't think I miss same old thing. I miss Caddy, but I do think a lot of people played Caddy like really poorly. Yeah, this one could play guinea pig, I guess. But no, no, you no, you want your hand. Never mind, you want your hand for the combo. There's a ruling for bug out bag good. If you lower the cost by three, it comes into play with three more counters than you paid for it. Because you can career fare out of bug out bag, right? Hey, Bean Bean. Thanks for the tier list. They were great. Hey, glad you liked them. Um, I'm really happy what they turned out. I thought that the runner one would have worse energy than the corp one. Mind you, check out the corp one. It's on Jeff's channel. Um, but I think they turned out really well. I think things that I'm happy with was how clear we talked about it. Our tone was really good. We were pretty positive overall, which I think helps because there's a lot of cards we don't think are very good, and that's fine. Somebody pointed out, uh, I, I think it was Seamer who maybe pointed this out, is that like we talked about having those tier lists as existing kind of like um, a podcast. And yeah, I think you can as long as I... Me and Jeff both spend a lot of time editing card overlays. So when we talk about a card, you can see what the card is. And I think that helps a lot, especially for maybe newer players, because maybe the next thing is understanding which cards are rotated and which cards are still in standard because they all kind of show up the same. But the one thing we did mess up is that if you want to listen to it as a podcast, whenever we put it on the tier list, we never say where it goes. We always just say, hmm, does that look good? Okay. And then we move on to the next card. So that is the only true failure that as a podcast format doesn't make any sense. Uh, but yeah, otherwise... It's okay. This is another one that, that Tuna posted. And I don't know how this deck actually works. Step one play bug out bag is very, very difficult. But there is something really cool about this that I've heard no one talk about. Is that meeting of the minds, you know, pay functionally three credits to grab a card from your deck. But then this text, reveal any number of cards with the chosen subtype in your grip. Gain a credit for each card revealed this way. Technically means if you're holding your entire deck, this is like a click for fundamentally because this deck is mostly resources it is a you know 73 card deck i don't think it's particularly consistent i'll uh, at a minimum uh this is like a click for 50. that's kind of cool <laughs> that's genuinely kind of cool but it's just very hard to have a deck that like plays bug out bag gets enough money draws your whole deck you're holding this many resources but there's like probably some midpoint where like you can play meeting of the minds bug out bag um do you do this in criminal? I guess Anarch has the most connections now, so maybe you have to. But I find that really, really funny. It's just like hard to weaponize that. But this sort of like technically, you know, if you held your whole deck in hand, you have a lot of money in this card. Is that even worth three influence? Probably not, but it's fun. Hey, Veronica, furnish, finished first the CO in Amsterdam last night. Had a great time. Always be running. Yo, the such is the seesaw of events sometimes. You go to one event, you know, it doesn't go your way. Have some bad beats. And you're like, I don't know if I'm going to go to the next one. You go to the next one. You kill it. You have a great time. You make some friends. You have some good games. Uh, glad to hear, Veronica. What you end up playing? Glad you went out. I know that you were a bit down on the last one. Bug Bag was part of the Trash Corp deck that salvaged Vandas Armory. Oh, Zombie, that's true. It was key to that sort of archetype, was it? I'm like so unfamiliar with the Salvage Van and Dis Armory decks because I functionally, we never saw them. So for those who don't know, this was a card that was one of the fastest banned cards in all of Netrunner's history. Uh, I'm not sure which one it is. Probably either of these. But the idea is that the deck could... This is not it. This is just a Fight Club deck. This is not it either. Hmm. There was a deck that could just mill the corporation pretty consistently on like turn two, turn three. And so Salvage Van Design Re, I'll show you what the card is. I actually don't know if it had Bug Out Bag, did it? Because maybe it was playing like their Spirit Sites. Is, the deck de is that one of the decks? 
Because this doesn't look like it has. To, it is what it was. No, this can't be it. This is like just a Fight Club. This is a Clan Vengeance deck with one Clan Vengeance. Anyways, this is what this card was. It is still banned in Standard. It has been banned from like two weeks after it, it uh, FFG played this in Go Burr. Uh, mind you, Red Sands was a bit of a mess. But the Corp Trash is the top X cards of R&D. X is equal to the amount of damage you've suffered this turn. So it was a deck that took as much damage in a single turn. And the big thing with Salvage Van and his armories is while they were unique, it was clickless. So you just took a bunch of damage, installed one, fired one, installed one, fired one, installed one, fired one, and that was it. Uh, I honestly don't know if Bug Bag was in it. It's still banned in Eternal. Yeah, it's one of the, like the three banned cards or four banned cards in Eternal format. Uh, I think this might be one of them. But like, I never actually saw the deck in person as much as like you, you know, intellectually understand that it it's broken. It was banned so, 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 so quickly that I don't think I ever saw it. I never played against it. So if you ask me what the text on Salvage is, I honestly don't know, which is kind of wild. How do you force taking damage? Hey, Ilya, how's it going? There's a lot of cards that you could force to take damage. So you had uh, Cybernetics. That was one way to do it. You had cards like Running Hot back in the day we call Amped Up. So that was forced to take damage. Plus you had additional clicks. Then you had things like Dadiana, which if you have no money, you take three meat damage. That's a lot of meat damage at once. Uh, I think that's mostly it. And then you have other things like when you install it, take a meat damage. So you basically installed a bunch of things that all did damage to you. Um, and that was it. It was kind of that simple. You just played a bunch of things. So the idea is like, you know, amped up, get more clicks, install another thing, draw. This was a card that was important for the archetype. It says the first time each turn you have no cards in your grip, draw one card and place one power counter on this. It also does a meat damage. So in theory, if you have multiple of these down, because they're also not unique, the first time a turn you go down to zero cards, you go up three cards. I honestly don't think this is the one that was like the quoted one that why got banned. Maybe this is. Uh, but yeah, it got banned out so fast, faster than most people actually saw it see play. Zero. I don't think zero is out though. I'm pretty sure zero came out later. So this is card 101. Salvage Vendus Armory came out as 100. Oh no, so yeah, zero was probably in that same deck too. I'm surprised I can't find the salvage deck. Why? That, like, I don't think any of these are the, the one. I know I uh, linked it when it came to when we did our all banned cards in Netrunner video that I linked to the actual one. Uh, but yeah, I don't actually know if zero is in it. Yeah. Hey, Tron, how's it going? Hey, Baza, happy Sunday. Hey, you too. Zero is a cycle later though. Oh my god, yeah, zero is a Kampala card. So it was 101, 103, but they're entirely sets apart. Okay, that's exactly why, yeah. I was just looking at the card number, not the set number. Yeah, zero is from Katara Cycle and all this stuff. Most of the, like, wildest stuff was from the Red Sand Cycle. So they were nearly six, seven months apart. That's why. Easy to miss. It doesn't seem too broken on the surface of it. To be fair, I suppose a limit once per turn would fix it. If it was a limit once per turn, it would fix it. But, like, a lot of the self-damage archetype cards, mind you, about that era in Netrunner, are fundamentally problematic cards. Like... This card is still banned in standard. And you might be wondering, why is this card banned in standard? And the big reason why, firstly, it's not unique. Secondly, it doesn't take a click. That's it. It's like that simple that these cards go from being busted powerful to not being busted powerful. So like when this card came out, it was a bit more tricky to play. But then like years later, when zero came out, you had a button every turn that does a net damage to you. So that every turn you're getting a charge on your multiple clan vengeances. And the problem with this is that you can fire it at any paid ability window. That's ugly for two reasons. Firstly, having a paid ability that's relevant at every paid ability window where the corp has to be like install action, advance action. And then you crack it means that you can disrupt combo. It means you can crack this while running HQ or running archives. So you have five counters on this. You run archives. They have to trash your whole hand. Like it's nearly impossible to play against. Uh, mind you, this is not the best thing to do in standard or sorry, in eternal, but in eternal still powerful. But there's just like so many levers on these cards that just seem like the levers went out the window, right? Like there's so many ways to make this more palatable. But unfortunately, it is basically as long as you have ways to do damage to yourself messed up. I know I played a whole bunch of these um, decks with the name Fight Club. I'm pretty sure Encoder did too. And we brought these to events and had a good time. But these were the sort of decks. Where's Encoder's Fight Club? Mm, let's search author name Encoder. Uh, cards use Clan Vengeance. There was like these archetypes that were never tier one decks, but basically decks that were before Zero came out, that you would go out of your way to take as much damage as you could. Oh, they're called Tyler Durden decks. Yeah, right. And these decks are really, really fun. But the idea with these decks is like you just mad dash R&D turn one. If you whiffed, you took a meat damage. That's perfectly fine once you install your clan vengeance. And these sort of decks were actually kind of really goofy because this was, I think, before zero, if I'm not mistaken, maybe before zero. But it was basically a clan vengeance deck. And then you played all the weird cards that hurt yourself. You'd play Fisk Investment Seminar. So at the beginning of your turn, the corporation drew up to eight hand size. And then you clan vengeance for eight. 
You had to build into it. But the problem was eventually Clan Vengeance with cards like Zero didn't become a build around. It just became the easiest thing to put in any deck because Zero was really, really good back then. And this deck would run Titanium Ribs so that whenever you take damage, you choose which card you would hit, which is really important. Mind you, Steel Skin Scarring back in the day was called I've Had Worse. It was slightly different. And then you play all these like really goofy cards. Uh, apparently, Officer Frank saw play in this. Yeah. Yeah, it's wild. It's, it's very, very wild. But none of these cards, like they, they, it was, it's, it's easy to have, make these cards have balance levers and all the balance levers are missing. Like uniqueness, making this be a click, making this even say only on the runner's turn. Like there's a lot of ways to make this make more sense. It just doesn't. Hey, hola, Lord Peacher. Happy Sunday stream. How are you going? How are you going? How are you doing? Or if the corp, if the corp had to do the damage, this was unplayable. I think we've seen at least one card that only fires if the corp does damage to you. Uh, we've seen, oh, they're like first aid. What is it called? Responder? First responders, there's one card like this that was unplayable. It's two credits draw a card, uses ability only if you've suffered damage from a corp card. This is the only time I think in Arunner we've seen this tech suffer damage from a corp card. And I think there's a chance that cards like Clan Vengeance were originally designed with that in mind and then at the last minute cut or like decided that they weren't powerful enough. Because if this only fired when the corp like hurt you, Obviously, there's like 90% of archetypes. It doesn't matter. Mind you, at the time, we did still have Kakugo. And I remember like charging clan vengeance of Kakugo. Like, that's good fun. Uh, but there's a big change that there was a learning here that this is unplayably bad uh, so that they just removed the suffer damage from a corp card. Because how can you show up to an event with cards in your deck that only work when the corp hurts you, when only one and a half archetypes hurts you, and one of those archetypes flatlines you for seven meat damage, so this doesn't matter. Uh, you could argue this was a tech card for like, you know, combo damage, uh, but it's just a very, 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 very bad card in every deck. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think there's a chance because like thematically Clan Vengeance only makes sense. Like, why are you hurting yourself? And then that is hurting the corporation. It's kind of solid. Strongest runner deck in Eternal is still CV0. Oh, cool. I played CV0 Wizard when I played Eternal last year. I had fun. It was really, really fun. There's an Eternal list that plays Amped Up with Labor Ice Loop. Yeah, with like Running Hot as well. I got suggested a deep dive lab by the incomparable Jan Tuno, and I played the Ace of Cohort list. I ran out of space on my playmat every round. Yo, let's go. I think that Ace of Deck is really good, despite what happened on Thursday. It's fine. Flavor-wise, it feels like self-damage should be more dangerous. It seems like there's no risk, just equations. There's a bit of risk. But the thing is, like, with the Anner card pool, eh. like, you can't self-damage yourself in Criminal easily. There's, like, a big reason where cards like Zenith Chip don't see a lot of play, and it's just, like, the damage is tempo loss. And on top of that, like, you cannot play this when you have your one of breakers in hand. I need to shout this out. Mind you, Bridgman hasn't streamed in a while. And Bridgman recently streamed this deck. Oh, my God. This deck is so gross. It is so fun. It is a Bonhar Steve deck. And I think Steve Cambridge is actually pretty good right now. We're going to get to, like, what we're going to play today. And I think a lot of uh, competitive players are coming to the conclusion that more targeted criminal running um, seems to be a bit more viable right now inherently than the sort of like wanton criminal running the idea is that sable seems to many people to be unplayable on the basis that things like specifically entirely tributary means that with sable you cannot run your mark say there's a tributary on the table which mind you doesn't show up in that many matchups but in the ones it does and there's a tributary on the table and you want to run archives because it gets you two credits with info bounty and a click back you can't break this cheaply you just cannot break this cheaply as a criminal deck, so you cannot make that value proposition. You just let the tributary subs fire. I agree, you do. And then you're playing against a corporation that's also on like five or clicks, right? Like this firing in Asa or Atea is obviously really bad. Install piece of ice, ignoring all costs is pretty bad. You're right. You probably just let it fire, but it does not make that criminal matchup much better. So a lot more criminals are playing uh, something that's a bit more focused that doesn't require them to run every single turn. So today we're going to be playing this deck and I built my own low stack. I know we played against D on Thursday. D was probably preparing for the fight club on that Saturday and we played a fun game against this deck. And this seems to be, according to D, uh, maybe one of the best criminals you can play right now because it does not require you to run every single turn. It does not have like dirty laundry. It does not have Mark synergy. It's making targeted runs and setting up with the twinning and then playing kind of tricks, which is kind of cool. Um, on the other side, though, this one is a bit more gunko. This one does want to run all the time. Excuse me, not this, this. Uh, and it is, it feels like 2013 criminal. Where, like, you're getting into HQ over and over again. They can't stop you because you have Banhar. You're, like, stealing credits away with them from Panweave. I haven't played Panweave in a deck in, like, years. Uh, then you're Emergency Shutdowning. You're playing, like, five copies of Emergency Shutdown so they can't keep you out of HQ. Then you put down the Sneak Door Beta. Then you Window of Opportunity and you bounce your ice with Hermes. Like, it does feel like 
2012 to 2016 aggro Gabe criminal. And it's kind of wild as much as there's some matchups where like if they do get big enough ice on HQ, you're kind of cooked. Uh, but this is just like one of the most fun criminal lists I played in a really long time. And I think it's cool in some ways that criminal is going from like less consistency because like the Sable decks we saw in Worlds are like just value engines. And these are less so value engines and more like aggro and more like tricks. As much as I know I'm going to be frustrated when they, you know, window of opportunity for gaining 12 credits, my brawn on the remote server, whatever. So uh, you don't have to go back in the chat. At the CEO, I played Divelat. Oh, thank you. Yes, Veronica. I was very slow on chat still. Thank you. I, for one, am enthused about the brick costing eight credits to survive double scorched. Yes, it's pretty bad. <laughs> hey, Garrett, love your stuff. First time making live stream. Welcome to stream. How you doing? We don't normally stream on Sundays. Glad you can make it. This is for the, the hit the notification gang. I caught that on stream. People are playing around Lowe's with Saucy. It's really weird being run every turn. Krim is unplayable. Yeah, like I haven't come to those conclusions yet. I've been playing Atea and getting a tributary res and then they like run archives and realize, oh, a tributary fires like that is a problem. And I think people are coming to terms with it. I think certain decks can deal with tributary better than others. I think a hush is really important. Uh, putting Viserum Entangler is also like another way you could consider doing it. So it's not impossible, but I understand why it feels so much worse. Also, with like a non-zero part of the meta being like Ag Infusion Glacier, I don't know how good that matchup is for like run-based criminal. I imagine it's pretty shit. Uh, so that's another way. It's not that bad, I promise. I'm playing Tributary Ace, I take my words with a grain of salt. But to be clear, I played against some runners that let Tributary fire a lot and did very little. Yeah, we had Tributary fire a lot on Thursday against this low stack, and it didn't do that much for us. It really didn't. Uh, but for what it's worth, I think the Ace of deck is actually one of the worst ones for it. Letting Tributary fire in like Ag Infusion, which you're not running that much, or like Atea, I think that's more problematic. Firing Tributary in an HB, I think is a bit overrated. The free install is a kill. Yeah, exactly. Pick one, how's it going? In Ag Infusion, in certain decks, it's much more problematic. In Ace of Group, I honestly don't know if I like Tributary there. I'm kind of falling out of Tributary. Richmond did not run into the Tributary for the whole stream, by the way. Oh, I haven't caught the whole thing. I just caught a bit of it. And then I saw the deck list and I played against and I played as it. And I thought it was so fun. I think you just let the subs fire and breaking them cost a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. The second trip sub robs you either two, three boost credits or a click. Yeah. And like at the end of the day, still a tributary, like you end up playing around it, which is kind of important, right? Like uh, I, we played against D and D was playing this deck, mind you, on the weekend in the finals. And D said like they made a mistake where they ended up running the remote server. And then we moved the tributary there after we made a mistake and didn't run the tributary there. And the tributary cost D like an extra seven or eight credits breaking the ice on the remote server. It was like brawn into Eli into, I think, Drafter or something. Uh, yeah. So what D had to do is just run archives or just run HQ to keep the tributary in place. So even if you're letting tributary fire, it does take up a fair bit more mental space than I think you'd want a three cost ice to do. Uh, but yeah, it is still very potent and you have to play around it because moving the tributary onto the remote server with stacked ice is really, really bad because that tributary subroutine obviously cares about it. So unless you're breaking this, the math to break this is usually better than not breaking it when there's like two other ice on the server and your breakers are criminal breakers. I feel like Tributary is almost a must include in Jinteki. Yo, Ilya, what I came down to is like, so I've been building a bunch of these like Atea decks of d different, you know, qualities of fast events and, and Ace-isms. And I'm actually at the point where I'd consider playing three Tributary in Atea. I haven't tried it yet, but I think Tributary is one of the best dice to get on the table as soon as possible. Specifically in Atea, it protects your like your second server where you're generally putting like your cohort guidance programs and hope people are not trashing them. And I think that's good enough. Like, I'm honestly at the point where every time the tributary has been resed in this matchup that goes pretty fast, it's been a nightmare for my opponent that I'm at the point that I want to try playing three of them and probably we'll see how that goes and go back down to two. So, like, my hypothesis is, like, tributary is so good, specifically in Atea, where letting it fire means I can install an agenda is a problem that you might want to play three. Uh, but I haven't tried it yet. There's a chance it's terrible. The deck barely runs enough ice. There's a chance it's awful. But um, it's so good when it matters with the ID. With Ag Infusion, you don't want to play three because you don't need to. But in Atea, I think there's a reason you could play three. There's also a thing for Isa. You're unlikely to have a lot of ice stacked on a single server. Yeah, unless you play like Io uh, WeWare, which is like PDA, so it's pretty bad. Tributary Rex Criminals. The general game plan for the criminal deck is play is to get value central accesses, Zai and Sable, while building a board state, using Boomerang and Inside Job to slow the corp down. Tributary means the value central run does not exist. The first run you make is almost always guaranteed to cost two to three extra credits or a tempo hit. Moreover, Tributary means Glacier is back in a big way, which already was Krim's worst matchup. But for Fight Night, one of us had to bring a Krim deck, so I fell on the sword, or axe. 
Uh, D's write-ups are always really, really quite good. So Los was a bit of a meme ID. I think there's one Los deck list of the week of all time. It was mine. I got it published. Uh, mind you, it like was fundamentally about busted broken cards like Cipher. For those who don't know, Cipher can make any ID work, especially an ID that cared about de-resing ice based off of strength. Uh, this card was something else, that's for sure. So uh, Los has never been particularly good when all the criminal IDs give more. But the idea with Los now is we've got a lot of tricks that like unironic poisonous ban me please saucy. We're coming back to ban me please on this one. Uh, if you can get this on an ice and the ice can be rezzed and then de-rezzed, you make a good enough money on this. So the big card here that's overperforming is window of opportunity. The idea is that if the corporation rezzes one big ice on the remote server, which they generally tend to do to make their scoring server, you can install a saucy on it. Heaven forbid there's another saucy on it. And if you window of opportunity it, the ice will be de-rezzed and then re-rezzed again. Which means if that's the first ice that was res this turn, with Los, you get two credits. With each saucy, you get six credits. So the first saucy you put on the card, which you install clicklessly with window of opportunity, I always forget that text. The click impression on this is pretty wild. It's an eight credit play. Right? It's an eight credit play. The idea is that you install the saucy. Okay, that cost you one. You window opportunity, that cost you one. The ice goes down, you gain three. It comes back up, you gain three, and you gain two. It's really good. Not like a little good, and it's so hard for the corporation to play around. I was really excited in the finals because Tempest was actually talking about playing around this line because it's a hard thing to play around. One of the nightmares is if you overextend on HQ, and then the idea is that they uh, window of opportunity HQ, steal an agenda. You can't res the ice on HQ during the window run, which you're not incentivized to do because you get rezzed for free. And then Hermes bounced the ice, and then suddenly HQ is not protected. Right, like the combo is so gross and it's very fundamentally difficult to play around uh, where all your big ice becomes a liability. So I don't know. We're in a weird spot where Criminal is like really tackling big ice in a meaningful way. Ahua Ceres crew, which hasn't like crystallized to be a consistent competitive thing, is fighting the low strength ice as much as it is also fighting the high strength ice. And we also saw like at uh, Fight Club, shout out to Axus in chat, that we also saw like some sort of Steve Cambridge Ahua Ceres crew decks that were just recurring Ahua Ceres crew and just like tunneling HQ and trashing ice, which also sounds really, really wild. This is getting eaten alive by 3x Magnet. Magnet, yeah, Veronica's saying Magnet too. Magnet's really good into this deck, uh, into this idea. Saucy Magnet is quite good. Um, you have no good way to move around the Saucies. Mind you, you have a Simul Chip, and I think that's good for you. Now, if this deck didn't have Saucies, it's still okay. Uh, it doesn't, like, eat the deck the same way, like, Magnet can eat against, like, a Botulus-based Breaker Suite or against, like, a, an Ari. Uh, but I do think Magnet seems pretty good into both Aqua Ceres Crew and into, like, Saucy Criminal, so... Lucille, by the way, I missed your message. I'm once again late for a Metropolitan stream, really losing my touch. We snuck this one around you. Uh, how you doing? How do you even play around this interaction, Robin? I'm not actually sure. And that's because we're kind of too new to it. We don't honestly know. But resing a big ice, like, this was talked about with Window Opportunity came out. The idea that against, like, op, and we don't see this playline that commonly, like, install on a remote server, advance, install ice, and that ice is a border control. So if they boomerang it or inside job it, you pop the border control and get a sandstone, that line loses so hard to Window of Opportunity. There are so many play patterns that are very common that just lose to window of opportunity. Doomer Andre is actually kind of scared right now because it's very, very, very hard to play around criminal pressure where it feels like they have pressure on a lot of different angles and it's kind of difficult, right? Like understanding how to push a remote server when the criminal has access to inside job, boomerang, and window of opportunity. Uh, the ice doesn't seem very good. And fundamentally, one of the worst matchups for this deck is Assets. It's playing two Miss Bones, which is a bit much for a criminal deck because this deck, if you don't run any ice, obviously doesn't do anything besides plays twinning. So I don't know. I know there was some negative feedback on the tier list where we talked about things like Lobby Somu being good or Agua Serra's crew. And the answer is like, just play defensive upgrades. And then people saying like, that was the, you know, the knee jerk reaction to like, oh, Endurance is good. Just play Mana Garm Skunk Works. And I hear you. Uh, mind you, this deck is only on a single pin threading, so keep that as a will. Mind you, I believe it was Tuno played a fantastic matchup against the sort of uh, Steve Cambridge, uh, Awa Saris crew spam deck. And that spam deck looked terrible because Tuno was just in control for the whole game and played it really, really quite well. Isn't Doomer scared of every single card in RWR? No, just the ones. <laughs> Magna doesn't seem that bad for this deck. Uh, for which one? Magnet's not the worst. Breaking Magnet with Unity costs like three credits. It doesn't end the deck, but it's like definitely not great for it. I do struggle to get consistent econ out of Saucy, especially if the Corp knows how to play against it well. Yeah, the thing is like with Saucy, I don't know because I haven't played enough of the deck, is I don't know if you're Saucy unres dice or whether you keep Saucy around. Like maybe you do Saucy poke, but there's a chance that Saucy, the way that you want to play with Saucy is keep it around for the window opportunities or the one E shutdown. That could be my guess. 
I know I've played lines where I put like Saucy on HQ Ice turn one and like bravadoed, and then the corporation won't res, and then their next click is to overinstall the ice on HQ to trash the Saucy. I can't tell who's coming out ahead on that matchup or on that interaction. I think it's better for the corporation because dealing with the Saucy is really interesting. So it might be better to like install a Saucy and then go for diversion, but if they duck to the diversion, I think they're happy with that. By resing the ice, I mean. So I can't tell exactly how you use Saucy on tempo or whether you just use it as like a control tool for the mid to late game. It does play wake as well as to win faster than twinning, but as one of. Yeah, it's playing one wake, two twinning. I don't honestly think it's right, but this is something that's worth keeping in mind. Any deck that runs two career fair, if you want to learn three career fair, you could play a single twinning and you could play meeting of the minds. The idea is that if you pull out, you know, with meeting of the mind, you can pull out your like, you know, your twinning, your companion, and then this costs three credits and then you could career fair it down. I don't think that is worth the payoff. I think having two twinning is just good. I think having that combo consistently land is probably not worth it. But if there's any reason we're adding three more influence into this deck does a lot for it. I think there's some consideration you could play another career fair, a meeting of the minds and do something else. Probably not. But having a flexible tutor that gets you missed bones, unfortunately on three credits and an extra click is terrible. Uh, Mystic Paladin and twinning is like, it's, it's probably nothing. But it's something that I wanted to see how bad it feels. I imagine it feels pretty bad. When Saucy is like an Ampassana, it seems like a win for the runner. Yeah, a lot of times, though, that's also like how... Daijin, how's it going, by the way? I, I saw you said hi, excuse me. A lot of times, that's like the same play pattern against Shaper, though. It's like when you install the Trojan, they don't res and they trash it immediately. Like, the trashing your slap handle. Or the biggest thing is like a lot of times uh, in the early game, Ari will run and install some nonsense Trojan just so that uh, she can pop off with Urban Art Vernissage. A lot of the gorp good corporations will just trash that ice. And you're right, that's good. But when uh, you've spent three credits on a Trojan on turn one, maybe, and a UAV, and the corporation just destroys your economy immediately, I don't know if that's better for the runner. I think that's much worse for the runner. I've saw the window opportunity in RE deck and there's a lot of influence, but it works. It feels really good. Yeah, I think in an RE deck, that could make sense. I do think you have a lot of good criminal influence in the RE deck now. I think Fazerum is really good. Um, we're going to give this a shot. I think this deck is kind of wild. It's kind of really wild. And I'm surprised. Like, So I've been building other versions of this that I haven't done enough testing yet that's going to be today to try and make this version a bit more, you know, flavorful, Los flavorful. Because at the end of the day, this is like a big thing that like good deck builders do, and especially competitive players, is that this does not look too dissimilar than a good stuff criminal deck, right? Like it is fundamentally a good stuff criminal deck with a bit of Los flavor in it. Which, like, sometimes you see decks that are, like, totally alien to everything you've seen before, right? Like, you look at the Virus Anarch decks, they look really strange. It's not just a good stuff Hoshiko deck with a bit of a package in it. And I'm wondering how much this can, you know, evolve to become slightly, slightly more bizarre. So, for instance, this is the first version I had. Um, I was doing originally Amakua, and then I was going to do uh, Conduit, and then play um, Aeneas Informant. I ended up thinking, like, why do we have to play Aeneas Informant? We have Bankroll, which is better. And I've just been playing, you know, three Diesel, three Simul Chip, Amaku as our only breaker, which, mind you, the NBN matchup is a bit rough, and just, like, going to town. This deck fundamentally sucks. It wins games, but it is miserable for both players because it doesn't have a lot of multi-axis. It should probably have another Wake. It should probably have a Zenith. It should probably even have a Pan Weave. I don't know. But you cannot res ice into this thing. Because every round it makes generally two credits. If you res, you know, Saucy Fizerum gets through doing really cheaply. We're playing three E shutdown. We're playing three Simul Chip. And we're playing Rubicon Switch. Problem with this deck is like the click to draw action is really bad. It just does not fundamentally have enough good stuff. And Trickster Talk is not worth three influence. There's a three influence hole in this. I play Trickster Talk. It was terrible. But there's something here. We're playing that sort of like aggro Amakua leech package that like, you know, Hoshiko decks play with Awas Harris crew. I think you can do something similarly to this. I hate that Bankroll uses a click. Yes, but this deck doesn't use a lot of money outside of like the, the Rubicon combo that it's fine. It doesn't take a click. You trash it. It doesn't take a click. Now, this is a version that's like very similar to the D version, except I am playing two lib accounts and three career fair because I want to play a bit more slower. And then I just want to play Rubicon Switch. I just want to. Rubicon Switch did get better in this set because a window of opportunity means that an early res dice, you can de-res it. So it technically was res this turn. And I think the consensus is here is that this card is so slow and so clumsy and it's bad in your worst matchups that it makes way more sense for your deck to be better into more matchups than to like really dive down on the fact that you can arguably make Ag Infusion uncomfortable, <laughs> right? Why not Docklands instead of Wake? Because uh, Wake influence, because Wake is an R&D pressure card. Like, Docklands just means you see two cards a turn. Wake means you close the game out, right? Right, like, we're hammering HQ anyways, so we're going to see a lot of cards in HQ, but then we want to run R&D and see five, and then we can lock the top of the deck, or four, right? Or I guess three? 
it maxes out at three. Uh, they're very different things. Like I want a win condition and wake is a win condition. Dawkins is just pressure. That's why we had conduit er earlier. Anyways, I think this version is probably straight worse, but I just want to try some of the other options. Like Rubicon Switch is a toxic ass card. Um, and I do think you can uh, you can Rubicon lock decks that are not familiar with it and it's going to be uncomfortable. Both, running both Swinging and Wake seems a bit much. It's pretty common for a lot of uh, criminal decks for the last like year to play run both of them. The idea is that Wake Implant is like really good in the sort of faster decks that are um, not very good at icing up HQ very well. So like Asa Group decks, um, Sports Metal, you don't see a lot of those. But any deck that cannot spend to make HQ defensible enough, Wake Implant is really, really good. Twinning is a bit slower. And against like Sports Metal, you could get this up. It's a bit hard because you only have Mystic and Paladin. Mind you, this deck doesn't have Chesva. This deck also doesn't have Chesva. So the Wake Twinning, right? Like you need to hit one of these or Miss Bones, mind you. So it's not uncommon to see both Wake and Twinning. And again, this deck is going to Siege, so it's going to sit back with a twinning and it's going to charge it up. First matchup, Zero Ice Shell game. Yeah, it's going to be a problem. I, I think D was very clear that like this has matchups that are not great for it. So like ping, like D raising NBN Ice sucks. Like ping VSA, you don't want to D res any of that. If there is a Hydra and you can D res a Hydra, yeah, that's good for you, but not much else is. I, I don't know what console is best to put in my Ari Saucy Wu deck. Hermy seems good, but I end up wanting most Ice res for the cash. Um, I think playing Lilypad's probably fine. Like, you're installing a lot of cards, right? You could also play for Click Compression Pantograph. Just install some of that stuff cheaper and faster. Haven't had a chance to play with RWR, but I, I like how the set supports both Glacier Corps and Specialized Anti-Ice Runners. Yeah, it's tricky to see what side wins on that. Amelia is a card I want to play, but it doesn't know how you consistently get it fast enough without Flux Capacitor or other cards like this. It means you need two specific draws. Yeah, actually, hey, real talk. I'm glad you brought that up. This version originally with three simul chips was also on two copies of uh it was on like legwork i think and then two copies of uh flux capacitor it was on flux and that's why we we're using the simul chip too and it was also on uav uh you can't move his around but it was on uav saucy and it didn't play diesels i'd argue that deck is way clumsier and slower but we were on amelia with that package so that you play uav to move the saucies and the the what's it called around the uh the fluxes the problem with flux is you have to break the ice right the first time you break a subroutine and so this deck doesn't want to break a lot of ice because it wants to derez a lot of ice so flux seems kind of anti-synergistic also if you fazerum the ice this doesn't do anything so uh mixed bag for sure but it wasn't the easiest thing getting the first counter in melee is a difficult part yeah i think in criminal it's easy you just play like three leg works and you just like send it but I agree. In most decks that are playing Amelia, the first part is the hardest part, and not so much on practicality, but on uh, what's it called? On like deck slots. Like I think you can play an RE deck and you can just do like slap bandle legwork turn one. The problem is like that's not a good line financially. Let's give this a shot. This seems fun. Shout out again, Axu. If you're still in chat, did a fantastic job. We had it open before. Did we just close it? YouTube Netrun Axu. But the finals were up uh on Axu's channel. Link in the description two hour finals game is i think a lot of people are going to bounce off of it for better or for worse because it is a two hour finals game right uh but it's very fascinating uh link in the description some really good play on both sides really nice people too i think is the biggest thing like the 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 it, it's absolutely fantastic okay the chat still works on here so i'm going to close that so it doesn't load in the background thanks it was fun adhd even got me bad during that final oh i could believe it did, did you pull up like subway surfers gif you could try something like 3x Maker's Eye or something like Docklin, pretty jailbreaking crim for Amelia, but again, it's hard to, yeah, it's hard to do it fast. And then there's so many deck slots that your deck fundamentally suffers. It's like you need to put economy and card draw, and then you're like, wait, half my deck is setting up Amelia. Like, it doesn't make any sense. So that's why you think, like, the decks that can just do it in the least amount of cards is important. YouTube shorts brain. Sorry, Axu. Yeah um yeah that's all we need to do the first three rounds went pretty quickly and still have the really high level gameplay for what it's worth yes i watched a bunch of the earlier rounds uh, i didn't get to see all of them i was at 2x speed and i hopped around a bit but like the r plus game was like relatively fast there's a lot of games that weren't like not two hour grind finals Hey, you managed to get your deck down. Yo, Shockwave, yeah. Huge shout out. Oh, this is the, not the great matchup. Uh, to, to Lucille. Lucille helped out and we called 1,100 decks all at once. Basically, it was like 10,080 decks. Uh, it was not easy. There was a bunch of like technical issues and I got on a call and Lucille was kind enough to help me out. So that's a huge shout out to Lucille. 
Um, yeah, this is not a great matchup because Reality Plus, firstly, I really don't like Reality Plus right now. I feel on Jaina Casual, everyone's just playing Mwanza City deck, Mwanza City grid decks, and like you just don't run centrals. Um, how good is this hand? Sheer Gamble Class Act, that's kind of all we got going. Uh, I think that's okay. We probably want to be playing two pinhole in the meta because of uh, Holloman. But sure, Gamble Class Act is probably the best we have here. I think that's good enough. We can just credit. They're not going to do anything on turn one. Glad your Jaina is usable. Oh my god, it's so much better. Thank you, Lucille. I'm never going to purge my decks. I'll let Jaina crash. How many of you got, Tron? I don't know if I was like having a record there or not. Yeah, 30 minutes per game was like pretty average. Did Bad Blood mull? They mulled. Okay. So they have to respect Diversion HQ. This deck's only on two. There you go. Hey, Betty. 194 Altron. You got some work to do. It only starts falling apart once you hit 800. <laughs> so a lot of times these plays are really difficult because people will put out like snares and stuff. Like, I don't know if it's a Rashida. A lot of times players will just like put snares and beholds out there. I just don't think we have to do anything about it. Right? Like there's nothing on the table that if we don't run is really bad for us. He says monkey paws curl besides I think Rashida. All right. What are we putting back? I don't think we need all three window of opportunities. Ah, oh, it is a Rashida. Okay, that's the bad one. If it's a behold there, it's just like so bad for us that I don't think you can afford to check. Oh, into Yodel. Oh, into double Yodel. Okay, well, the monkey's paw curled so hard. All right. Um, yeah, this is the sort of matchup where like the two cost dice is going to do as much tempo damage to us as them. Now, I don't know what this is. Ah, oh, man, I don't like the R plus matchup. So what are our plays here? We can run HQ. They're probably going to res this for free. Unless right now it is a Hydra, which they res a Hydra for three credits, which we cannot really afford to do. We don't have a Hermes. A Hermes would be pretty good right now. The career fair is lacking in hand. Let's drop for career fair target. That's definitely not it. Now we can provide a HQ and assume it's not a Hydra. They put it down on turn one as much as that might be like a sick bluff. Otherwise, we're not doing anything with this hand. We're probably going to clear a tag. This bravado is like a five credit econ card if they res. Otherwise, we run HQ, hit a behold. It's really bad. I don't really want to do the boomerang. Actually, the boomerang is fine. The issue here is like if they res, even if they don't res, we don't have enough money to um to steal a Bologna. I'd argue we don't want to steal a Bologna here. Because they definitely have a oppo in hand. Yeah, I don't know how to play this hand out. It's a really ugly hand. Our plus should not exist. Completely removes all interesting play patterns from the game while everything is tempo positive. I agree. Oh, gatekeeper. That might be a faster deck. I'm glad we boomerang that. This is not another, this is another ice that's really bad to D-Res, so that's funny. Tomorrow's headline. Okay, so we're going to get oppoed. I agree. I don't like our plus at all. Shuffle. Okay, so we have to remove a tag, and we're going to discard a card here. I think Wind of Opportunity is not very good in this matchup. Once we get our Unity down, we'll go through there. If they oppo us here on two tags, like, it's annoying. They have a lot of cards in hand, so they might be drawing for an oppo there. They did draw two, but they don't really need money, so I think they'd do that regardless, especially with the Spend Doctor on the table. Hey, Supernaut, how's it going? Sunday stream? Yeah, let's see the oppo last click. Yeah, there you go. We Okay. Um, we're going to draw one for uh, hopefully an Earthrise or a Daily Casts. Pinhole is actually really good because this could be a Holloman very easily. Server 3, again, I'm assuming this is like a... Uh, I don't know what deck plays Gatekeeper, but like maybe this clearly is something bad for us. Hey, bot, how's it going? Um, Getting Miss Bones down, I don't think it matters here. We definitely need to clear some amount of tags, but like our economy is not pulling up. We need to get a daily cast sooner than later. Uh, I think we click for credit here. I want to hold on to the career fair because it is just fundamentally a four credit econ card. Inside job is really good against some ice. Wake is really good. Let's get the E shut down. Saucy and gatekeeper. Yeah, right. Just keep going for everyone. Ayo, hey, Andre. Hey, bye. Tempo oppo? Yeah, but that one makes sense, right? Like, that one we're asking for. They have, like, nine cards in hand. But I agree. I, I don't like tempo oppo. Second spin doctor. Okay. I set the legendary bot. I'm going to ask a question on behalf of the whole Metro Ball Gate fan base that we're all thinking. Uh-oh. Okay, so one of these is the Holloman. For some reason, I instantly thought today is Tuesday because of stream. I'm really messing with your, with your schedule, Laksu. So if they Holloman into uh, Bologna, like, we can pinhole one of those. Right? This is why pinhole is really important, because that's what this play looks like. It could be an Amaze Amusements. We also have a 50-50. I'm assuming the Holloman got in first. Let's draw for a resource. So if we get the Unity, 
We don't have the diversion. Landing a diversion gets us into the game. These are really unfortunate two cards to have together. Hey Santa, this looks like a version of Man of the Moon with an NPC deck. I don't think I was familiar with that one. I'm pretty sure I know how that one did. How's it going by the way, Santa? Wait, this looks familiar. D, congratulations. Two hour game. Oh man. When do we get the stream that breaks down all the ice from RWR using your ice cost breakdown? When? We can do it today, bah. You want to do it today? We can do it after this. It's pretty easy. I've done every single ice in the game besides the new set. Uh, this is really rough, D. Thank you. Yeah, what a good write-up, too. D does good write-ups. Um, thinking, right, like, obviously we need the unity. That's what we're all waiting for. Like, install this credit credit. If they, what is the cost to get out of Bologna? So Bologna is six, seven, eight. It costs them three credits to score out of Bologna with Holloman. I think we can let them have the first Bologna. The problem is the first Bologna puts them on oppo. If we pinhole, we're probably going to get oppoed. His R plus is running gatekeeper. Okay. I don't know if this player. I've been seeing a lot of Smurfs lately. I don't know if this is a Smurf. Like, this sucks. Putting this unity down is also kind of bad because now, well, at least they're forked between scoring out the Bologna. They pre advance it. We just know which one Tahalaman is. I also don't know what server five is. It's going well. Good. Okay, Server 5 is another Spin Doctor. What are they looking for? Yo, Santa, what do we have to be scared about? Hedge Fund? 19 credits. It's a Holloman. Okay, they're going to... Woo, that's cool. Oh, Beal. Okay, fine. Did you see the work I've done on Ice Cost Breakdown? I have a slightly different model to you. No, I don't think I have, Lucille. No, I don't think I have. What is that hinge on? So we probably want to trash this Holloman. Let's draw for an Econ card. Uh, poof. they're on 13 credits only. Holloman is expensive. Like, they paid six for a Beal. I think we're okay with that. I honestly don't know. Yeah. Like, I think here we can Bravado the remote server. We definitely need to pin all the Holloman, but Bravado is generally a five credit econ card at the baseline of being lows. Trust up Hydro will be a concern if you ever float tags. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of them are just on, like, trust up and self-growth, right? Like, that's good enough punishment. Self-growth is a messed up card. Uh, could they risk Hydra for three here? Yeah, they could. Can we window opportunity it? No, not really. VSA is okay. Ping, ah, I'm just going to run it. I don't care. We're from behind. We have to start taking risks. We're playing really behind. Like, they can be on five points next turn. And now it only costs them, uh, what is it? F uh, one credit to score to Bologna here? So they're incentivized to res the outermost. Now we get an extra credit here. We'll continue. I don't know if this is going to be. Fuck. <laughs> Santa, is this it? <laughs> is this the deck? <laughs> oh, man. Okay, cool. It's a snake. Um, We're going to go window opportunity that for sure. Hopefully we keep it. We don't die. No. So we lost a decoder. That's fine. That wasn't this version. Tell me about it. So we have two tags. It doesn't end the run, though. Uh, you can eat my class act. I don't care. Yeah, that's new to me, too. So we can't steal Bologna. We're already really tagged, so we'll pay two to trash. We lost our window. That's a bummer. So I think I'm just going to remove tag, remove tag. We could die to end a line. Uh, what's it called? Public trail. But I don't want to, like, they're playing big ice. I don't want to get them... Uh, Trust hopping something. Like, if they have to commit to the Bologna here, they're really weak to some other stuff. We uh, have one simul chip in our deck, so we can get back our unity. Oh, first click oppo. That can't be it. Second Holloman. Predictive. Oppo. Cool. I guess. Uh, now they can pay, what is it? Three credits to score balloon, I think. It's like res two, pay four, advance three, or advance two. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. They they mind you, they res the cloud eater for eight. Like that's okay, I guess. We really want a Hermes. So we have a mystic, that's fine. Mutual favor, that's okay. We have a window opportunity saucy combo for the cloud eater, which is kind of cute. 
So we could charge that. It looks like they want to score the blown of the hard way. They might actually pay six this turn, which is fine. Um, what are we mutually in favor to? Probably a cure appear because we're gonna have to deal with pings sooner than later. I don't think we can afford the earth rise. We probably actually can. I think Mystic might be a bit too little, because our next line is like saucy window, or sorry, window just install saucy. If they don't score this out, we could have used a Hermes a year ago. So they'll be on five, and now they jam something in here. Deck is definitely different. Was trying to gatekeeper as a tell, but it's 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 diverging. Yeah, it's diverging a bit. <laughs> um, so the best line here would be if we could draw into Hermes, then we install a saucy. We run through this. Now this could be a ping. They chose not to res it. They're in five credits, so they can res Mesna Chesso. They can res everything. And they're on five credits. And with five credits, they can do four. They can do four advanced. Yeah, they can score to three, two in their mode server. So this is a beal. We lose. So how do we deal with that? We just need to make them spend some amount of money. So our first line could be window opportunity run into the cloud eater. They can't res it. They can res the outermost. Um, let's draw once for the Hermes. No, it's not a Hermes. So the other option is we can boomerang this, and then window saucy cloud eater. That's probably for the best. Yeah, we need to do that. Bravado R and D then window S four. We don't want to bravado R and D so much. I don't know if they can res it. Be a problem. Yeah, Boomerang on Atomos is exactly what we're going to do. In theory, the order we do this doesn't matter. So now we'll window. We'll install run server 4. We'll install the saucy here. It gets derezzed. So we make three credits. If you have a Hermes here, this is why you like bounce the Cloud Eater. It's such a good line. It's a ping. Okay, that's why we Boomerang that. So it looks like we're going to steal the Blona and the Holloman. We might float attack here. It's hard to say. And we're going to get another uh, five credits, mind you, on this run. Oh, actually, only three more because we got two from the ping. They gained two. So we're gonna have three more credits at the end of this run. Take a Bologna. Oh, Rashida. Ah, bummer. So the two Oppas are out. And this is the last Spin Doctor. Not good financially. Oh my god, they chose not to re-res it. Absolutely killer. So unbelievably cool. They chose not to re-res their giant snake because three credits is way better for us. We're definitely playing against a smurf here. That's so good. All right, so if we don't clear the tag, the punishment for us is like, we don't really care about like, I guess we care about trust op a bit. Bird eat snack, yeah. I'm gonna remove the tag. So like we're playing around predictive. 10 credit econ denial for plus two credits, yeah, but it doesn't matter. It functionally doesn't matter. Like we can always go through this snake. No shot not resing the snake is worth it. I think it could be if they plan to win from hand. They also get a re-trigger when it does res. Yeah, that's true. Later on they get a re-trigger the snake. I'm just gonna end it. Obviously, we're not doing anything here. This is really bad. Yeah, now they're gonna put the two oppos back in. I don't know if we're playing this right. I don't think we are. I really struggle to to play like aggro against Reality Plus in any way. Uh, at least they did draw draw oppo. Just two tags, yeah. We can't recover from that. So we still have to steal a lot of Bologna's. Our breaker that breaks Gatekeeper is in the bin. Like we're so far behind. We can't steal Bologna's here. Hey, Game Droids, how's it going? Secret Sunday stream. Ping, totally fine. It's free for both players. We made money. Draw. Simul chip means we can get down a diversion eventually because we trash this saucy and then we can get the unity for free. We break HQ for two credits. We're probably going to lose here though. I feel like the draw econ was just not there for the game. Well, they went really, really fast, right? Like they scored out a, a Beal on tempo for like eight credits or whatever. Uh, that's not going to be good for us. We had an ugly start too. The thing is like when all your tools are about like pressuring ice res, like I don't know, it's hard. When you think it's pings and gatekeeper like we've literally found every single like this is what's messed up every single every single ice in this matchup is not an ice you want to de-res right like 
literally all of these ice are the worst ice to derez. Obviously, derezzing the 10 credit snake, that's a bit of a joke, but it is fundamentally our on res ice. Like, I don't. Why is this happening? Why is this happening? Like, did someone see us coming? We did not see one ice that does not, like, get benefit from being re-rezzed. We can rebound with Bravado and all three Alpha's in the bin. We're not out. We're not out. They can't res this. Okay, so how do we get in? We need to run this. So we can simul chip. They can't res this. We can simul chip through here. The best draw off the top here would be a diversion by a mile. The problem is, like, ping we're still struggling to deal with. It's only, like, boomerang here. That's not it. Going K's been first warm weekend. Got three hours overtime fixing ACs already. Yo, let's go. Are they fun to fix? Okay. So we can run HQ. We might not have wanted to draw there. So we can bravado HQ. Drop the three cards. We don't want to let that happen. Ideally, we were bravadoing this. But we got to think here. So if we want to simul ship this into that, cost one credit, we get our breaker down. We have three credits. We can break all of Gatekeeper. There's a snake? Yeah, there's a, a cloud eater underneath the sassy. It's pinning it. <laughs> it's a cloud eater. So if that's the case, like we always can pinhole this. They can just put a 3-2 on the table. Sometimes free work is very tedious because you have to wait like 50 minutes after filling it out to let the pressure equalize. Oh, cool. So if we do credit bravado. Okay, we have to do simul chip bravado. That means we can allow them to draw three. I think them drawing three is probably not great. Um, the other options like mutual favor for Kurapira, install Kurapira, run server one. That drops us to accessing on zero credits, which is not very good. I don't want to install the like tempo simul chip because I think we're going to get um, return to hand very soon. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I feel powerless. I feel really bad. I think drawing a boomerang is a play. Okay, um, what does that change? Not too much. How much econ do they have? Like, how bad is them allowing them to draw three? They have one YDL, two hedge funds, probably a predictive planogram. Bravado on ping? Yeah, Bravado on ping might have been right, but it might have been right a click ago. Even Bravado on R&D is fine. I don't know what this ice is going to do to us. Like, we're three tagged in. We might as well be a more tagged in. Like, I think we just do R&D here. Like, if this is a Starlit Knight, whatever, there is a Starlit Knight. If it's a Gatekeeper, I think that's the worst case for us. <laughs> Literally every ice has an on res text. What is this game? I don't know. I don't know. I don't want a conspiracy. Just there's an absolute difference when playing like with the A Maverick name and not the A Maverick name. I don't know if this is the biggest like example of it. Okay, it was Rashida. We could have pinned all that. I don't know if they would have pushed out a Beal behind like a thing we can't. Oh, shit, man, it's over. That's good. Cool. Good game. Woof. All right, literally every single ice has on res text. Let's give that another shot. It feels terrible. So what could we done there? I don't know how do we generate like forward tempo into that ice suite. Maybe that's the point, right? Like if you're playing against Aquaceros crew and all this sort of stuff, like you just need your ice to do stuff now. 
Playing against 47 card Atea, interesting. Atea can be pretty fast, but Atea doesn't often have the finances early. Where this is like, if they push early in the remote server, and if Spark goes for like um the very obvious Charlotte, because you can see Charlotte from a mile away, you like run it and window it, I think. Thanks, you too. Uh, they could be more fast events too. And if that's the case, you probably want a Hermes. But this hand looks really good. It's hard to ice up HQ and make a Atea push at the same turn. A lot of times, uh, Atea is not very good at icing centrals in the first couple turns. Would your red team battle the question for this deck just because of the three career fairs? I don't know. So the big thing with this deck is like it doesn't want to be running that often, right? Because the, the thesis is that with Tributary, you can't run Archives for fun. So I'm assuming, Bill, that that kind of goes antithetical to that sort of idea, right? But I don't know. I couldn't tell you. All right, so could be an upgrade. So here, what are we worried about? Lethal Sisenton? I don't think that's real. Adrian moves over. Okay, so no matter what, now we want to charge Adrian. So we have a couple lines here, right? Like we probably should gamble first. Now, if we run server one, then we can run server two, and then we can run server one again. I want to keep the saucy in hand, but like we run server one, if they res, we run server two, and then we either window opportunity server one again. Because Adrian actually does cost money, and getting an Adrian down on turn one's pretty good. This looks like a Rashida. Sisenton's not real. It's just Sisenton. <laughs> uh, luckily, we're not holding that many events. All right. Good game, y'all. Do we respect that? I don't think we respect that. Like the chance of hitting the so okay, so the, you have to call event there, and then the damage has to hit the other card, right? Like so, if we lose the wind of opportunity, and it hits the e shutdown, then we're fine. Just enough events, yeah, just enough. Oh no way! That's wild. That's cool. You cut two cards. Yeah, I don't know. I I don't like face checks. You can die on turn one. Like I that doesn't feel good. I think NSG was trying to move around away from that. And then we have ice like that, that on turn one, you can just die. And I don't think running was wrong there. I'm not convinced running was wrong. Not a good day for Loza when we got two credits. We fired every single turn. What are you talking about? Oh, man. Kerry, how's it going? I mix the yours and the other one on three. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. I tried marrying this. Those two together as well. Size does pretty up there on the design. Yeah, it's like... Pretty atrocious design. You don't want to die on turn one. There should not be a card that you can just kill someone on turn one. There's, there was like a big change in um in design and Netrunner between like Ashes and After, and that's like a very Ashes card. It doesn't show up though. Like that interaction just doesn't happen a lot, so people don't feel that bad about it. Uh, Runner. Oh, the seal. Oh, sorry, the seal. Uh. I was gonna run that one back with Spark. Thank you. We can play it right after. No, I have Spark. We can do it again. We don't want to end on turn one. I want to see that deck. I want to see it. We'll play with the seal after for sure. No worries. I slide behind the stream. Okay, it's all good. Why is Sisenton not real? Yudaho, how's it going? It's just not very popular. I'd argue in a lot of these sort of like decks, like the Taya decks, like I don't think I want to play Ack Infusion. Or sorry, I don't want to play Anansi. Maybe you can play Karuna because Karuna is broken for more with uh, Carmen. Uh, but it just isn't that popular. A lot of people just wanted to play Ag Infusion. Or sorry, wow, I wanted to play Anansi. That's mostly it. Because once you have your breaker down, break for three is actually, it's okay. It just isn't a common card. Like if you look at most published in techie decks for the last little while, Sizen Dun's not that popular compared to like other cards you're playing around more consistently. But you do sometimes just die on turn one. That's for sure. Thanks, you too. Saxon Dynas, Jinteki, HHN, lose on turn one. Do you see Tributary getting banned? Um, I don't know. I think there's a chance. I think it's weird. So the question is, like, how often can you let Tributary fire? And I think if you can make that answer to be more less often than not, uh, then, yeah, maybe it could. It's like, on the basis, what it does is makes Netrunner, like, less interaction heavy, right? Like, if you just can't run more board states, I don't know if that's better for the game. It's hard to tell. Both Korean Sizenton get vaporized by crew. 
Uh, no, Karuna doesn't Jad because it's three strength, right? Like, I think that's actually like the reason why in Carmen metas, you actually want to play Karuna more than Sai Santan. Because the lethal flatline is not that big of a thing. The tempo hits slightly different, uh, but it's three strength. All right. Well, this is a different opening. Okay. So I don't really want to check the Spin Doctor. We want to check Servant 2 because it's likely a cohort. We probably want to check Spin Doctor, but I think better than checking the Spin Doctor is putting down Class Act. So this is going to be a cohort for True. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, there's a big difference. I think that's why a bunch of decks were playing Karuna. Oh, it's a Charlotte. Interesting. A lot of times you want to advance her. Okay, what do we want? A second diversion seems pretty good with Celestial's economy. Earthrise career fair is pretty good. I don't honestly know if we need the boomerang that soon. It stops us from dying to size and time. But that can happen twice, right? Yeah, we well, die to size and time on turn one. Oh man. Yeah, if this is a fast advanced deck, which is trying to like chain um uh what's it called? Four twos into four twos. Hermes is pretty good to get early. Spark definitely needs something down. Excuse me. Install a killer first, please. Install Dirty Laundry on Naked Archives. You lose a turn and eight credits to lose the game. Get good. Feels weird. Wait, what do you mean pudding? So Atea, it's not going to matter here. A lot of times you want to do Atea, you want to do the other card first because the ice comes in cheaper. It's not going to matter on your first ice, but it's a good habit to build. Just like with Acer Group, you want to install the innermost first because you almost always want to do server three, then this. Because, again, the ice strength starts changing. Install a killer first. Oh, like comparing to HHN? No, I see why it's compared to HHN. Sometimes you just lose on turn one. You shouldn't lose on turn one for interacting. Like, in Neverner was not, it's not functionally a healthy game if, if you run to ice on turn one and die. Right? It's the same way that HHN isn't healthy. You run on turn one, you die. I know it's slightly different. Oh, uh, you don't want to... You need ice HQ here, don't you? The only same grace of size and time is bad. I don't think it's bad. So this means that this is not resable. Because they would have res there. Yeah. Well, they should have res the cohort probably. It saves the credit. We lose the credit and we still have to trash it anyways. Los hasn't fired. <laughs> Throw back to when I was first playing Neverner and thought Crim meant Anarch because those factions were red. Crimson? <laughs> Wait, what do you mean, Scrub? How's it going? Requiring you to have a killer before you interact with the corpse eyes is a lot more annoying than dealing with HHN. Okay, so we have a career fair. We have no targets. We have a Miss Bones. They have a lot of trash balls. They're on two credits. We can check HQ. The only thing they can res on HQ is a Tattoo Bolo, which I think we're totally fine with. If that's the case, though, we should probably... I wanted to say Hermes Bravado. But we can't do that. We could do Hermes Credit Bravado. I think that's fine. There's a big chance there's an agenda in HQ because we've drawn through like, I think it's only 12 cards, but we've seen nothing. I think the thing that gets sparked back into the game here is if we steal um the 5-3, the bacterial. Now, no matter what happens when we res, this Bravado is good for us. Can't res Tributary. We have to play around Tributary to some extent. Spin in hand, bummer. Uh, I think we're just going to run HQ again for a single. There's one face down in archives. That could be the agenda, but... We're looking at a high density because we're not even playing 49, right? Having face scale into face check used to be the thing with Neural Katana's around. I'd argue it wasn't, like, but that's a big thing, Carrie. It's like, I'll take three damage, there you go, to steal a Neural Katana. Well, it takes, will I, like, that's where Karuna is, like, so much more NSG. It's like the damage for not face checking with other breakers, two net damage, four if you want it to be. But Sai Santana, you can just die. Even with five cards in hand, you can just die. And Neural Katana doesn't kill you. R running with three cards in hand, like this is a good thing about the core set, is if you had Snare, you had Snare, you also have to respect Neural Katana. So you can't just die to a Neural Katana face check unless you're doing something wrong. But running with four cards on turn one into, into Jinteki, I don't think it's wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah, face checking Neural Katana with a killer is totally fine. It sucks, but it's fine. Yeah, it's a tempo hit. It's good, but it's, it's fine. I think the fact that you can die on a face check on turn one is not fine. I really like this idea. Yeah, Karuna is exactly the difference between uh, NSG and, and early Ashes. It's a really, really uh, very nice uh, difference. Cortex Locks is, yeah, Cortex Locks is even worse, mind you. Cortex Lock is the worst of all options. At least it's cool for a nice that, like, you know, scales down throughout the game, which we were seeing more of, though. It's just not like that. Okay, so Window doesn't seem that good here, but once Spark Res is one ice, we're going to do a lot of work to that ice. Uh... 
The design philosophy between Soraka and Blade is unplayable. <laughs> Not exactly, Ned Dad. I think we need to check archives. I think the spin doctor is going to pop itself. Maybe we can rent R&D. Yeah. But I think now there's two agendas out. Yeah, that makes sense. So now we want to go R&D. We can't really install another Earthrise. So we could put the saucy on top of that. I don't think that's a great play, but like our hand is mostly reactionary. Install Desperado, face check, and Cortex Lock. Yeah, and like playing into uh, uh what's it called? Like the space ice one. I think Miss Bones will make sense in this matchup. Like you're playing against uh what I can't remember the name of that Russian cosmonaut, but like the space ice deck. You just get turn one, hit by Cortex Lock, you lose. Two credit, four damage, four strength is giga messed up. Yeah. Yeah, Cortex Lock is messed up. Wormhole? No, no, the ID. The ID. I'm pretty sure Quinton Smith was running one too. I know Pat won. Gagarin, yes, thank you, Ares. How's it going? And Gagarin is like Cortex like Gagarin. I know Patrick like made top guy to regionals. And people just like one of the best players in Montreal uh ran into Pat's deck. And it was just like, oh, Cortex Lock. Oh, I guess I die. And Gagarin. And like, so be it. Okay, cool. So I'd argue that we don't really need a twinning here. Hey, Ren, still missing my favorite Mati trigger install in turn one. Yeah, Maya running dies to Cortex Lock. Gagarin. So, what do we want to do here? I think we want to deny Vovo. There's a chance this is a Botu or something expensive, but I actually don't want Vovo to exist. Uh, mind you, Pinhole has good targets. We could just brute force this. I'd actually ra rather keep the uh, Pinhole for um, our friend, uh, Adrian, because we don't know what the text on him says. So I think if that's the case, we just do Sure Gamble. We just do sure. I don't even think we need a saucy. Uh, sure I think we just saucy run this. We have Miss Bones here, so whatever's in the server is going to go down. And if this is res cheaply, immediately we can then do pinhole into Vovo if this is like a Botu. Except when PD imports snare and size and that's a joke. It's not like you need to install Killer before contesting PD remote. No. But th this is like the worst thing to me. It's like Jinteki is so. The problem with Jinteki is somewhat cards like Sai Senton and Anansi, right? Like, do you know what I want to play in Atea? I want to play Drafter because Drafter is messed up good in Atea. But do you know what will never fire in Atea? Drafter. And that's just like fundamentally such a big difference. It's like with HB, you can largely face check. It is a Boto nice without a breaker, but you cannot do it. Don't hit our, oh, they hit our window. No, they didn't. Um, You know what I mean? Like, it's just the issue here is that because you're respecting things like Sai Santana abstractly, I know we're not, you cannot play ice. Like, you just cannot functionally play face check sentries. And I love Drafter. Like, Drafter is just kind of the best. All right, let's be annoying. We don't have an install here. We probably could have draw once. What's our last click? I guess it's Earthrise. So this is fine. So we're going to take the server down. Just like, yeah. And this deck is really good against decks that, like, you know, don't financially have a lot of pressure. So, wow, Saucy was... Eight credits. It's impossible to ever truly know what Adrian says. <laughs> Draft your MVP and all that. Yeah, it's really good. So we're going to eat Volvo. We're going to eat the Rashida. We should have access in the other order. It's Rashida. Okay, great. And then we'll just put down an Earthrise. They can re-res it if they want to. They should. Uh, admittedly there, if we pinhold first, it would have been a bit better for us. But hey, he has a Boto. Boto is pretty good. This so is why I play tier in all my HB decks. Did oh he they also trashed one from hand, yeah. That's so why I play tier in all my HB decks. Here, one second. Maddie says hello stream. She just came home. Alright, let's see an Adrian. Yeah, there you go. So the question is how do we deal with Boto? How we deal with Boto? Uh as we uh we Hermes, whatever this is. So what do we want here? Ravada, pretty sick. Mutual favor for the crew appear to break Balto, doable. Daily cast, I don't think we actually really need here. So our play now is to get our multi-axis. If we had a twinning, actually, it would have been okay because we could have charged on Miss Bones and we really want to get some pressure here. So this can't be anything scary for us unless it is specifically, it could be the Lacosta I think we saw. I'm not sure if there's a shuffle. Hey, Winnegon, miss anything? Yeah, we realized your deck list was illegal. I was excited for a second. How are you doing? Meaning with the cast to blind play HV, which investigator do you recommend going? Hemlock Veil. Oh. Any of them. Ren, I, I'm not finished Hemlock yet. We're, I think, on the finale tonight. Uh, 
I don't think I've seen anything in Hemlock Vale that's really pushed me to play one style or one thing more than other scenarios have or other campaigns have. Well, we're just going to e-shut this down, right? Yeah. Got to play Arkham Online first time yesterday. How'd it go, Axu? Game's sick. It's really, really good. Uh, we'll pay two for that. It just denies credits. Oops. Oops. Saucy was another six credits. Oops. Oops, all pressure. Seamer, how's it going? Yeah, she got lunch. She really liked it. She got fish on her head. She was so excited. She got she got mackerel head. I feel bad for that. Yeah, I feel bad for this. This feels bad. Hey, Thanos. This is this a Fight Club Los? It is. We'll play our own brew in a bit. We've not been having the best time so far. We've lost two games very quickly. Uh, I think we just pay zero here. I'm not actually sure. So, okay. And then I think we just run Adrian. Well, what do we have to do for Adrian? If the bids differ, I still don't know what it says. The runner cannot access cards other than this upgrades. So if it costs zero, wait, what? If the bids match, the runner cannot access upgrades for the remainder of the turn. What, what are we meant to do here? We pay one? I, I don't know what this says. If the bids match, the runner cannot access. So we want the bids to differ. So I can pay two. If we pay one, Spark has to pay zero. I want Spark to pay one though. I don't know what this does. If the bids differ, the runner cannot access cards other than this upgrade. What am I meant to do? I don't know what this text is. If the bids differ, the runner cannot... Uh, he fails his, 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 his LSAT. The bids differ, the runner cannot access cards other than this upgrade. I want to access this card so the bids have to be the same. I'm paying zero. I don't care. I'm just paying zero. Pay due to guaranteed Boris. How's it going? I'm not... I'm paying zero. Celestial will pay one. What happens if Celestial pays nothing? If the bids differ, I still don't know what this does. The runner cannot access cards other than this upgrade. If the bids match. If the bids match. The, now I should read that. If the bids match, the runner cannot access this upgrade. So we don't want the bids to match, so we have to pay one. We're paying one. Final answer. I think I did it. You want them to be differ? Yeah, 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 yeah. I got there. I got there. <laughs> I genuinely don't know what this card does. We got their team. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If they paid zero, yeah, we, we want Celestial Spark to pay one. If Celestial Spark pays one here to like get us, they got us, but like not in a way that actually was good. Okay. Fantastic. Back on track. Don't want to read the text on that one again. Just going to destroy him on site. Oh man. Sorry, Ren. You probably said something about Arkham. Everyone's trying to help me. I don't know what it says. Hey, Lord Gitliner. Just call it Jeff. <laughs> Match bids is other stuff. I don't, I don't know what it is. That's a lot of text. Evil on ice. I, I play three of them. Type fam gave me a busted rogue bounty hunter fight deck and I just played value econ. Yeah, you can play value econ in that rogue deck for sure. The win with words deckless Photoshop was great, by the way. There's a lot of cards that the runner has to deal with more than you do. Hey, I feel I should concede just not being able to. Yeah, yeah, it's rough. No worries. I hear you. Yep, that's it. That's what the deck can do if you're not prepared for it. Which is why I don't know if you have to play Rubicon. But like if you can't res ice on remote server if HQ is open, full stop. And so this makes any deck that doesn't have a consistent economy just slows down. Just slows down by a mile. Because now you can't push into here because we can threaten it. We have windows. Like how do you res a Boto again? Can Spark spend 12 credits resing this Boto? No. Game's over. Ben committed to Kohaku and I played Alice, who I love. I was thinking of Hank. Excited to only hear good things. Okay, Ren, you want to have a little... Arkham tangent. Yeah. It's hard to get back financially when everything you care about has to be in the remote. Hey, Silas, I'll passively watch. Usually I watch your YouTube content, but I thought I can support you. Maybe a bit like that. Thank you, Silas. How's it going? Welcome to the Twitch side. Thanks for the game, eh? Welcome to the stream. I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> You too. Okay. Oh, man. Okay. I need a time. I wish I had a timer because I want to just do a little other stuff tangent for a bit. A bit of it's going to be Arkham. The problem is like looking at Arkham is really hard because the, the visuals are not up. Okay. Arkham tangent. It's 223. It can't be longer than five minutes. ArkhamDB.com. How does Jinteki make reliable money in this new meta? Operations and Charlotte in a remote server. Like Glacier Egg Infusion is really good right now. But that deck has other ways to leverage like little money and big money. Uh, okay, cards. 
my thing with the Hemlock Veil is I think the Hemlock Veil is a really cool set. This is the latest set in Arkham. It's not out in Canada. Oh my God, FFG, something is going on. Shout out to Jeff, who I was kind enough to let me order Age of Apocalypse Marvel Champions to his place so I can pick it up next week at, at Mansion Runner because I think Canada is just not receiving FFG product unless it's Star Wars Unlimited, which that sucks. This was meant to come out months ago. It's still not out. Anyways, Feast, Feast of Hemlock Veil is really strange to me. To me, it kind of gives me some RWR vibes in some in some ways where like I want to do scans only flashbang warning. Sorry about that. It was midday, so I guess for some people it's not. I think this set has the same sort of problem that uh, RWR kind of has where there's a lot of really cool and interesting cards, but I don't like the IDs at all. I think this is one of the biggest like differences between how I interesting and not so much powerful, but how interesting and fun the identities the investigators are in this set versus the player cards. I think it's night and day. I think the investigators are so uninteresting, but the player cards slap. So let's talk about the investigators really quick. Wilson Richards, 3333 line. That is a bad stat line in general. Obviously, he gets plus one when using a tool. So that means fundamentally he's a four book four invite. It's really hard to use tools for willpower and agility is not impossible. I actually do like lock picks and like hatchet and stuff like that. But fundamentally, when you play him, unless you're playing like low player count, playing that sort of like flex to me doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, I'd argue this is probably good because I do complain that when you're playing Guardian and all you're doing is I'm going to hit with Hammer, I'm going to hit with Machete, I'm going to hit with Flamethrower, your turns get very boring. So maybe at least Wilson Richard gets a bit more interesting on the basis that you can be a bit flexible. You can get tools and you can fight. That's okay, I guess, but whatever. Um, I think the biggest problem with Wilson is ad hoc is what his ID text should have been or this should have been permanent. Because this is the fun of Wilson Richard is playing ad hoc and you have to build a really bad deck or like a really inconsistent, ugly deck to make ad hoc do anything consistently. And then it's a one if per deck with literally zero way to tutor it. That is such a bummer. Ad hoc is genuinely a cool thing that Wilson Richards can do. Unfortunately, it's just not being delivered on most board states. I've played multiple Wilson Richard decks where at games where I've never seen this. And even though you're playing a deck that has like so many extra tools into it, such a bummer, uh, really, really unfortunate. Kate is very good. However, she doesn't do any interest, anything interesting. I assume there would be assets that cared about how many clues there are on them to have any sort of ability. But currently, she's just like, how many plus twos do you want to get before you're worried about your weakness? Uh, same sort of thing where she has interesting cards, but inherently shuffling your interesting cards into your deck is the antithesis of I want from an, from an Arkham deck. I want my cool cards now. Why do I have to shuffle these into my deck and then hope to draw them? Which means probably the optimal way to build a deck here is by just spamming a lot of card draw which like welcome to seeker unfortunately so this i don't like i don't like the sort of cards that shovel into your deck and then hopefully you draw them later it's like peak harmony ar therapy where it's just like i'm hoping that this does something but it fundamentally probably doesn't change the game uh otherwise her building is so unfortunate too because she can play all the seeker cards and then just science cards zero to five and all the good science cards are seeker cards there's like a couple mediocre healing cards outside of faction that are science traded but inherently she basically just plays seeker zero to five uh that could change in the future but again just not my highest point. I, I think she's the most like straightforward playable. My partner's playing it. She's fine. I don't think she's that fun. Harmony Therapy Hate, I'm here for that. Kate has two science cards she can play outside of yellow. It's I think more than two, but it's like, yeah, it's very, very, very low. Uh, Alessandra Zorzi, she's actually kind of cool. She was my favorite going to the set. I'm playing her with right now. She has a good stat line. Uh, a lot of the cards, like you find out when you're building her, you don't actually want to put too many parlay cards into her. You still can, but you want to get that one parlay a turn. So you kind of want to like balance it out. A lot of the good parlay payoff cards, as much as like good in quotes, don't really work that well. But playing this sort of event based card deck with like, you know, fine clothes and that, you know, neutral recursion card, it's cool. Um, Beguile is a bit clumsy and it's a, you know, a bit slow. I wonder if you want to play haste just to do three parlay actions or however that works. It might work out, but she's the most interesting and the most flexible, I think, or not flexible, but the most interesting. This is genuinely what I want with Investigator that forces you to interact with a different part of the card pool and build a deck that looks like nothing else ever. That's why I'm disappointed by some of the other Investigators because all the other Investigators play like things we've seen before. Now, this comes from the jaded experience of someone who owns an entire play card pool of the whole game, not someone who's getting into the game now. And if you're getting to the game now, maybe Wilson and Kate are interesting. Sure, they're functional, sort of. Uh, but Alessandra is exactly what I want to see more. Just like Kamani in the last set was like the coolest thing ever because they interact with the game 
in a very fundamentally different way. I think that's great. Doing another tier list, Jeff. How's it going? Five minutes. We're our contention. Five minutes. She's very fun, both for theme and stirring. Fine clothes feels like Devsy in early crim decks. Very good with it. Very okay with that. Yeah, I agree. I've been enjoying Alessandra more than I thought. Uh, Kohaku, haven't played with him. I think he's the most flexible and straightforward. His ability is cool. And I like that his ability, this is the exact opposite of all the other cards in the set. His ability supports multiple play styles because he plays with Bless and plays with Curse. I haven't played a lot of the Blur subtype in Mystic so far, just because it's a hard thing to do. And when I play with other players, a lot of other players I play with don't like me adding curses to the bag. I'd argue adding a curse to the bag isn't honestly that bad for the game, especially if you're playing functional decks. It's not that big of a deal. But Kahaku is fascinating to me, and I would play more Kahaku. This is exactly what I want, where I think he can support Bless archetypes, kind of. He can bless, support curse archetypes, he can support Blur archetypes. Fundamentally, his stat line is okay. 6-8 is fine. Uh... Yeah, he's good. He's cool. This is exactly what I want. Something a bit more flexible. As much as I've been struggling because there's so many mystics that feel like they have a very similar text box, kind of shoehorning Bless and Curse in. I don't think the Priest is very good, Father Mateo. I really enjoyed Alternate Jim Culver more than I thought I did. And Kohaku feels like another option to Alternate Jim Culver. Uh, and I think he's probably a bit better than I think. Uh, yeah, Blurst. Finally, Hank Samson. Oh my god, this one's the worst to me. I'm currently on the finale with my partner. I'm playing Hank Samson. And you can't really tell what Hank Samson does here, but he has 3153 and then he has a really flat stat line of 5-5. Five, five. When he's defeated, you heal everything and then you turn to his other side and then you can choose what his other side is. Imagine like a flip ID. One of them has 4-6 and the other 6-4. You cannot be healed, however. And then your stat line either shifts and flattens or gets wider, where the fight goes up and everything else kind of goes down. Having one book actually was a problem. Uh, Turns out it is a problem. There's some really annoying encounter cards you will find in Hemlock Vale having one book. So I actually chose sometimes to flip into the other side to get the three book up sooner than I actually would have uh, imagined. My biggest problem with Hank is I haven't flipped Hank over much because as soon as you put together a Hank deck, let me show you my Hank deck. Uh, it's very easy in Survivor to build into a deck that just doesn't die. Because Survivor has a lot of like really, really annoying cards that can infinitely soak. Now, mind you, Hank says you can soak damage and out of horror from other people around you. I haven't done that. And I think you have to build into this to make Hank interesting. But it's like pretty trivial to get down Jessica Hyde, who heals one damage a turn, and Peter Sylvester, who heals one horror a turn, and just kind of go infinite. I flipped Hank over once. And my biggest issue is once you flip Hank over, so basically once you've ascended and you've gone to the part where you become resolute bruised Hank, your stats sometimes get better, but then the ability on them is like really, really not useful. The other two copies of Hank are these two copies. Oh, apparently you can't open them? Apparently you can't open them? Okay, well, one of them says, whenever you take a damage, draw a card. And the other one says, whenever you take a horror, gain two resources, something like that. And I just don't think those are payoffs that make mechanical sense in the context of the game. By the time I'm flipping Hank, I'm usually in the mid to late game. And that's the point in the game where I don't need extra money and I don't need card draw. Like, this is the biggest thing to me is like, why flip Hank? When I flip Hank, going from five to six fight doesn't fundamentally matter. Maybe I'm playing on standard and I can't. But unfortunately, having getting free resources by getting hurt or fundamentally, uh, what's it called? Uh, getting card draw just doesn't matter that much. It's not something that I think you can build your deck around. Maybe you can. Maybe you speed run flipping Hank and then you just get all this card draw. I think that's probably what you want to do. And I think a bunch of this is my issue because I'm building a Hank deck just like I build everything else. Or I build like, a you know, a survivor survivor, which is just like I'm not going to die because I have, you know, all the soak in the world. That's it. <laughs> that's my thought on the investigators. They're like so strange. I think fundamentally a lot of them fail to deliver what I kind of wanted from them, uh, where it's just like Wilson Richards is really, really boring. I think his solo makes a bit more sense because you have a bit of flexibility, but I'd rather have somebody, especially when I'm playing four players, who's an expert at one thing and then fundamentally relying on your assets. It kind of feels like a mean as a Dane. Having a mediocre stat line where you depend on your card draw to be relevant doesn't feel great to me. Kate is boring. Uh, Alessandra and Kohaku are successes and then Hank is just like kind of not dysfunctional, but like very, very, very uh, uninteresting. Arkham Times up. Yeah, thank you. We got there. What does Weeping Yuri do? It looks like Ivic. Weeping Yuri is so cool. It just looks like Ivic. <laughs> I assume this circles back to complaining about Hoshiko somehow. <laughs> Our new one? No, not at all. Uh, Ren was asking about the IDs for the new set. I'm back on stream and we're suddenly talking Marvel Champions again. Hey, Fix B, we're going to get out of this. House roll yourself. I'll see you in hell. Flips your ID. Explode yourself early. Have good fun. Yeah. 
I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing to make Hank interesting. Like, there's a bunch of cards in the set that work with Hank, like the devil and uh, the, like, wrong place, right time. I just don't think they are easier to play or make more sense on more board states than just playing, like, generalist Hank. And I'm playing generalist Hank, and I just don't flip. I just don't flip. Uh, it's, like, it's that straightforward. Like, this is not an interesting deck. My favorite interaction, Sparrow Mask with Meat Cleaver. 10 out of 10, but one of the big reasons you can't flip. Because as soon as you flip to Hank's side, you can't heal the horror off Meat Cleaver. Meat Cleaver, Sparrow Mask, sick. Anti-synergistic with Hank, though, because as soon as you flip, you can't use it anymore. So it is what it is. That's my Arkham Tangent. Um, very strange box. The player cards are really, really cool. Very, very fascinating. I just found a lot of the IDs let me down, um, which you kind of like it the other way. I think I'd rather have an interesting ID. Speed running his Arkham Tangent. We got out of there. Okay, okay. It says best annoying, but very easy to deal with Yuri. Yeah, Yuri is like flavorfully so cool. Like Yuri follows you and then when something bad happens, it attacks you, but then it runs away. It's like the coolest combination for, uh, it's a very, very tangible weakness. I like it a lot. I like the campaign a lot so far. Yeah, the campaign so far has been great. It's been really, really good. Maddie and I recently played the Lost Sister just the other day and we were like one action short. We got very unlucky, um, but it's been very cool so far. I haven't seen the finale yet. I think that's tonight. Anyways, thanks for my attention. Any page like Jateki for play Arkham LCG? Uh, Kaichim, how's it going? No, there's not. Uh, people play. Hi. Oh, Lucille, we'll play one after. We'll play one after. Sorry. Um, people play on TTS. People play, I think on Octagon you can play. I've never done it. Uh, <laughs> probably not. Just a quick 10 minute, 5 minute Arkham tangent. Uh, maybe it was like 7 minutes. Maybe it went a bit over. Yeah, campaign's been really good. Campaign has been really good so far. Finale is a classic. Got to read the rules at least a couple times to really figure it out. Uh-oh, I'm worried about that. Yeah. Lucille, you want to come back in? All right, sorry, MP. Yeah, this is low stack. Did I miss the finals talk? No, Jai, not so much on it because I didn't watch all the two hours because it was just yesterday. I watched the bits of it. Uh, the game is obviously fascinating. Shout out to Tempest and D. Uh, and like shout out to Fight Club in general. I think Fight Club is absolutely fantastic. Glad to hear it. Thank you for the tangent. Investigators were difficult for me to crack into too. Yeah. I think some of them will mature. Some of them will mature. Um, but I think some of them are just like, I don't know. Just strange, strange designs. All right. Let's see how much we can pressure this HPPD deck. I don't think Lucille, she plays um, Regolith or YDL. I think she plays Regolith. So this opening hand has an early gamble, early class act. We can check the remote server. Hopefully it's something big. And then we can window come back. If it's an MIC, we can still afford to do that. I don't know if we want to wake. This hand's like, okay. We have like two and a half good cards. Three card. Yeah, we'll keep this. They mulliganed. Or excuse me, she mulliganed. So we can keep it. I was super cooked after the last game. I think everyone was. I don't think anyone expected it to be as long as it was. Chugged a whole jug of water after the game. <laughs> this is a god hand. Yeah, I wonder how we're going to pressure on this turn. I'm not too familiar with the deck to know it's like fantastic. Obviously, we like Gamble, Class Act. Mystic Early is really good once we get our 20 down, let alone after what Class Act draws. And then Window probably for the remote pressure, but we don't have an install with it. Don't let you know this is not my normal PD deck. Oh, cool. Adrian says for future reference, do the bids match? No, go trash to clone. Do the bids match? Yes, X is the rest. Yeah, but bye, that doesn't rhyme. So I'm not going to remember it. I appreciate the effort. But I'm going to be like, do the mids batch? Okay, then I trash the clone. Oh, that's correct. Do the bids match? Access the rest. I like subliminal. Why are we not running? Interesting. Something is afoot. I was supposed to sleep and said, I'll watch one more. Didn't <laughs> sign up for that. You wake up, it's Tuesday. Uh, the mail's piled up at the door. Your, your 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 friends are calling. Hey, where you been? You've missed work. It's gonna be remoteless PD. Oh, maybe. Yeah, I think uh, there's a chance the liminal means like fast advance remote, a uh, fast advance from hand. Right? That's not great. Active policing. It could be. Yeah. Eleven minute bacterial fire. I think D was saying that they listened to like three or four different albums through the whole thing. Oh no. Mine seems okay. Uh oh. Upgrade on R&D turn one. This looks like it's a... Uh, 
My Wanza, my Wanza reflex firing up there. Keep seeing all the discussion around Window and was momentarily confused because accessing the bottom card R&D is not exciting. Game of Droids, I totally hear you. That caught me off guard a while. It's like, what the heck? What are you talking about? Like, people call this Window? And the thing is, like, there was a card back in the day called Window. So I don't want to call this, I want to call this, like, Woo or Whoop or something. Woo is also a bad one for obvious reasons. I was going to bring up Wanza. <laughs> okay, you know. I shagged the Bridgman and I managed to fill the air throughout the duration. Big shout outs. Yeah, y'all did great. Again, I didn't listen to the full two hours. Um... I haven't heard Bridgman do commentary in a while. Bridgman's really good. Jai, you're good too. Same with Aksu. Uh, but yeah, Bridgman has just kind of been out of the game for a bit. It's good to see him back. I don't know. After Mulligan. Axe? Yeah, Axe might be better. Woof. But woof is doof. Doof is woof. All right. Well, she found it. The game has changed. What is that clue, clue, too close to Cardi? It does rhyme? No, it doesn't rhyme, Ba. No install here. I like Whoop. Yeah, Whoop, I think, is the, the most easy to, to do. Maybe E Woot Down? <laughs> Emergency Woot Down. Oh, this seems really like it. Do the mids match? Yes. Do the bids match? Access the rest. Do the bids match. Access the clone. Hold on. We can do better. All right. Draw into an econ card. Sick. So, career fair, earthrise. That's good. Inside job, we don't need early. I don't think we need saucy early. If it keeps battle drop, don't want to slow play. I click no for the action. Oh, get out. Oh, beans. Let's see how it holds. Sorry about that. Yeah. It's just lagging for the seal. So we've created Fair Earthrise. Saucy with Whoop is like pretty good. She might push out with the um the greasing from hand. If that's the case, I don't think we need the inside job here. I'd rather have a boomerang. So I'm just gonna say subliminal suggests his trib. Yeah, that's like an interesting combination, Jester. You're right. Boss rhyming yes and rest with no with clone. It's not the worst. Like I think you're allowed the 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 creative flexibility to rhyme yes with rest and no with clone. That's pretty good. Res is ping. <laughs> Res is the gatekeeper. Oh, head explodes. <laughs> oh, man. You got to match it to snatch it? Oh, wait. No. Okay, Game of Droids is the problem. Got to match it to snatch it. What is it? Because you had to put in quotes the agenda. And I thought I would snatch Adrian. If the bids do not match, Adrian's just Ash. Okay, now no, it's getting hard. It's genuinely getting more difficult. Corporate hospitality last two clicks. That's hard. So this is the other way around, Lamau. <laughs> I was like, it's not a bit. I generally do not know what the card says. And every time I have to read it three times. It's like, yeah, just let your opponent worry about it is the way I see it. I know it's good, but I'm, my opponent's just going to read it. Not me. I'm going to spin the side game. Sprint went back? That's something's messed up here. This is a weird combo deck. Everyone pays zero. Adrian does not exist. It's not rhyming. It's assonance. Come on. Six cards in hand. Do we boomerang tributary? I think we might respect the tributary. I really want to get the wake down. I think the wake is really important to a tributary, as much as I'm never running R&D. Adrian, what's his name? -o. Um, What is she up to? Like, get me a diversion by now. Like, what was that turn? Sprint into corporate hospitality into sprint? Like, are you playing CI? What's happening? So we definitely want to get the Earthrise down. You don't do that click one, but um, with the Waken Plan, it does the damage, right? I think losing the Whoop or the Saucy is fine. I realize I will never financially recover from this. I think we could just let this fire. I'm just kind of worried. Because clearly she's doing some Dida Snare or something. Oh, yeah. It's a combo deck. Got to go pay my first game of the CI with House Belly. What a good time for me. Got to got to go play. Oh, yeah. Yo, it, the neck looks really good. Like, obviously, business as usual, corporate hospitality seems really good. Better? I think we overextended on this run. That's why I play Adrian for the psychic damage. 
Adrian's good. He's just a good card. I do think that deck wants to play one Anoetic if it can. At least the versions I've been. Lag is still bad. Ah, bummer. Braun. Ah, oh, it's a big one. Uh, apparently that's it. Definitely want to draw an Econ card. Not sure why we don't just let the trip fire. I'm scared, Jeff. I think you're right. We should just let the trip fire. But Lucille, she has, like, ice. She's not going to ace it, though, so I don't think we care. It has to be a different server. Yeah, we probably should have just sent it. I think that boomerang is way too valuable. Going down to one card was not right. I don't like that. Might be on zero spins. Let's try to hide agendas. Maybe. But I think if she's on some weird combo deck, why would she be on no spins? Ah, uh, Bremer. I, no worries. It's okay. Oh, hopefully that. All right, we're going to do another one. Is this the no spin to Kana version? Is that on Sprint? I feel like it might not be. Oh, actually, maybe it was. Yeah, I think Man in the Moon posted a list, which was like on no spin Doctor and Sprint instead of one Sprint. Yeah, that could be it. Was it Man in the Moon? I thought it was. But I know someone recently posted, maybe it's not Man in the Moon. Someone recently posted a spinless uh, PD deck and said like spins overrated or something. Yeah, spin. Oh, it's Augustus. It's Augie. But this is not on Subliminal, so I don't know what it is. Augie did. I called it Remoteless PD. Thanks for all your help the other day with the Aesop's deck. I played your version and I actually felt good piloting it. I think you're talking about Jeff, right? Apparently, both Koga and Augustus developed Spinless PD independently. I don't know about this, like, Spin is a crutch thing. Spin's really good. Spin is just really good. Do you need it? It's a hard thing to test around, right? Because, like, it's the sort of thing where the matchup where spin saves you, you lose those. Maybe it's remoteless. I don't know. Yo, did anyone play this? Has anyone heard of this? Tiny Gloomhaven? Gloomhaven cute small box? I picked it up on Friday, and I've been playing it. I've played a whole campaign on Saturday morning, a bit of Friday night a bit. It's really cute. It's really cool. I'm like very, very surprised with it. This is $20. It's a 20. It's full. It's like full of Gloomhaven. It's based off of Gloomholden, which is like that hold it all in your hand uh, thing. It's mini Gloomhaven. Yeah. So it plays slightly different. Like the rules are slightly different. Thanks, you too. Uh, we have Sure Gamble Hermes. That's part of the hand I like. Twinning girl that we can't really afford. Window... Not great. Unity. I think we can mulligan this probably. Corporate Hospitality can replace spin, but it does not shuffle. Corporate Hospitality cannot replace spin. I'm in the middle of Jaws of Lion and really enjoying it. How's it compare? Um, Jaws of Lion is way better for someone's first Gloomhaven. This is a better Gloomhaven for someone who wants like a Gloomhaven puzzle box. Because it's not so much a campaign with like story choices. It's just a bunch of like scenarios where you only have... Okay, I'll explain it in a second when after we mulligan. I'm going to mulligan this, I think. Buttons and bugs, yeah. Shrink rate technology. That box is like, yeah, it's one to hundred. It's actually to scale, which is really funny. So what was the box? So it's Gloomhaven Buttons and Bugs. And it's uh, Nikki Valens worked with the person who put together this like Gloom holding thing, which was meant to be an 18 card way of playing Gloomhaven. All of the scenarios happen on the back of cards. It's very simple. There's dice rolling and then you look at a chart. There's leveling up. But the biggest thing is that your hand is only four cards. And after you play a card, it goes back into your hand on the flipped side, which is a B side. After you play the B side, then it goes to your discard pile. And then you can rest just the, the way you think you do in normal Gloomhaven. And so it's more of a puzzle game where like it's more about setting up like you only have as much. I think the most you can have is seven turns, which is a bit less, but the it's a single tile. There's not like maps reopening doors and stuff. It's much, I think in some ways more difficult. I know is balanced to be more difficult. It's pretty good. Any prediction what the next tangent game is? <laughs> I think we can face check this. Uh, PD remote server. If it's a tranquility, that's not very good for us. But at least if they res, we're happy with it. Yeah, it's interesting. It's like not giving everyone what they want from Gloomhaven because it is a bit more of a puzzle game. Uh, but I, I like it a fair bit. Oh, wow. I think we got away with that. That play is really bad to miss Bones. I respect it, though. That means he has a seamless in hand. I don't want to run HQ anymore. Look okay, at that once I finished John Lion. Yeah, John Lion is like, I mean, really only a bit more money. Maybe twice the price of it, but I was just so impressed for like $20 Canadian what you got in this box. How many players does it support? Only solo. Only solo, and each scenario takes about 20 minutes. So it's like very much a get a cup of coffee, sit down, play a scenario. 
Um, which I'm really into like small solo things that I can enjoy. I'm just going to run this. So now this could be a drafter. I don't think we need to uh, inside job this. We're just going to run it. I think this is more like to be a tranquility or something. Sounds great. Yeah, it's like surprisingly cool. The quality of the cards isn't fantastic. Uh, the, the health dials I'm not using. Um, I just use die of different colors because I have a bunch of dice around. Uh, so like it's just for what it costs. It's kind of ridiculous. Just bring that little box to work and play during lunch. Exactly. Yeah. And it doesn't take up a lot of space. Like I can play it on my computer desk where I would not be able to play Gloomhaven. Are there legacy elements? It's totally resettable. No legacy elements. When you upgrade, you can choose what items you get. And so like there's also there's like seven of the base classes or six from Gloomhaven and each of them have one unique scenario only they can play. What's going on here? We want a diversion really bad. So there is a fair bit of like replayability to it. Uh, as in like I beat it with the one class I'm playing with another class. Uh, but it's not like you sticker cards. Like it's much more scaled down, obviously. Spin Doctor, yeah. The best bit of Gloomhaven by far is the core card mechanics, just weighed down by everything else. Yeah, this one has fundamentally different mechanics because the A and B sides of cards is kind of a cool puzzle. It also uses elements differently where like you can use elements on cards in hand and that puzzle is actually kind of satisfying too. I'm not the biggest Gloomhaven nerd. Like I've never played a whole Gloomhaven campaign. All right, if we run HQ, if it's a drafter, um, a Rashida gets back on the table. I think we do have a reason to threaten ice. Let's draw for a bravado. Okay, we might be able to get away with doing nothing. I think doing nothing suits me. If the bids contrast, he stands in your path. <laughs> if the bids coincide, he stands to the side. Colin, you tried so hard. And I still don't understand it. I think it's just me, maybe. I don't want to install daily cash credit credit. Should we face check? Maybe we should. We should just keep his money down. He hasn't played a, a hedge fund yet. The bids contrast. He stands. MIC. Okay, that's fine. Uh, there goes our turn. But that means with the MIC, like, do we ever play the wake? I don't know if we play the wake. I think we'd rather have a twinning into an MIC. Take it mathematically, then you want a low chance of him failing. I just still don't know what's a failure. Like, if they can only access him, I think I'm happy with that. The bids differ, the agenda simmers. Okay, three credits, two things in remote server. So I'm assuming it's a mana garm into like a Malapur. On three, they can res here a gatekeeper, a drafter, an ablative, which would be a pretty bad res. So I'm going to run it. We definitely need to get our economy or card draw up because we want a Hermes by now. Colin's got it. I think Colin has it. It's just like, it's asking for a lot. It's a mana garm. I think our two clicks are fine here because we can install daily cast. The third Rashida. No, second Rashida. All right. We're not getting enough card draw. Do you want a low chance of them letting you through? Yeah. To protect your other cards. Tron's on one credit. And we have a saucy dice. So no matter what, if he res on the remote server, unless he overinstalls, it's a five credit swing for us. Like, that's what saucy does. Uh, we should probably run archives, but we don't need to. Let's just find a, a good way to make money while running. That ain't it. Oh, this is ugly. Like, what do you do with this hand? I think we do we window HQ for single? I don't think we do unless we have an E shutdown in hand, but that's only one of in the deck. But like window opportunity into the MIC with the Saucy is this is a two credit. So it costs us two. And then we gain three, six, eight. I don't want to install a crew here. Going down to one credit, it's not good. We don't even need this yet, right? We're assuming the only barriers that he's gonna res is Braun. He's not even gonna res them. I think he did drop his agendas in the bin. So if anything, we can like run our guys and just put a boomerang on there. Like, I don't like it. We might be better running Spin Doctor here. If he doesn't shuffle the Spin Doctor, we could consider like Saucy HQ with a window. But I I don't think we want to do that. I don't like this play. But this is sometimes the hard part with like these situational cards. Yeah, boomerang HQ to bluff diversion is the best we have. Okay. So I think we want to run their remote server. If something gets res here, we're okay with it. It's not. So this is going to be a, a, a tranquility, which we can't afford to trash. Unfortunately, we probably do actually. I think we can afford to click for three credits here. Like him not having money is way more impactful than us not having money because this hand actually does stuff on low money. His doesn't. Oh, corporate hospitality put the trank back is okay, but he's going to discard some cards here. Yeah, we just don't have the card draw. And mind you, this deck has less card draw than most other criminal decks, right? Like it doesn't run bio bands. It's on, I think, it's, actually maybe it's not. It's on three classic, three of trades. 
you developed an echo. Let's draw once. That's what we want. So I think we take a turn off, install the class act. We still could run server one. Criminal card draw, I know. So we could run server one, see what happens. Tehran might res a brand in our MIC. If it's an MIC, we lose our whole turn. But I think that's okay with us because this has to be a Rashida for that to be good res. So place six X neutral card draw. Oh, okay, you got that one. That's bad. Like, I don't know how to play this. Are we playing bad? Are we too aggressive? Like, maybe we shouldn't trash that one until we had missed bones. We probably shouldn't have. But now Tehran's back in the game suddenly. But like this hand, we have to figure out how to get value from this. We have two diversion and 30, so we have a, we're going to see two cards if we draw. Definitely defensive upgrade. We've seen Mana Garm. What was pulled back with the uh, Hospitality? Rashida. Okay, so there's a Rashida in their mode server on top of a Mana Garm, I think. Yeah, maybe we shouldn't have been aggressive. Maybe we should just set up. But like, the only way we can make forward momentum with this is to like window opportunity HQ. We can run the remote server, actually. That's probably fine. We can install the saucy here. Yeah, let's try and be a bit aggressive. We'll put the saucy here. And then we'll just run this. Hopefully it's something fine for us. Vovo? Uh oh. Hagen. Oh no, our beautiful bird. <laughs> maybe not aggressive enough. Feels like maybe you could have run the HQ line trash things from hand with extra credits. We didn't really have extra credits, right? Like we have to get through the MIC, which cost us a run unless we do a last click. So we lost the inside bird. So we still had a good economic swing there. So Rashida will put him back into the game. We could simul chip for a bird back. Uh, the problem is like running to the Hagen's okay. Different dashes. <laughs> Different dashes, size or the run, matches, mingles, if you chat. I don't understand. Different dashes? That's pretty cool. So now we can inside job server one to deal with the Rashida. Uh, we're pretty sure that can't be rezzed. The other option is we can, we probably actually do window of opportunity for simul chip. That we get the double hog and res. Oh, that's sick. Dashes your chance on the rocks. Okay, so the other option here is like we can win of opportunity, install the simul chip, use the simul chip to install in the saucy. The Hagen will probably be re -rezzed. If Toron doesn't re the Hagen, I think that's the... Oh no, but Toron can re the Hagen because of Vovo. Oh, Vovo. Oh no. Yeah, I forgot about Vovo because Hagen's four, but with Vovo it's only two. So that's not very good. So maybe we window HQ here. He probably has an agenda in hand. The problem is we've also got low to fire this turn, so I don't think we have a huge incentive to push it. Uh, we might be able to just cycle class acts and click for credits. Okay, the dupe is what we want. Paladin's pretty good. We don't need two earth rides. Okay, we might be able to come back. It's so much money, we ball. I don't think it's that much money. It's actually a lot of money. You know, you're, you're, you're right. Same equals steel. <laughs> Everyone's trying so hard. <laughs> Maybe it was correct. I think we're still going to get that play in the near future. Steamless? Oh, shit. It's not Rashida. Not the Luminal. Oh, at least he's on one credit. So now Rashida goes in there. Corporate Hospitality goes back. Can't play it, mind you. Corporate Hospitality costs like four, right? Yeah. So that's probably the Rashida into Corporate Hospitality last click. Back up on six. It seemed okay. Add a card in Archives. All right. Well, we can definitely diversion as a start. If he's on one credit, then we can window opportunity this remote server. The problem is we missed our simul chip window. We probably should have simul chip last turn uh, while there was something that was trashed. Yeah. I missed drug dealer. That was a good card. It was a fun card. It's fun funny that it's like the text on Hoshiko, mostly. So we probably need to run the server. This is an expensive diversion. We do want the money. We're pretty sure that's a Rashida though. The bids are the same. We check what it says. The bids are the same. We read it again. 
<laughs> Router is dirty. We'll check to see if JNet's still live. <laughs> hey, by the way, good game, Lucy. It's odd because stream is holding fine. Yeah, I don't know what it is. That's really funny. Okay, so we can window of opportunity the remote server. We can install a boomerang with it. Uh, that drops us down to six cards. That's probably fine. That's so funny. <laughs> Dungeon is over. Uh, yeah, I think we do that. It gets us a lot of money because there's no res this turn. I think that has to be the play. So this costs. So we'll run server one. We'll put the boomerang on HQ again. Derez this, gain three credits. Okay. So actually, there's a chance we should have boomerang this because if it's a gatekeeper or a drafter, it fires last click. Um, I think we're hoping it's not. It seems like this is a six credit card. I don't think you can res it. It's a spin doctor. Okay, Rashid is in hand. Very good. Hate to bring it to Arkham again, but you think just buying the course on expansion to expansion after you play them is solid enough? Or do you kind of need more sets to actually build fun decks? Uh, actually, if you're buying like the new remade thing, you can buy the core set, which gives you a full play set, and then you can just do expansion by expansion. I don't think you need a like that's how we played it when it came out. We just did it in order. If you don't do it in order, it's no different. I think actually it's better to not buy everything at once because then you end up playing with more of the card pool. I think I'm going to deal with this. We don't really have money in our hand, but the saucy means we get another five credits here. Just look at my ISP servers. There's a known issue in your area. We hope to fix it by 16th of April. Okay. I think he has to re the Hagen. If he doesn't, though, our money's ruined. We really wanted to miss Bones. Thank you. Yeah, of course. We did expansion by expansion in order. It was super fun. Yeah, you can do it in order if you want. Um, I think there's some value to that. So you can play the game like other people did. Didn't res. Love it. Love it. So funny. Didn't res. Uh, so financially, we're not playing this Earthrise for a while. We need a diversion to get out of this hole or a Bravado. Bravado on the remote server would be good. The Arkham card pool is too big. To oh, forgot. Tron loves YDL. That's why Tron is playing like three copies of um, Corporate Hospitality because Corporate Hospitality YDL is really quite good. Draw for diversion. I think we just like install Paladin, lick our wounds, click for three credits. Everyone's going to remember Dieter wrote <laughs> memorization, not me, <laughs> not me. Oh, I really don't like what's happening here. I think we're playing this either too aggro or we're not going for the earlier like simul chip res lines. Run R&D? No, going for a single here is not worth it. We need to set up. Like we're not going to lock R&D for a single. We need to like get a diversion. We need to get financially back in the game. We need to threaten this remote server, which is not going to happen. Oh, that's like the best draw possible here. Unfortunately, it's our whole damn turn. And you can crack MIC, so we can't do it on click three uh, because the subroutine fires. So if that's the case, I think we just do draw Mystic credit. Meanwhile, me running RD every turn, it's naked. Yeah, you don't want to do that. Like, that's what cards like Dirty Laundry are better. Admittedly, we're going to lose in a turn here, but we're not at the point that we should transition to single accesses. Card and archives HQ. Oh, they have one of those. Yeah, we're in a bad spot. Is it possible that we we're supposed to poke for reses without installing saucy and save it for whoop combos? I think so, Jai. And I think that's what we're learning for the deck. It's like with saucy's people aren't re-resing. Um, so I'd argue that that's not good for us. And with YDL back, it's gonna be hard to pressure, but I think we need this just to get back in the game. If we install twinning first, oh, we should have installed twinning last turn. If we install twinning first, we can't. We can install twinning first because we get onto one credit, three clicks, and then the boomerang MIC, he can trade it and we don't get the diversion off. That's pretty bad. Luckily, we have inside job whoop simul chip. So like we can contest the server relatively well uh, as much as like defensive upgrades. So I think we just have to open with this and say like, whatever, sorry. Hermes, yeah, we're way too late on Hermes. I don't think we're playing this well. I said everyone every game ever. Cool, Temple MIC. Uh oh. Did you fire MIC? Oh, yeah, they fired the click, not the trash. Okay. Yeah, he went for that. I thought he he trashed this. He didn't. Okay, so we have a click left here. Now, the game is all about Iqua, so running R&D last click is not great. On five credits, he could maybe push in a remote server, but it's hard. Uh, We're not on three diversions, but it, it's tricky to play around. We could go HQ, not for a single. Mind you, MIC is just really good on HQ. We need an E shutdown. Um, We need a Hermes. Why no twinning? Uh, because then if we run a third click, he can trash the MIC to deny the diversion of funds. And then we lose our whole turn. 
Yeah, if we install 20, we don't have enough clicks. Aging haiku. Oh, drop. Yeah, that's fine. Win the side game trash. Lose a side game agenda. Think, does match mean win? Dad, I need to write that down on the back, Adrian. And then I get in trouble for marked cards, obviously. Okay, so this is the winning agenda, right? The idea is that he has a seamless in hand and he is just going to jam in their most over on top of Managar, maybe Anoetic, but I'm assuming it's a Mavirus. So the question is, what do we do to deal with that? We could draw, get Hermes. Thinking. So we have a chance of finding Hermes running R&D. This looks at three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine points. So that means there's nine points and 18 cards on R&D and an HQ. That's not too bad here. However, drawing Sing 2, installing that, installing 20, and then running R&D means that we can't steal the Ikoa, which means that functionally there's only, uh, well, three less points. So there's only six points in the game to interact with. That's not great. Now we know this is a Hagen. I think actually there's a chance that this is a Vovo. So if that's a Vovo, the Hagen gets res. We need to break the Hagen. And this I do think is a six strength ice. Now, if we inside job, it forces the Hagen res, which is somewhere around four credits. If we inside job, we can also trade the simul chip to trash the saucy. They don't res onto this one when we have priority. Yeah, I think we just inside job it. It costs us one credit. If it's anoetic, how many times can we run it? That's a problem. Uh, we'll go server one. Adrian Alter, but with just a text different bidding because the text is only Adrian. That's all I need. Just make it simple for me. If two draws to find Hermes, we can whoop install it on R&D run. Oh, yeah, it's true. It doesn't have to have ice on it. That's cool. Yeah, that could matter. That's still a very narrow line. I think this is better. Because with eight credits, there's not that much he can do here. And we have simul chip to saucy this ice. Because if it's a brawn, we'll get through it. Because he has to res both of it. And we can still whoop back if this doesn't work out. No further action. Okay. So thinking. So we have priority here. So he has to res this one, which means that we're going to unless he just uses anoetic here. This is where it's really tricky, right? Okay, so say say that this is an anoetic managarm. So he reses for two credits. We spend five, I guess. And then we have to run back. He hasn't rezzed any ice. That's the problem is if we run back, he just reses the Hagen. If he reses the Hagen and that, he goes down to six. Uh, he has to spend six credits resing Hagen and Anoetic and Managarm. So that's actually all his money. So I think that's the case. He probably doesn't res this. Yeah, there's no reason he would res this because it's inside job. So why we don't have to sign much over. Yeah, Anoetic and the Managarm. Okay, so hey, System Gateway's still around, huh? So now, if we spend two clicks here, we cannot win. Because this is an Ikoa. That's what he's threatening. An Ikoa, which costs a click and two credits. Yeah. So we have to pay five here. I think we're cooked. I think it actually makes sense to end the run. Because I just don't think there's a world in which we can run this back. Because, like, say click two, math. <laughs> so say click two, we run it back, right? We spend five or down on three, run it back. R&D is known? No, is it? Why would it be known? No, we've never run R&D. We don't know R&D. I don't think he knows R&D. Draw for Hermes? Yeah, draw for Hermes is probably the better line here. Because we just need to do the math here. We know this is a hog and we think this costs six. Can we at least try? No, we can't try. So, okay, check this out. If we pay five, we get on to three. Then we have to run back. He pays two cards from hand and two credits. So he's down to four. Then we run it back. He can res the Hagen. Say he doesn't res the Hagen. We go into here. We spend two clicks on Managarm. We can't steal the Anoetic, or the, the Ikua. So there's no way that we can contest Anoetic Managarm Ikua. If this was not an Ikua, yeah, maybe. But the fact that we need to click in two credits here means that we just cannot fundamentally fire Managarm twice. And we're going to have to find fire Managarm twice. So we just end the run here. So now our best case is draw Hermes. That ain't it. Okay, we can draw once more for Hermes and still whoop it. Otherwise, if we boomerang this, like he reses the Hagen. If you boomerang this, we have pay five. No, yeah, we're cooked. So we draw for Hermes. No, no dice. So we have to hope that this is a 4-2. We could bravado it. It gives us the most money.
It might make more sense to put down Earthrace Hotel, but no, this game's probably over here. We'll just draw it. Yeah, we're just too slow. We're just too slow. We just kind of mismanaged. I think we we trashed things a bit too much before we set up. Uh, but no. Good game. Woof. Yeah. Super advance advance. Good game. Anything in HQ? I couldn't. I couldn't find my Hermes. Yeah, so if we paid two, two credits there, there's no way we get in here. We just can't contest it with this being the Ikoa. So paying there doesn't make sense. The best we could do is try and win off centrals. It actually might have been better after the first draw not to go for the Hermes, but try and win on two axes. But the thing is with Ikoa, you can't run last click to win the game. So you had two in HQ, so even harder, both stealable. Yeah, nice. Yeah, if there's two two-pointers in HQ, like we still don't win. Like it's really hard to be behind on game point when they present game point in the remote server because if you don't steal the Ikoa, you can't win. Yeah, yeah. For, well, hey, kind of for both of us. <laughs> as much as the 4-2 was on the table. I think the biggest issue here is we didn't read into what Tron's hand was. Like, Tron put a 4-2 on the table, which, like, that is strange. So we probably should have played around more that Tron had a messed up hand, which meant before he fixed it with Spin Doctor, the sort of lines that we were uh, considering with this window of opportunity that's been in our hands since turn one, we probably should have window opportunity run HQ. I think that's on us. Pre-installing the saucies is probably the biggest tempo loss, oddly enough. Yeah, I also think pre-installing the saucies or something to learn there. But I think we forgot how weird the opening was. That we didn't know if Tron was trying to do something flashy or whether his hand was just that messed up. That we probably could have considered going for single in HQ. That was a hot single. Like, I could feel your deck falling apart in the second half, but I think had you been able to keep your money up, would have been a hard time. Yeah, 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 for sure. Oh, okay. So his hand wasn't that bad. He was just trying to make a play. Neat. I was really scared of the matchup, so he tried to make a play, yeah. With two missed bones, it's like, I don't know how, I think a lot of times we'll check the table and go sideways. Like, maybe we do hedge fund miss bones, check, check. I don't know. I don't think it's exactly the matchup that you, you probably do want miss bones, though. You're assuming luminal in every PD deck, or not luminal, um, tranquility. We spent eight credits on tranquility. That's probably a bit too much. Good game. This has not been going our well. Going our way. I think Tron's typing. One diamond to another one. Let's try. I think the Rubicon version that I built, like, it's not going to be as good. I figured the two points wasn't a huge loss, and getting the seven crits off of off of would it let me really plays in the early game. Oh yeah. But you have to let centrals open for a turn. So it's hard to see. I would get either the Rashida or the agenda. Yeah, we tried for both. Yeah, what do you do there? Like, you can't fire Rashida into the 4 2, so you have to either leave the Rashida. Say, like, both are left on the table for some reason. So you score the off off. Maybe then was HQ iced on turn one? It might be. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for the game, eh? What's left in our deck? Hermes, career fairs, E shutdown. E shutdown would have been really good. I don't think we had a big way to punish the MIC coming down. Uh, but at the end of the day, like, this is so funny. This is, like, quintessentially the, the explanation about, like, why I just... <laughs> it's like, are you worried about Ah's Terrace Crew? Just, like, play Managar Manoetic. Which maybe to some extent, like, I do think there's a lot of reasons to play two pinhole threading. I think we would have appreciated in this matchup. But two pinhole threading in a world of Holloman, I think, makes sense. It's hard for slots. That's the thing about the HQ Wu runs. It feels more like an economy play with a bonus axis than an axis with a bonus econ. You would have been on 10 credits if they res that turn instead of ending on 4. Yeah, no, I think, Kato, I undervaluate how much economy you get from that play. And, like, we had this simul chip just, like, die on the vine. We had this window opportunity die on the vine, right? Like, it allowed us to pressure server 1 on the last game, but, like, by the time they set up two defensive upgrades, like, we're cooked. So I think we might need to go a bit more proactive with the window. This is, like, where it's going to take a bit of learning to get down because it's, like, a very different style of, of play. Uh, to understand, like, how do you sit back and how to pressure. Which I appreciate it. Like, I appreciate a lot that we feel lost. Hey, Fix B. Oh, is it on pair? That's the Taya. Nice. I tried the Saki Whoop combat as Steve and made 20 credits off two Saucy's on a logjam. Disgusting. At that point, why are they resing it? Thanks, you too. All right, opening hand against Atea. We have Wake. 
We have Gamble. We have two Breakers we can't really afford in Asasi. I think we're going to mulligan this. You notice in none of the matches so far have we installed and I don't think we've ever used Breakers. That's kind of on us. Like maybe that is on us, but like we're not breaking a Hoggin early with Kurapir. We're not breaking a early um, MIC with Unity. Like, this is where like I like Amakua a fair bit. Is that like getting Amakua and then just pressuring feels a bit better? Because even if you whiff, it pushes you forward. I don't know. It's hard. Uh, this hand is arguably much worse. I tried the Sassy with Quanbox. Ignore the fact that said logjam went to 11 strength on the D-Reses. <laughs> Alright, you want to die to um to uh Sice and Tom in turn one? Like, I think on this hand you just do class that click for three credits. Like, I don't think we have to do anything. Getting our two credits is not that that important. Okay, we've missed bones. That's pretty important for Atea sometimes. We have an Saucy. We don't have Saucy tech. Like, we have no D res synergy. So I think probably next turn. We like Miss Bones sweep the table a bit, credit daily cast, depending what they do. Manji Utea wants to get that double install, but we'll see if it starts here. Yeah, we'll get an ice in front of one of those. Oh, okay. Arches are early economy is really rough. Like no dirty laundry. Like these things that like stabilize you so you can push into. Like installing the Miss Bones is really difficult when we go down to two credits. Now, what's server two here? It's like most likely to be either like a Mavirus or a Lacosta. We can't afford to trash here. Just joined in Jaina game. Opponent's 94 cards. P. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm going to walk away from most of those. What do we do here? Like, I genuinely don't know what to do with this hand. We probably want to check server two. If it's a Rashida or a Lacosta, it's 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 a thing for sure. But that's going to take two or three clicks from us. We want to get the daily cast down, but that's credit install. I think we can probably just let this go if it's a Lacosta. I'm assuming it's not a Rashida on the table. So if that's the case, we probably do daily cast brings us to one. This is where like Earthrise Hotel is obviously nice in this hand, but we can't do it. Uh, so this goes down to zero credit credit daily cast. We can't afford that. So do we need to run here? I think with the Spin Doctor, we have an incentive to run HQ. I think we're going to run HQ to get three credits. Or two credits for the res. I think the two credits here matters a lot. And we have a lot of hand size. If we lose our breakers to damage, I guess that's a problem. Yeah, I think we face check for cards. I agree, Jai. I just don't want to lose our breakers. But like, what can you do about it? Uh oh. 10 credits. Show us a big old snake. This could be bad. Uh oh. This has happened a lot today. So at least we only lose the class act. It'd be worse to lose a breaker to this. We have a simul chip, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah, okay. At least they're on zero. We gain two. What the heck? Come on. We had seven cards. Really? So what's interesting here is whenever an encounter with this ice ends, if it was rezzed, you have to like do one of them. Uh, right? Like you can't choose to trash one of your installed cards when you don't have any. So here we either have to take three net damage or we have to take two tags. Classic criminal gameplay. I, oh wait, no, it's Corp Trash is one. No, 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 it's okay. If it was res this turn, trash one installed, run a card. Can we choose that if we don't have an option? I can't pick the first one, can I? I don't think you can. Well, it's not a cost, so why not? Oh, sick. All you. If we figured it out. You're declining to do the second or third option, so the corpse first to do the first one. Yeah, because it's not a cost. If it says, like, you have to. I shouldn't have that. All right. Well, I think we now check for Rashida. Corp trashes ID. It's not installed, but yeah. It's a Rashida. Oh my god. I need both of those cards. Uh so we could probably do credit, credit, credit daily casts. Obviously, like we're tagged and we're never gonna afford to clear those tags, but I think the game's gonna slow down for fixed B. Because on zero credits, there's not much the corporation can do here. Yeah, so we're safe. Discarding one. Okay. Draw. That's good. Uh, we can contest Spin Doctor or R&D. This could be a Tattoo Bola, which I think is fine. 
This is where it's going to be. We actually might need to clear tags, which like Cloud Eater's fine. We might need to clear tags. Now the daily cast is not that interesting to trash. So it's either we run Spin Doctor or we run Archives. I think with these cards, he'll probably crack the Spin Doctor. I honestly don't want to trash it for two. We probably shouldn't contest this. We probably actually should draw another card. I don't think we getting this off the table matters that much. Uh, face down. Okay. So at least he's not filtering other agendas out of his hand. Like that's a cool thing is when he's on low credits. Keeping our daily cast. So at least it was a click for credit now. So we just need to Hermes window of opportunity that. So let's just set that up. Bravado R&D now in five can be rezzed. Do you think if we install Earthrise Hotel, he's going to trash it? Let's find out. Dies to mindscaping out of the line. <laughs> I don't think so. Hedge fund? Oh, now he might be able to. Mind you, we don't have all our breakers anymore, so we have to win kind of breakerless. Like, Tattoo Bowl is a real pain in the ass to win breakerless. Uh, hard end of the run code gates are not that common, like Thimble Rig. But like Vampir and Asa, you generally don't often break with Unity anyways, so maybe we can get kind of far. We'll see. Well, we'll see. Second Ice on HG, that's smart. I think it's correct to trash Earth Rise. I think so too. Okay. I honestly think we can clear tags now. I think this turn we do clear tags. Whooping this cloud over seems really hot. Yeah, unless he can re-res it, then it's obviously pretty bad. But yeah, whooping this cloud over into a Hermes bounce is what we want. Okay, so I'm going to clear tags. I don't think we sure gamble this turn because it'll be fine next turn. So we remove tag, remove tag. Uh, Do we contest Spin Doctor here? I think our economy is good enough that we can consider doing it. I just don't want, I want him to flood up a bit. That's yeah, fine. It'll install Mystic. So a Hansa, excuse me, or a hedge fund will get him back. You can start working on Charlotte. With inside job boomerangs would be a bit tricky. I do like the Crim now has both Doof and Whoop. Doof Whoop. Doof Whoop is strong. If he has two upgrades in HQ, yeah, that's going to be a problem for you. Good luck. All right, so things we can't deal with. Boto, that's all his money. This is an NGO front. I don't think it's an agenda. That doesn't mean we won't check it, though. The problem is if we boomerang it, though, he might not res. So do we need to, like, greed Carmen? Do we, can we pay three for Carmen? Because running archives is a click for two credits. So we can run archives. Imagine this isn't an NGO front. It has to be an NGO front. It would be such a good play if it isn't an NGO front. The thing is, like, he is clearly re resing some big ice. So I'm assuming there's a Nazis in there too. I think if he pays eight credits for a Nazi, we're not too upset about it. Could be Charlotte. You generally don't double event Charlotte, but it could be Charlotte. I'd be less happy with Charlotte because you still have to run Charlotte. Um, I think we need to get our Carmen on the table before we lose it. Mind you, Cloud Eater being six strength is really good into Carmen. It increases the cost to break by two versus um, the other one, uh, Nancy. Uh, I think we can just sure gamble here and then just hold. Oh, we have a click left. Well, winner. Credit. Should have playing that turn counting to force hard on not to double ice and naked advance ngo i don't think it matters there's not much we can do about the ngo we got played so hard yeah now you're right respect i gotta respect your opponents a bit more damn that was so easy we could have inside job that sure <laughs> oh man brutal all right so we have paladin i don't think we have much to do here i don't think we want to go for singles uh we still have twinnings to come up like i think we just do nothing like this is the playing the opposite of the other and i think the ice might be a bit unwieldy that this is okay not having your career appear is going to be hard into the matchup but um yeah maybe this deck is not the deck for me i don't know and this is where it's going to be two problems in the same turn. This looks fine. It looks fine. I just don't feel like I'm doing anything. Okay, there has to be an NGO front, right? Okay, two inside jobs. So that's free. 
I think we'd rather bravado because I think the face check on the ice is not that bad. And I want the two credits. You just draw chip saucy for the breakers. Yeah, but it's only break her, right? Like we just can't get our unity down. This one we don't have to run. Let's build Daybreaker, an Andre flavored Lois. What do you mean by that? Yeah, no res, so we'll get another credit here. It's NGO front, so that's fine. We don't get Lois, but we get an extra credit. Um, Three cards on HQ. The problem is like Cloud Eater. It's on 18 credits. So it's going to be hard to do the cool stuff we want to do. Uh, Waking Plant doesn't make that much sense, so we can discard it. It's hard behind a Cloud Eater. He can now re-res the Cloud Eater, so window of opportunity on the Cloud Eater is going to be a bit tricky. That being said, we break it for like seven. It's okay. Our money's okay. Uh, Paladin. I honestly don't know if we do much here. I think we just click three. Like, I'm struggling to deal with these hands of situational cards. We could definitely use a pinhole. It's only a one in 25. And we're just not drawing as good as, obviously, with our class act, but whatever. I wonder what it's going to take for him to feel comfortable in the remote server. Apparently, uh, that click. Because, <laughs> like, two ice is kind of doable. Boarding control is a bit tricky. I feel like establishing twinning is very good for this deck. Having a fork with whoop seems important in mid to late game. Yes. Uh, Earthrise. Career fair, Earthrise. That's our next turn play. So how expensive can we make things? P is code replicator. Um, let's inside jobs to server four. That forces two reses. Then we can boomerang come back. I think you're perfectly fine with playing Woop or Tuna T once you have a Saucy on it. Then you ESD it after. I don't know what half of that means, but there's only one E shut down in the whole deck. It's this one, right? The thing is, like, now opening HQ is interesting because, like, we could inside job HQ. You probably do res the outermost, so we could E shut down the Cloud Eater. That's still hard. Shutting down the Snake is not fantastic. Obviously, if Fix reses it again, we have to deal with it again. Like, eventually it's going to happen. I think we just inside job this and see what happens. So now two ice has to be res. With 16 credits, that might be a tall order. Oh, um, Anansi we get we eat in the face, but we can always just... Oh, we can't Carmen it. Yeah, Anansi is a problem. Uh, It's fine. It's not real. Yeah, yeah, do that. Even just like a thimble rig is kind of messed up. Like we can't deal with a thimble rig with this ice suite. So now he's doing math. And this is where like it gets hard to play around windows. The whoop. But it's very important to know with the inside job, it's not optional. So a Nancy does hit you. That's going to be half of his money. And it's still a 10 credit swing. As much as three damage with this hand, it's like whatever. I don't even know what this could be that we care about. All right. It's good to get that down. I don't know if we trash an Earthrise Hotel. I don't think we do. We always career fear this down. That seems a bit silly. Whoop Boomerang could be a real play here. I just don't think we need a Whoop. Whoop Boomerang HQ could be a play. Right? Like, we Whoop Boomerang this is, like, an option. We Boomerang that that we get in. Like, this might just be a Tattoo Bola. I think the Axis is actually relatively good, considering uh, we've seen no agendas. So I think whoop boomerang here is fine. And then we can e-shot down this. I think that actually does do like enough disruption. I like that a fair bit. It lets us play with our hand, which is good. He re reses the snake. What do we do? Take two tags? I think so. Oh shit. We res a tributary. That's on us. If you e-shot down the snake after he re reses, that's great too. Yeah. Do we break this? I think we do. Atea hasn't fired so far. What is the deck missing that you want to season up with? Um, I don't know. Card draw? Like, it just has a lot of situational cards that I'm struggling to be aggressive on. So now if he reses this, it's pretty bad. The tributary is res now. I mean, caps lock. 
<laughs> so if you want to res it, it does its thing, like when we pass it. We also have to break it, right? Like it costs us something. Uh, he probably isn't incentivized to res it here because I think it's uh, financially disastrous. And then we shut it down. The best case scenario is he reses it. Like, I, I don't actually think this comes out as a good run. Because like, I don't think this is a good run. Unless he reses it here. If he reses it here, it's okay. Because E shutting that down is like still a tricky thing to face check into. No further. Okay. At least if we steal an agenda here, it'd be sick. Yeah, there you go. Oh, come on. I think he might be under prioritized lowest value. Um, the matches we played against, it's not been great. A teeny. Okay. Okay, thinking. So this, we have shut down here. The problem is like Tron, we haven't had a lot of reasons to run, which is like why the low stack I built, which I don't think is better than this, is like running Amaku and Penny Shaver, right? Like we want to run as much as possible. Do you sleep the snake or the ants? I don't think the ants does anything. The snake is annoying. Uh, maybe. But like, we don't have a decoder anymore. Like, tributary is just going to fire. The other option is to genuine is to shut down the trib. I don't think we have a decoder. Without a decoder bot, it's like, if we shut down the trib, we're just not running HQ anymore. That actually might be right. I think the trib is going to have a bigger impact on the game besides the Cloud Eater, which he can re res. I think shutting down the trib might be correct. We've already ran or resed, so I don't think we would do much. We have a whoop. I think we shut down the trib. I think it's just without a decoder, it's way more difficult. Hey, greetings from Germany, Dorf. Please keep up the great videos, but I keep stealing Decade as my buddy and I have started Neverrun again for a long time. It's so much fun. Yo, welcome back after a long break. Glad you've been enjoying them. We haven't been putting up that many videos as of late, mostly streaming. Glad to hear you've been liking the content, though. I've been, like, kind of struggling to do anything that, like, works well in this meta. Uh, I don't know. I've been a bit down. We've been just getting bodied uh, week after week. Adrian, okay. Or, like, I'm just not prepared for this board state. I feel like I'm constantly playing from behind. That's not what we wanted. So how do we deal with this? We have two Hermes and 21 cards. Without any sort of click compression, like this can't be a 4-2 or a 3-5. So I think our better line is probably no cards in HQ is like maybe lock the top of R&D. This could be an Atini or Vampiranasa. That's not great. Uh, the only thing we can break is Decoder. Find a Hermes? Yeah, find a Hermes is like 100% the right thing to do here. So I think we just like do nothing. I think we just install career fair, class act daily cast and just hold. Do we need daily cast or do we need a card draw? Uh, I don't want a card draw because it messes with the class act filtering. Well, we would get the filtering now, right? Yeah, we'd get the filtering now. So why not? Oh, because we drew an earth rise. So we're not going to get it no matter what. That's fine then. Where's the Hermes at? You have chips for your breakers, not all is lost. We have one chip. And as much as we haven't found a Sazi yet, we can get the Kurup here, which is going to be more important. Okay. Have you considered drawing better? I've been thinking about it. Instead of the buy some expansions, I'm only in Mumbet. Oh, those are hard to find, Tron. Or sorry, not Tron, Torf. Excuse me, Torf. Um, mind you, you can proxy, but a lot of finding those things is really difficult. Earthrise, let's find a Hermes. I'm good. Uh, mutual Fable War is not the draw there. We actually have no more breakers in the deck. Oh, this is so bad. This is so bad. What are we doing? It's going to pop up once we draw Dame Sassy. Or like a Hermes. So we probably need a Mystic. So Diversions is not very good. Let's cons thinking through our lines. So Adrian is a pain. We have a pinhole. We can start by pinholing archives that uses Mystic. That's okay. And then we'd have to just like genuinely run this. On 12 credits, the Atini is just going to fire. We're at threat three, so it does three net damage. I genuinely don't care. Uh, we also can inside job this. So I think we do pinhole, install. Well, we install twinning first, then we pinhole, then we inside job, right? A partner would kill me if I bought 300 years with the Neverner cards. Yeah, yeah. That's a lot of money. Do you happen to have bought your collection from someone else recently? I sold mine was up to Flashpoint. Chas, how's it going? All right, I'm just going to send it. I think border control. Install 20 then pinhole. Yeah, for sure. This is just going to force some reses. I don't think it's particularly stunning. So this will charge the twinning. All 
Okay, so I assume we do window boomerang. The question is like, what's intelligently boomerang? Or do we do inside job? Because we can't be a sing single tattoo bolo. That's a problem. I don't know what Adrian says. So if we do boomerang window, like someone chip is not very good because we'd have to trash your Carmen. And I think we don't want to do that. Put the chip down. The chip doesn't do anything. Like we're not going to throw out our Carmen, right? We have to wait for your saucy. Oh, but put the chip down to lose it to damage. That actually does matter. Yeah, I think we do simul chip and we just inside job this remote server. Uh, yeah, why not? This might force two ice roses. This is bad into, um, into border control. We haven't seen a lot of influence, uh, but I just think a single tattoo bullet is going to be a problem. I don't mind hitting the teeny. This is my problem with like, Right, like I, I'll take the teeny for three damage. I don't care. We stopped playing 2016 and now starting again. Oh, this has been a minute, huh? It'd be a funny coincidence seeing the person in there. So we're going to get one res probably. That's two credits for us. That's nice. But they're going to be on game point. And I don't know if they're playing seamless or any sort of like click compression. But like a tattoo bowl is a problem. If we're like really pinched, like at least with the simul chip, we're threatening trash Carmen for our breaker. Uh, I don't think we want to do that. Child can now read. I'll teach them the rules someday. So. We'll see what the end of the run looks like here. We're not threaded up yet for Boto, because I think it's threat four. It doesn't really matter. But Fixby might struggle to make that end the run actually matter. Do we know what we get to see Neverrunner's premiere sidecar streamer again? Uh probably in a couple of weeks. He usually tries to show up for the first Thursday every um every month. Or yeah, first Thursday. Die to snare? Oh, that's the one you should have seen coming in 72 cards. It's a Vampire Nasa. Okay, sick. So here we can continue. We'll take three cards out of our hand. On five, we can break any of the sentries we care about, which would only be Karun or Saisantan. But do we want to go through three cards here? And then we still thread in Tattoo Bola. Yeah, I'm going to do it. That was meant to be a more interesting statement. Please ignore. <laughs> hey, there he is. Uh, we'll just let this fire. When we see Patrick and Sengren stream next, I don't know. It's going to be a minute. He doesn't go. Uh, we kept, I think, our worst cards. Those are our two worst cards in our hand. I'm pretty sure. Window is sick. Boomerang is sick. We're going to continue. We're just upset with the tattoo bullets. We haven't seen any yet, so it's probably going to see some amount of play. Boto, he can't res either. Oh, shit. All right, well, that's fine. I'm going to continue. It could be a second anemone. I'd be really surprised, and I don't think this is going to do damage to us. I think it might be an NGO front. Oh, wow, sick. Okay, uh, we're in game point. That's good. Time to die to Fuji. Yeah, I would be surprised, though, because I don't think you do send a message Fuji off-world. This makes more sense. Yeah, that seems big. Four credits. We have click compressed card draw. We have a 20 that's going to be on two. We finally found our Hermes. It's on four credits. Okay, so this can slip away from us. Now, we can just go R&D and see three cards. On four credits, what can you res? Worth? Yeah. <laughs> it was worth. It was definitely worth. So this is where the agenda is. So I think we're okay running server five and then running server four. We're going to draw once here, and we're going to get the Hermes down. I think we just run our D and C3. This is probably an agenda. I don't know what server five is. If we want to run server five first, I think we could. 
what hurts us on four credits? I don't think any. What like what Colgate does damage? Diviner? That's not real. There's something to be noted that if you do not actually need Carmen to get through the sentries, if we just face tank them, uh, to some extent. Spin, okay. It's good to get that out of the way before we R&D lock. That's the last spin. Now two cards in hand. There's some chance to chip to break Ebola. Yes, we might have to chip to break Ebola. The thing is like with an enemy, clearly there's some amount of damage here that matters. He's also on four credits. I think we can, it was spin doctor and NGO, sorry, NGO front and unseen. So I think we go R&D for a single here. What do we die to? It would have to be like snare. We'll see all of them. Cohort, you can draw that. Tattoo, Rashida. I think we can deal with Rashida. Atini, yeah, they're on four. If they were on six, we have to watch out because Boto is like a problem. Atini is lethal. We could always simul chip panic. We don't want to. So they have a cohort in hand. That's probably going to go in server five, which is fine. It's not a good draw for them. So that's probably the cohort. They've been bluffing pretty good though. And oh, at least that gets another ice. That's kind of cool. So I think server four is an agenda. So we know the top of the deck is Tattoo Bola. Earthrise. <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> we found our saucies. <laughs> oh, we found our saucies. Okay, we don't need two of them, do we? So we're now on game point. We probably bravado server five. If he reses that, we're okay. We know this is a tributary. So this is cool. This could be an agenda. So one of our lines is like window opportunity HQ right so if we window opportunity hq we can sassy on top of it if they res the tributary he fires the tributary that's fine so he draws a tattoo bola he can install the tattoo bola here which i don't care about that that's fine oh we can put it on r d though he'll be on three credits and we get access to one card in hq which might be an agenda i think it's likely to be an agenda so i think window opportunity hq is actually kind of fine the other option is like window opportunity server five after running it. it might be incorrect to bravado the server because it's minus one card in hand. We don't use money to break. No, but we need a mystic. If we window, we don't need to mystic. I think we run HQ here. I think the chance that there's an agenda in HQ is pretty high. I think feeling pretty safe behind the cloud eater. And if he draws R and D is unlocked. I think all of that's pretty good for us. And we don't die to, um, well, we got a snare, but. That's sick when all parts of it are free. This makes a lot of money, right? Like that's, if he doesn't de this is like an eight credit econ card. Thank you, surprise stream in the tangent. Gotta head to work. Yo, Ren, enjoy your work. Thanks for dropping in. Enjoy your uh, handblock veil, eh? So it's a trib. We're gonna let that fire. That's totally fine. He's unlocking R&D for us. So he has a tattoo bowl in hand. This is a cohort. Okay, that's a tattoo bowl. That's actually, okay, that was a problem. Cause that's the one ice we can't break. He wouldn't have done that if there's an agenda in hand, though. Actually, this might not make sense. Oh, what's server five now? Another cohort? He has to re-res this, which is pretty funny. He kind of has to, right? <laughs> if he doesn't, HQ is just a tributary. So now we get rid of the saucing, we run R&D. Okay, so we got our money's worth. So let's check server five. He's on three credits, so we're now scared of face check, and then we can see two on R&D. And he doesn't have uh, ice in hand, so the tattoo bullet is going to be annoying. This is a cohort. Oh, Lacosta. Um, I don't think we need to deal with that. As long as we don't let tributary fire in a bad time. And now we'll run R&D. The tattoo bullet will saucy the simul chip, and then we'll just play the game without a decoder, which I don't think matters. Thimble rig, mind you, is pretty good. Uh, where's the crew, Pira? It's also nice to charge it on the Tattoo Bola. Because it uh, means that we don't have to deal with Boto or Bren. They're down to one credit. C2. These are new cards because he drew. Magnet. Oh, fudge. A teeny. Oh, God. That could have been better. <laughs> that could have been so much better. When do we run Server 4? I think Server 4 might be an agenda. Unless it's the Lacosta. Oh, man. Magnet. Oh, it's a magnet. We're cooked. We're so cooked. We can't break magnet. We have no way to deal with magnet anymore. Okay, so I think we have to go see two on R&D while we can afford to. So it's a magnet in hand, a teeny on the top. 
We'll get our accesses while we can. Draw. Oh, doof is really important. Because doof means we can play around magnet. Do we have boomers left? Yes. We have one. I think we might have just bottomed it, though. Does he know that you can't beat magnet? No, I'm not sure. He might. And we're playing a published deck list, so it has one of each breakers. So if the tributary fires, the magnet comes down on R&D. That's not good. The problem is the tributary always fires. So we definitely want to play an event or install a card here. So we can consider bravadoing server five. On four credits, there's nothing that hurts us. We're not going to install a card here, so we're just going to do this. Even with infinite money, we're going to have a problem. We do need to be a bit sparing of our cards. Um, I think we shouldn't trash that. It means he can duck doof a bit. I don't think our money matters that much. Yeah. Okay. So next is a magnet to an Atini. I think our play is diversion of funds into run R&D and see three cards this turn. So we know his whole hand, right? That's Magnet Atini. Remind me to talk about Lacosta Trash after we're on zero credits. What do you mean, Oxy? Okay. So he can draw an unknown card, which means with ice in hand, he can get an agenda in server four. And if that's a Lacosta and then agenda goes in server four, we don't lose the game. But if we do, he can't res his stuff. So this is a really important turning point. Because we don't know what this ice is. But if we do fear, right? Like tributary fires, it's an eight strength cloud eater. Don't nothing to worry about. Um I think it's the best we have. It's very, very bad. So now he draws an unknown card. Okay, so one unknown in hand. The ice is probably magnet trib. Or sorry, Magnet Atini. That means Tattoo Bullet's going to become a Magnet, but I think seeing three cards on R&D here is very likely to close the game out. Okay. So now he can put something in here, which he didn't. So that means his hand is probably unknown code gate. The good news is the second trip sub is blank. No, it's not. It gives Cloud Eater 8 strength. That's definitely not blank. Unless the math doesn't line up. Oh yeah, you're right. It doesn't. It is blank because Carmen hits it for the same. Yeah, actually, that is true. It is true. We'll do the doof down to two credits. So now we can run our D and C three. The tattoo bullet would flip. There's a chance on six credits he can res this, and it'll be a code gate. It's a chance we're gonna take. We know he has ice. It costs seven. It does cost seven. Um, okay. I think this is an agenda. So this is another code gate. There's a tattoo bowl in hand and an unknown card. Let's see if this is a magnet. It's not. Okay. Wow. Three cards. Uh, we don't want that to be drawn. I was wondering where those are. That's a good draw. Like it's a bad draw. So we can let that happen. It could just be one damage, but I don't think we care if he draws that. We can't run back because it's an Atini or a Magnet, so I'm going to leave that there. Oh my god. Where are the agendas? I think there's an agenda in server 4. The problem is this is a Magnet or a Natini. And this is going to be 3, 4, 5, up to 8 damage. This is rough. Like, I don't know, just having a decoder would have been okay here, I guess. How many agendas are left? Yeah, there's definitely one in server four. So say that's a two pointer, which it looks like. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that means there's 11 points between it. There's one in HQ. Ugh. Um, what do we do? 
This is probably the magnet. If he reses it, it's a five credit swing. That's okay. It could also just be the Atini. So there's a chance that the play is like just play class act draw up. Um, if that's a Sisyphus, that's obviously obnoxious, but I don't think he scores out of Sisyphus. I think we got pretty unlucky in R&D so far. So what do we possibly do here? We use our one E shutdown. Wherever we run, we're going to have to deal with the tributary unless he doesn't move it. If he moves it or not, doesn't just click draw for boomerang. Yeah, so we can run R&D and see one card. We can also boomerang server four, but I think... Yeah, we just have to set up another dig here and hope this isn't it. Mind you, like if this scores out, we get a bounce. So I think the best thing is we just set up for another dig. Yeah. We just need to install something. I just don't want to discard cards because we need hit points. So we need to be like a bit careful. This was only to come down to play a uh, thing. So next turn, we're not guaranteed, but I think we just bottomed the card. So we're guaranteed on our next card draw to get boomerang. This is a Nisei, we have a problem. But I think it's Sisyphus sent a message off for the office. Come on, square out. Shit. That's bad. So Magnet, I think, is in hand. So now we draw, Boomerang run R&D. But if the Nisei eats the Boomerang, we're, we're cooked. We might have wanted to run that. I think we could have told him that was an agenda. Excuse me. Do we need to deal with the tributaries sooner? No. Tributary breaks R&D lock one more time. That's fine. This is a different server. So actually, yeah, it'd be wrong to run archives or HQ because then they he can put ice on R&D. So we need to make sure the tributary is here. Could get your breaker got damaged, yeah, on our first face check. On like turn two, we ran to Cloud Eater, hit Carmen and Kurapira. Sorry, Unity and and, and uh Kurapira. It was really, really bad. Declines to draw. I don't think that actually changes anything. I don't think we know the top. Do we? I think these are fresh cards. Okay. Ice on the remote server. So that we don't know what it is. We actually have to check that. Yeah, unlucky. Yeah, it was pretty unlucky. So if this is a code gate, he should res it and then just eat our boomerang. Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to draw the prompt closed while I was clicking continue. Do you mind? That's unfortunate. We knew what that card was, but like the prompt was exactly where we wanted it to be. We'll just do undo click. Huh? Draw doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, right? So we could just run back. If this is a 3-2 we lose. I assumed he can't res here. So this fires again. Now he's used Atea, so he can't... Mind you, Atea did the ice, so we know this is not an agenda. This has to be like a Rashida or something. But this can't be an agenda. Oh, no, it can be agenda. It can, it can, it can. Excuse me, it's not Asa. David, how's it going? It's this guy, what's up, friend? How you doing? It might be Monday already, huh? You been good? All right, C3. Okay, let's go. Oof. That was a lot of work. Paladin, good game. Yeah, I have no decoder. This is hard. Yeah, I totally forgot the Hermes bounce. Yeah. Vanetria cohort still don't know where the agendas are yeah yeah i i rec uh the turn before right after the before the hermes smart trash and lacosta yeah you definitely want to trash lacosta because they can set up a thing where they use their combo to put that in the remote server i played a bunch of this deck and if you don't trash lacosta they use like the tributary to install an ice there or an agenda last click and then the game is just over yeah yeah 
I think he could have slow rolled this. If he didn't score the Nisei Mark II, like if he advanced it and let it stew so that he could put the magnet back, I think the game is cooked. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, we knew what most of this was. It was a surveyor on the innermost, 14 strength. Okay. Dies to hush, but still pretty good. Uh, and that was that. Thanks for getting AE2. Woof. I don't know. Has it been the new set? What's everyone thinking? I feel like I've just been getting bodied. Like, I don't think... Maybe the problem is I'm chasing too many new cards, but either I'm playing things and, like, it's just not great, going great for me at the beginning, but can't believe R&D held. It held for a long time. Like, I think I only missed two cards through uh, Trib drawing, but I had you locked for a bit. Yeah, choose. Yeah, I still think the ceiling on this deck is a lot higher than I, I, I uh, think it is. Life is good. Still really encouraging to see people enjoying the cycle in spite of its eccentricities. <laughs> eccentricities is a good term. It's a it's a it's definitely an interesting set. Yeah, I think like that's also a problem too. Is like maybe one of the best decks you can play right now. Oh, let's play this. This is definitely not going to melt my head. Is like just good stuff Hoshiko. And I think good stuff Hoshiko for a content creator does not make, you know, great content. So like... I think the fundamentals are still really good. Like, I feel like when I play this, I feel like I'm much more in control of the game as opposed to like that criminal deck where I feel like I'm always playing a bit reactively. All right. Shout out to Seb K. Cool deck builder, great player. Mentor Grid got a lot of people to look at World Tree again, and RWR gave the archetype he created a massive shot in the arm. So, this is not a good thing to play at four o'clock on a Sunday, but uh, we're going to give it a shot. So, it's World Tree Arasana. Influence spread is different. I love playing class act as like the first thing to get down. Uh, we're spending our influence mostly on Fizerum, which makes sense. Really flexible, really cool card. In Arasana, I was a bit low on this card. Three air blades to me is a bit silly, but I think you just need some sort of cheap hardware to get out going forward to world tree it into something else. So that's pretty cool. I'm surprised that we're not on things like um, Cataloger, which kind of fits that slot. Like you can get value from Cataloger even on the turn it's world treat in or world tree outed, which is kind of sick. Uh, but we're on 3x Airblades, which I don't actually think the text on it does much into the modern meta besides against NBN. Uh, otherwise, Aesop's Pawn Shop is a singleton. We're in full cast. Nuka, only one Earthrise, or two Earthrise. I like the full three. Miss Bones, a great inclusion for the deck as well. So most of our influence is going in our Breaker Suite, Hush, and the three Fizerums. So we'll see how this holds based off of anything else. You might want to cut one Fizerum for three Flip Switch. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea too. I think Flip Switch is a better hardware that's like more flexible. The thing too with this list is like this list actually leans on Fizerum. This is why maybe I'm not the hottest, I'm not the fastest to cut Fizerum from the list. Is that if people are playing against World Tree Arasana, the best thing you can do is ice up all centrals. And if this deck ices up all centrals, you still have like things like Muse Coalescence combo and you have Muse into Fizerum, which is pretty sick. But if you get locked out, you do just get locked out. Which is why I really like the other World Tree Arasana deck to run three copies of Slap Vandal. Because as soon as turn one, right, if they iced up all centrals, you still had a way to break in and to get your World Tree money. So, again, this deck is a bit bigger than the 60 we were playing before. This is 68. I don't think it's that big of a deal. I love this deck. I'm playing a meetups with 3x Burner. Oh, Burner's cool too. Yeah, Burner's definitely really, really cool. Um, I think you can spend a lot of time tinkering with this to make it work the way that you want it to do. I think I was also on two Urban Art Vernissages, but that makes a bit more sense with, like, all the Slap Vandals. This is on all Cubans. Again, we'll see how often we need that. I guess with Fizerum Cuban, it's putting a lot on the same card, but that's nice to get down early. And then, of course, with Aesop's Pawn Shop, we just want to get cheap stuff down. Airblade should just be a one-slot hush instead of only blanking NBN Ice. A one-shot hush? Uh, yeah, it's weird. I think the current version is 73 cards. Oh, no. Um, This is definitely going to be a lot of fun to play. Uh, It's very tricky just because, like, the lines that you have to get, you have to get perfectly. And if you lose the lines, you can actually lose a lot of tempo. Single Lilypad too. Like we played influence on the console slot. I think Lilypad's fantastic. It got even better with things like Muse and Simul Chip and doing all that sort of stuff on the opponent's turn. And we're on 3DZ2 Cyberdelia. With Lilypad, you don't get as MU crunched as when you're playing Knob Curry, as much as the Ma, Ma version was pretty sick. Um, but Muse makes consistency a lot higher. Yeah, I think the math that was actually called out here that get the World Tree in your opening hand, which you don't always want, uh, you can get down like 52% of chance. Do you use for SMC to get World Tree to pay the two up front to save the MU? Uh, it depends, Spark. There are some board states in which you can use World Tree. Uh, like you can muse for World Tree instead. And then when you make a successful run, you can use this World Tree to sell the muse to get a second World Tree. I think that's convoluted nonsense, but I think it turns out to be cheaper than musing for SMC. Because if you muse for SMC, you pay a four credit premium. You are able to muse SMC World Tree into coal. What? 
oh, that's cool too, right? So you RE to play the Muse during the run. You use that Muse to produce an SMC. Then unfortunately you're paying like a lot of money because you pay a two credit premium on this, a two credit premium on this. So it's a 10 credit world tree, but then the world tree fires and then you replace the Muse with a coalescence. So it only becomes a six credit world tree. That's pretty cool. That's actually genuinely pretty cool. And coalescences are, again, so important for these sort of decks that there's a program that is tempo positive that puts you back into the game. That is so true. That being said, you have other windows too, right? And I think it's going to take me a while to wrap my head around it. Double turbine. Yeah, let's go. Is that you can also do things like you can use Muse to get on the world tree. And then you can, so you've spent eight on it. Then you use do that with Ari. Then you use world tree to sell the Muse for another world tree. And so you still end up spending a lot of money on that. I think, yeah, you're right. The coalescence line is a fair bit cheaper because you get the money back and you get set up something with pawn shop, I guess, which is going to take you a while. Yeah, how much money does that cost? So Muse into World Tree is eight. Then you sell the Muse to get another World Tree for three less. So it costs 11. So it's actually one credit more. Yeah, that's not good. Don't do that. This is sick. Right up's good. I need to play more sub Ks like as sub deck. Um, also very tricky. A lot of key one ofs in these lists. At least this one can find it consistently. I've never seen the deck 10 out of 10 U, MU except used in this deck. Oh, you've never seen anyone use 10 out of 10 MU. A uh, new runner deck. Got smashed in the rematch. Uh, let's go. The line also leaves you with the coalescence install, which is another three cards. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You want stuff on the table either for, for simul chip, but for that, you want to ace opposite for sure. This is slightly different. Actually, the one I'm playing does have two cataloger and no Aesops. I think Aesops is obviously very good. I think cataloger is worth considering. It depends on how soft R&D is, how soon. Because mind you, the multi axis for this deck is Conduit. And I don't love Conduit right now. I think it's generally hard to run Conduit. I like to have a bit more pressure up front. Maybe that's why Burner is good. Maybe that's why uh, Coalescence is good. Or sorry, cataloger. And even using cataloger to slow the corp down is like, and Burner to slow the corp down is exactly what you want to do. So I don't know. The other version of the deck too, mind you, the one that we were playing with viruses had another win condition, which was like Knob Kree Imp Grind. Uh, this one is much more honest. Like the only multi axis is a single card. Obviously a single card in 68 sounds cursed, but you know, it's different when you can get it consistently. So testing will tell. I have no doubt Seb has done a bunch of testing. I haven't played like just like honest shaper coalescence. And I think that's also really good. Nuvum. 54, let's go. So how good is this opening hand? We technically have no money, but we have access to Muse. I think that we're going to mulligan for money. Thanks, you too. I think I like opening with Telework a lot of times. I think this version is going to be different. Again, in the versions of Tech Tree that we played, we, as soon as possible, want to trade our resources into resources. I think this one, you can go for uh, programs into programs a bit better. I don't think we really want to get the Airblades into something soon. We're going to mulligan this. We need some money. That's a fair bit better. Damn, okay. Subliminal, we want to run. They trashed. He trashed, excuse me. Plantergram. He's already played an event this turn. He's still looking at the top of the deck. Still value in that. Cat is a fine card, but the deck is super pressed for hardware tutors. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is a much better draw. Damn. Let's see if the ice comes down, right? Like, this is... What do we do? Do we do telework? Click one? Okay, hold on. I actually don't know how to play this hand. <laughs> All right. Uh, I don't know if I said... Okay, so we can telework, hit telework. That would be on seven credits. Then we can install World Tree. We can run. We can put Cubon on this ice. We don't have to run this ice. And then Cubon can, can become a coalescence. And then we're kind of cracked, right? Like, is this the best hand? Is this messed up? This seems like such an absurd hand. Dies to punitive turn one. Shut up. Like, the hell? <laughs> Isn't that the best hand? Like, that's unbelievable. This coalescence could be, like, imagine that was a burner. Imagine that was a burner. Uh, that is incredible. Now, how quickly can Pick one ice up everything to make this world tree really difficult? And so the world tree here, like, I think we do Telework and we, I don't, like, I don't know what the line is. I'm assuming we stone ship for value, but I think we now, with this coalescence on the table, would rather get an Aesop's down. Yeah, that was an opener for sure. That felt way better. Yeah, that was a turn. Oh, shit. Rohit, I asked you about the, the Eclipse, and I think you wrote something about how it was, and I don't think I read it. Excuse me. 
Okay, I said both centrals. Archives could be a problem with punitive. So stone ship is important for punitive. I think we're a bit too slow on this to check. This is where also you can get Fazerum to check the remote server. Uh, that's true, goodness. So what do we want to do here? We can either pull Telework for card draw. We can also... Oh man, I'm not ready to play this deck. This deck is sick. We, we want to Earthrise here. We can keep using Ari after this turn. Yeah, I, I think so. So we can run this, see what it is. It was great though. Okay, good to hear. Um, Neumann, hey Brennan. So here, like the problem is it's most likely to be a barrier because you don't push out behind. It could be a Hordum. That would be the best case for us because we can get a Fazerum on this thing for free and then check what server one is. We've seen Oaktown, I think above the law is something. This is the most sell stone shop for Aesop's board. I don't think so. I think we sell the Telework. I don't think we need three more credits. Like the Telework into Aesop's is just a clickless Telework. So I think we start with the card draw. Okay. So we telework, we run archives, we trade telework probably into an Earthrise for one. Is it too late to check server one? It might not be, but if this like, oh my God, if this is a hammer, it's disgusting. There's no way to protect against a hammer. Let's see if it's a hammer. If it's a hammer, we lose. It's a Pharos. Okay, so we can't Fazerum that. We're going to have a tag. Uh, We have no tricks here. Hey, Pod. So unfortunately, well, at least we made them spend seven. He spent seven on that. We're going to remove the tag. We made a run. We didn't fire World Tree that turn. It's another Rashida. Okay, that's really good. Two Rashidas in the opening with Nuvum and 54 is not great. But Ferris is going to be difficult because we hopefully he doesn't like triple advance this. If he does, we have to hush it. But this is exactly the sort of ice that we cannot Fazerum. Uh, icing up archives here might be really tricky for us. We might have to do like nuke into nuke and then hope we get something like a simul chip because with simul chip we can run HQ and do like simul chip for us for actually no we don't really have simul chip tech here. Hedge fund, yeah okay this is a problem. <laughs> this is where things can slip. If this is the only barriers, we are not in a good spot. I don't think we have to run this. We can set up with nuke. Okay, we have a Fazerum. The problem, this is a reactive Fazerum. With Ari, there's no such thing as a reactive Fazerum. We'll run HQ. Hoping this is a Winchester. Hoping it's not another barrier. It's another barrier. That's not good. Uh, we don't want to Ari on that. 10 credits. Still the daily cast into an above the law is pretty bad, but it's a 1 of in 54. Like, we're not playing around that, are we? Oops, all barriers is going to get us. It can't be all barriers, right? Clueless? It genuinely can't be. It might be all barriers. So to get through tree line, it's like difficult. We need Cleaver and we probably need another card. Like one of our turbines. The middle league turbine comes in for one credit, so it's not that bad. It's just like breaking in and making the first run is hard. Uh, server one defensive upgrade on time of an advancement might be an atlas. We probably need to deal with spin doctor. If you don't deal with spin doctor, you have issues with a uh, with a uh, slash and burn. You have cleaver double turbine for the pharos, yeah, but like we have to make successful runs. Okay, what are we doing here? We probably do telework sure gamble. We just need one real to trigger to get cleaver. Yeah, I know, but that one trigger is going to be like Fazerum. So I don't think we credit. I think we install Coalescence. So now we probably sure gamble. Run server two seems fine. We could be face checking more. I think actually we should have face checked R&D to get a res here. Like they can't all be barriers, right? Because we just need to get a world tree to fire. Let's see how bad this is. If it's just a slash and burn Alice with a counter, we're fine. We don't have clot. Uh oh. Tukana? Oh, that's a real oh. Atlas without a counter, so it looks like he's pushing it. That might be smart against uh, Arasana deck. Let's see what he gets here. He only has five credits. Tukana? It's a border control? Okay. Barriers for days, but he only has three credits, so that's okay. We should be able to crack R&D. This is where, like, having a cataloger, I think, makes a lot of sense. Uh, So we can get back into this. So how do we get back into this? We need to trade a coalescence into a fractor. And then we can get through tree line with Cubana. We can start locking our ND. The other option is just to say YOLO and go get Conduit. Uh, Conduit is probably not exactly what we want here. 
Now, if he scores it again, Tucano will fire, but Border Control Ferris is pretty expensive. I think we just need to get our cleaver down for sure. So I'm going to run R&D. We have no MU, but that's fine. So Arasana. Whoops. Okay, I used Ari wrong. If there was Conduit Peach of Shaw wins, immediately when Cataloger usually just scores too. Yeah, but it controls the game. Like, it slows the corp down too. I hear you. Breach server, world tree, becomes a cleaver. Pay to steal. Glad we put the cube on down. Safe to punitive. Okay, pretty safe to punitive. So we can run HQ for a single. I think his hand might be pretty bad. Uh, two kind of will shuffle, not that it matters that much. Let's draw. Is there any run event we can get that actually gets us out of here? No, there are no run events besides overclock. Imagine we draw an SMC. Do we need to do that now? We'd rather not pay for a conduit. We'd rather get a conduit. Trickshot would go wild here. Yeah, I know. Do we run server one? I think we do. Overclock R&D would have been uh, really, really good server one. So what can we do? We can install SMC. So if we do SMC into a turbine, that costs us six credits, but it ends up saving us four on this run. So I think we just do it. Yeah, Trickshot would have been really good. Oh. That's an issue. So do we just run this? It costs one. This costs two, two, two. This costs six. This costs seven. If he pops the border control. Can we afford to pay seven here? Yeah, we definitely can. Like he pushed this in after not getting an AS token. It has to be an agenda. If he pops the border control. It's all airblades run HQ for a lily pad. We've already used our ability, Jeff. We'll do it next turn for sure. Yeah. Yeah, but we already used the, the cleaver with World Tree. That's what the Airblaze turns into a lily pad. Yeah, and I think I'd be fine with, you know. Okay. So we go back at six credits. It has to be an agenda. And we win the game if we do that, so why not? Good game. Oof. Yo, I had a wild uh, I had a wild opening. You all barriers? Barriers are pretty good right now. I don't know. Barriers are pretty okay. No. <laughs> this is why Slap Vandal also is worth something, right? Like Slap Vandal in the tree line. Playing one Slap Vandal might be worth it. I don't know. It's hard to tell. Just when works through. Yeah, yeah. It had to be an agenda remote server. There's no way you're not going for an Atlas counter there. So we can just brute force it. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Which is no Hordem, huh? Yeah, nice. I think three Fizerum is silly. I think three Fizerum is maybe silly. I think having access to one Fizerum really cool. Having access to, like, I feel like in the early game, Fizerum and Slap Vandal are almost interchangeable. Uh, and then having access to one is good. And maybe I want a class act. Maybe I just love class act. Oh, super cool. The current list is two Fizerum, three flip switch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for the game. All right. I felt like we were in control and making plays. Uh, that was cool, but obviously our opening hand was like messed up good. And Pick One played that really well. Like icing up all centrals is what you want to do because you want us to work for our six credit econ card we played on turn one that did fire twice. It was good when it fired. Andre, I feel like I'm getting bodied in RWR. I am. I'm not having a good time in RWR in terms of like playing decks that win. Fun deck, I wish it was better the game. Yo, Pop Culture Detective, how's it going? I saw you commented recently on like a three minute board games. They're like Netrunner thing. It's uh, good to see you. Hopefully you're doing well. I wish I was better at this game. How much are you playing, by the way? I don't know if you play, like, locally. Uh, if you play in, like, a local meta. For those who don't know, Pop Culture Detective has, like, a really fantastic YouTube channel. I can't recommend it enough. And I remember years ago, in, like, one of the outros, which is, like, a thanks to Patreon, you saw that Pop Culture had, like, a, a desk mat, which was, like, a Netrunner play mat with, like, you know, HQ R&D on it. I was like, what? And it was really, really cool. Love your channel, too. Oh, thank you. Thanks so much. I'll link it in the description. I'd recommend it. I got uber bodied. Yo, pick one. It was close. It was definitely close. Um, Border control on their mode server makes sense. But yeah, we just got really um fortunate to be able to crack one server. 
two Rashidas early is like I think the fastest you can ask for in that deck, which is great. Let's see how this goes. Hey, Lulzler. PE, yeah, Lulzler faith PE. Now we do have 63 cards in our deck. We open with a Fizerum. That's pretty good. Not a lot of berries in Jinteki. Hey, this is also what like Cataloger versus Conduit is something. Best of luck. Have fun. Uh, we have an early DZ. This seems good. Sadly, I'm a small town in Cali and there's no network players around. Oh, bummer. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you like playing on JNet online. It's a nice way to get practice, especially if you're in like green level clearance. It's really ask easy to be like looking for mentor or something like that. Uh, we'll keep that. Subliminal messaging not its best against World Tree. Well, yeah, that's true. We'll try and run. That's why like subliminal dead deck is really good. Even if it fires once, it feels really good. But then if it fires once, right? Like you're gonna fire an operation a turn anyway, so I don't know. Two world trees in the opening and the joy of having nine world trees. Yeah, this opening is really good, but we're gonna die to like something on the table. So we don't want to go too low in cards. Like, what are we trading with this hand? Like, I don't know what we're trading with this hand. We have no tech against PE. Like, huh? This is where you play the matchup, not your deck. As an Eastern European, I also have no chance to play in person other with my brothers. You play online though? Airblades is PE tech? Oh, that's true. Yeah, we could DZ for Airblades. That's during a run. That's actually really good. However, we can't do it this turn because we'll die. You get Airblades value, you use two counters and sell it. Yeah, you just trade Airblades forever. I think that's a good point. Oh, we should install DZ first. Yeah, we, we whiffed that. I think it's more important to get daily cast down though. There's somewhere... Do we die on the table? How do we die on the table? Sting into Reaper function kills us on the table, I think. But I think they're credit short. They'd have to have like some sort of click compression to get advancements. <laughs> Celestial Spark just says TJ. Um, so I'm worried that this is like a Reaper function or something. We just like step slightly out of line and hit a snare at a bad time. Uh, yeah, I think that opening hand, we maybe wanted to get DZ down. If we had a creative commission, it'd be a bit easier. But I don't think we have to do much. Right, like, as long as we keep cards in hand, it's hard for them to win. We also have, like, stone chip chart rooms. Like, they have to do a lot of work to, like, actually win the game. Uh, it's slightly too late in the turn to check. I'm just going to keep my hand up. I think the telework is more important than the DZ. Hollow manure spike? Yeah, that we keep a stone ship on the table. We're okay. Like, we might actually get a telework into a stone ship and just hold it but we'll probably get an earth rise okay they have to be like ha hollow and seamless score back to you play newer spike yeah all right i think we'll make our first run here on one credit i'd rather have more clicks left in the turn So this works during a run. So no matter what we hit here, it's fine. We'll trash that, I think. Uh, draw telework. Just kind of keep it easy. If this was the Mwanza P, this would have been a funky matchup. Yeah, that's the problem with Mwanza to me. It's like if you don't play Pinhole, you just don't interact with it. You just run anything else. Whoa, super cool. I mean, super conducting. What's that about? They're probably on Piranhas. Honestly, Piranhas and P is kind of cool. It's like Mouseless with more steps. That's really cool. It's like three influence T though, but Pranas and P is something I was thinking about the other day. Or a shitter with double seamless and end of line can kill in five. Yeah, if that's the case, we need, um. I think we'll just do this telework into an Earthrise and go from there. I don't think we need this hand that much. Like we're just going to play off of our resources. Uh, is Nuka better here? No. TPR? Okay, they're up to something cool. Prevent one net damage? Yeah, why not? Well, honestly, with this hand, do we need to prevent net damage here? We have so many air blades. Why the heck not? There's better be a shorthand than a shit. It's unfortunate there isn't. Oh, there are also 94 cards. Oh, I didn't. I was so. Okay, so this is the matchup that um the strawberry just played against earlier today. So it's probably just every card you can play. So that's cool. We got that going for us. <laughs> Try making intelligent plays when it's like anything. It could be literally anything. Uh, cool. Down to four. Now, like we can be a bit more brazen. I totally forgot where Arasana is as well. Um, I don't think it matters. 
Way back in the FFG days, I used to go to the San Francisco meetups. Everyone was really ridiculous good. I didn't win often, but I had fun playing. Well, not against CI, but Geist is my favorite. Yo, welcome to the Geist gang. Yo, Pop Culture, do you know that the World Championship is in San Francisco this year? Even if you're like not a competitive player, going out just to like vibe in Netrunner Con, I can't recommend it enough. Is it 99? Um, hard to count. 94. Hey, yeah. Hey, Mr. Pelly, how's it going? So what's this upgrade on HQ? I don't know. Who knows? Uh, so our best case is like to get down to Conduit. I didn't know that. Might check it out. Yeah, check out nilsignal.games. It's in the end of October. It's like October 20th. Um, it's at an expensive hotel, but you don't need to stay at the hotel, obviously. Uh, tickets to Worlds are usually like 70 bucks. And it's the whole weekend. It's more than the weekend. I'd recommend it. I can't recommend it enough. Okay, so... We probably want to force some ice reses. So with the Fazerum, we can face check into anything. Nothing hurts us. We can muse into coalescence. I just want to get the conduit down and start locking the top of the deck and just not worry about anything. So that means we should probably muse into coalescence and sell the coalescence first. That seems fine. Uh, whew, I've never played a muse yet. This is my first time playing a muse. Stack. Coalescence. See if I can make it. Yeah. Uh, so we'll just run R&D here. I went to a conference last month that was held at the exact same hotel. Oh, how is it, Rohit? Did you scab it out? Did you find the good tables? <laughs> What's the bathroom situation? It's a tattoo bola. Okay. That is something we cannot break with our uh, current board state. So we won't do anything with that. I think we've done enough damage for today. Give us the review. Yeah, let us know how it is. So... Cyberdelia is like nonsense. We don't need it, but like this game is going to be long. So we can just afford to click for credit. Like we could play Sure Gamble, but I just don't think our money actually matters. Res the Code Replicator. Res the Bladder Word. Oh, cool. Okay. We lost a simul chip. That's totally fine. Mind you, Airblades is only during run. It's also not on res abilities, it's only on encounter abilities. So even for the Jinteki card pool, like there's. Next to nothing this interacts with? What What's on Encounter in Jinteki? Nothing. Everything's on res or on pass. I'm probably missing one card. Maybe Swordsman? No, it's not on Encounter, is it? There's pretty fancy bathrooms are nice, but the building is like weirdly brutalist on the outside. We can fetch Bones here? Yeah, we can fetch Bones here. You're right. Should we? Data Loop? Yeah, Data Loop Protocon. How's it going? It could. They could. Not that they're going to res it, but that's a NBN card. But yeah, you'll see in these sort of decks for sure. Code Replicator is also really weird because you can just jack out. Like, it doesn't actually do anything. But we'll just deal with the bladder word. That's our goal here is just to deal with the bladder word. I honestly don't think we'll get Miss Bones. I'd rather get Earthrise into an Earthrise. Okay, we can check both of these. Why'd they res Code Replicator to duck under four for bladder word? I'm pretty sure. Oh, there's our one Lily Pad. Oh, that's a really powerful card into this matchup. I think we just snap install it. All right, well, we're running a bit later in the turn. Uh, no action. We could hush this. Is Sai Santana on encounter? Yeah, maybe Sai Santana is. World Tree. Oh, I didn't think this far ahead. Uh, Earthrise into... Oh. That was our last Earth Rise. I guess a Stone Chip, so we don't die to things. Trash Bladder Word, yeah. And I'll run Server 4, I guess. Last click, I don't think there's anything that punishes us. We have Lily Pad draw. Not that we have any way to fire it on their turn. So getting down a Simul Chip at some point is going to be important. It's free card draw. We have three free card draw in the bank. No further? Okay. If it's a Snare, we float a tag. It's kind of bad, actually. So Hokusai. Prevent one damage. I do not think we care about preventing one damage with this in our hand. Oh, we could have Q-Bond there, but I guess we wanted to keep our Fizerum. Uh, Do we prevent one damage with this Airblades? Yeah, okay. We'll get another Airblades next turn. We'll just get rid of that. Okay. They still need a win somehow. We just need a, like, 49 cards left.
You think for the thumbnail of this, I'm going to put like Los's head and then a world tree and everyone's going to be like, world tree Los? What's that about? I feel like I don't know how to get around that problem. Why wouldn't you want to prevent the damage there? Uh, because it doesn't matter. I'd rather want to prevent the damage when it's not tempo damage. Like us ending our turn on three cards in hand with stone ship doesn't matter. But I could imagine board states in which they force us to do a lot very quickly. And then very quickly with a lot, we have to interact. Right? Like imagine they set up a fork where it's like, you know, Fuji on top of a Hokusai on top of a like anemone. That's something where we'd actually want the prevention because we could die. This board state, if we had one fewer card in our hand, we're not dying. And none of these cards matter. That's why. Um, sometimes it's worth okay. Fetching Aesops, yeah, we're gonna fetch Aesops. Um what are we fetching Aesops with though? The stone ship? Yeah, I think so. I think we just run archives, we do nothing, so we might as well draw. Uh okay. So sad the new NPC articles didn't get covered. Eric, I covered one of them. You can ask me, by the way. <laughs> you don't have to come here and guild me. I covered the Toronto one. Toronto one's this weekend. I'm stoked for it. Uh, I think it's going to be sick. Eric, just send me a ping whenever there's a new article. Just like send me on Discord and I'll be like, cool. All right, we don't have to do anything fast. Sorry that this is not the most exciting game potentially. We're just going to trade the stone chip for... Actually, no, we shouldn't do that. Sorry. That's not it. We might as well just use the stone chip to get another resource. Okay, well, not like that. Uh, All right. Oh, we can't afford that, of course. So we can do simul chip. We can cycle the coalescence. Wow, are we biffing this? I think we might be biffing this. Where did our money go? We needed the we needed the world tree there. So if we sign up the coalescence, we're gonna get a card draw. Yeah, whatever. Oh, there's no programs in our bin. We legally cannot do that. Well, that's on us. Okay, I've made a I've made a I made a mess. <laughs> I definitely made a mess here. I thought we could sign up cycle. We can't. There's nothing in the bin. You at least need a target in the bin. No change in game state or whatever. Uh, so that was a terribly ugly turn. Gonna lose 100 card P. We could. We easily could. The thing is, like, we just don't have to be aggressive because for 100 cards P to win the game, they have to do a lot of work. Like, just clicking for credits. Yeah, money range, right? You can world treat for coalescence. Oh, you're right. We should have world treat for coalescence 100%. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's embarrassing. Yeah, we should have just ran archives to cycle the coalescences. It would draw a card as well. Okay. So let's run archives to cycle. This is probably an NGO front. Uh, Amuse, great. Draws a card. A virus, great. Cold for Cold was maybe the line. Yeah, 100% was the line. Yeah. So I'm assuming it's an NGO front or uh, Charlotte. Uh, no action. We're going to reserve our action for the Fuserum if it's like a scary sentry. On four credits, there's not that many that fall into that camp. So this could be up to four damage. could be two core damage. It's a viral. Okay. We're on game point. Prevent one net damage. No, we need to keep this around. So we'll take one net damage. We lost the hush. That's good to be in the bin. Uh, Cool. Not much to do here. I think we'll just draw. We're looking for a resource. Not that one not a resource and we'll just install a simul chip so now we have clickless card draw on our turn and their turn i just didn't know you were going to stream today yeah me neither eric so don't worry about it we'll, we'll cover it after this game we'll do some news there's just a bit of news oh run together was announced the cards look sick we'll talk about that after this game if i remember heart thanks eric i'm bummed that i'm not in toronto this weekend it's unfortunate timing but i'm, I'm definitely going to try and make it to boston shout out to uh neon static who is going to try and help me out do that and I, I should let you know when uh, this, uh, this, excuse me, the Montreal one is soon. I'm going to try and talk to the event this week to see if we can get a date in the books. Okay, six credits. What do we have going for us? We have simul chip into coalescence to draw. Player commentating an NPC. Boston. I'd rather commentate, but I don't know if it's being streamed, Derek. I'd almost always rather commentate. Um, Are you ever not streaming? <laughs> but Drake, what's up? Yes, Saturday. They asked me to do some coverage for that as well. Oh, hell yeah. I have no idea what the coverage is like. The NSG podcast also released an episode on rules. I think I missed that one, Pod. Thanks for plugging it. We can figure that out. Yeah, okay. 
I hit you up about that. Okay, so should we run this? We have we might as well sure gamble first, then check it. The worst this can be is like six damage. If that's the case, we have air blades and we can just install a card and jack out. So they're gonna enforce us into our their garbage for a bit. Cubon could have helped with credits, yeah. But as soon as we commit to the Cubon, we can only commit to the Cubon after they decide not to res. As soon as they decide not to res, the window closes and we can't Cubon on it, right? So if we Cubon on it with Arasana, we can't get the Fizerum on it. And I'd rather Fizerum in case it's a Sisenton. That being said, we're being a bit cautious. Oh, World Tree. I did not consider this in the slightest. I guess we do Muse for something. Cleaver, I guess. Not the most important. It's a false lead. Okay, we have that now. Prevent one, no. Yeah, probably Cleaver, right? The Aussie's not an NPC. Oh, for the Aussies. Excuse me. Feels like a rules team meeting. <laughs> you could have spent a click for the coupon. Yeah, I just don't think like we'd rather have cards in hand than two more credits on this board state, right? Like we have Cyberdelia Cleaver. We 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 don't need more money. Uh, we don't need to grind up. Like we're on game point. They're not doing much. Uh, Urban. Okay, now that's the reason they had the coupon down. As much as I also don't know if it's that important, we can install the SMC here. Uh, our next line is just like conduit in. We can consider running HQ. I'm just gonna click for a credit. We're not doing anything. This is a really good deck to like beat this PE sort of stuff because like obviously we have 40 more cards, but we can like get the pieces we need when they present problems. And that's one of the, you know, it's hard to see what problems they're going to present to us because like 100 cards, they can present a lot of different problems. And so like having the flexibility to answer those like admittedly potentially minor problems that are hard to predict, it's very good to have a toolbox. Um, it's much harder to play this when you're just like playing your hand because you'd be like, this could be anything. And our response is like, oh, whatever it is, we'll be able to fix it. This is the sort of matchup if I was on the other side of the table, I'd probably be a bit upset about the same way that I'm pretty upset when we play against like three gatekeeper ping R plus. Oh, advancing. Okay. I don't care about that. As long as we have a simul chip down and potentially a stone chip, we don't ever have to check an advanced card in server two. Do we just go for conduit? Yeah, I think we're comfortable enough just to go for conduit. Going HQ also matters. They've been putting a couple points on the table. This actually makes uh, money. Well, David got enough players with their own cards in Honolulu. Finally, that we have been a startup deck building clinic tomorrow as part of our network night. Any advice you care to share? Ooh, Prana. We have to run that. Um, David, hit me up after this game. World Tree. Coalescence becomes a win condition. Draw a card. Good game. Good game. Thanks for the game. Yeah, that's a rough matchup for sure. But I'm glad that a 99 card, card PE deck has a rough matchup. BB? I don't know what that means. Uh, Cool. Let's talk about that. Any advice to care to share? So, okay. When it comes to startup, David, I don't know. Because startup obviously had a big rotation. And so I'm not sure what startup looks like right now. Uh, I can't get... Yeah. BB is GG one row down? Oh, that's good. I was hoping they're not BMing. That makes more sense. So I, I don't know what it's like when it comes to startup. Hit me after this game wins in one click. Yeah, I know. But yeah, it is what it is. What I'd recommend for new players is the rule that, mind you, might not be applicable in standard as much as or in startup as much as in standard, which is like just put too much money in your deck. So two things to keep in mind. OK, two basic things to keep into mind. Uh, boot bame, uh, when it comes to a corporation deck. Firstly, corporation deck, very specifically. Learn to count to seven. This is something that takes a lot of players a while to think about um, in, in most Netrunner games. Like, it's just tricky. Uh, is make sure that your agenda suite, you have a plan how to score to seven. A lot of players will just put their favorite agendas in a deck, right? They'll be like, oh, I have like off-world offices and Illuminal and then these two pointers and then like a bunch of one pointers and a bunch of three pointers, right? Like, it's really easy to make an agenda suite that there's no easy way to score to seven. That's why, like, fundamentally, the two five threes and a bunch of three twos or four twos sees a lot of play because as a corporation, you can win the game in three scores. Sometimes it'll be four scores, but it's, like, very easy to see a deck that's like, oh, I'm on five threes and three ones and four twos. And it's just very, very, very difficult to put together a score to seven pattern. So I think on a corporation deck, understanding that you need to score to seven, just keep that in mind when building your agenda suite. A lot of people miss that, especially when they're newer to the game because they just have uh, agendas that have like good abilities for their game plan, which is true, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, I want to make sure you don't know what your win condition is. 
a lot of the straightforward stuff, like I think precision design is one of the easiest decks to play uh, when you're new to the game and playing startup as much as it might not be the most exciting. It's just kind of understanding a bit of what your game plan is and have more money than you think you need in the deck. So uh, most decks are like, especially on the runner decks, you'd want to be about like half economy cards. I think that might be hard enough in startup and startup. There just might not be enough economy cards to make your deck half economy, but just make sure you have way more card draw and way more economy. If you want to focus on like two or three weird cards that you really like, yeah, let your, you know, let your flag fly. That's cool. Um, just make sure that it's not the majority of the deck because it's fundamentally very difficult. For what it's worth, I'm talking about like having a well-oiled machine. And if everyone's playing startup and learning the deck together, the game together, who cares, right? You can figure it out. But for this deck, we want to know our win condition, which is basically put enough ice in a remote server eventually and have a defensive upgrade. That's a good enough win condition. If you can have multiple win conditions, so be it. Counting to seven is a big thing. On the runner side, same sort of idea. So let's just search for st startup to see what startup de decks look like right now because I don't actually know. Also, you can search for startup decks on, on Narrowing DB. Not a lot of people know that. What is sad punitive tech? T400 money. So play a lot of that. Yeah, I'm not like, I, I don't know if we needed to uh, talk about like the startup meta right now. I think punitive counter strike is really good. How many cards? Our opponent was playing somewhere between 94 and 99. Rahit says 94. You're dead to punitive, put more punitive tech in your deck. So let's look at some of these startup decks. Um, Silver hands. Okay. I don't know these decks. Charlotte's Web or Carlet's Web. Cool. So just put more money in that you think you need to. I think Sebastian decks can be a bit tricky because uh they're, you know, there's a lot more synergy package. Why is Punitive so good in startup right now? I'm not very startup pilled. This is a problem with startup. Sorry for startup tangent. I do not want to watch that flashing over and over again. Um NSG has an issue where like NSG has certain parts that exist in the card pool. Right now, every faction largely has ways to beat. Uh, damage, right? Like if you're dying to damage decks, like punitive counter-strike decks, you have a bunch of ways to deal with it. In Shaper, you have more money. You have Stone Ship Chart Room. In Anarch, you have Steel Skin Scarring. You have have more money. You have Imp maybe, right? And then in Criminal, you have like Class Act, have more money. Unfortunately, right now in Startup, none of those cards are in the format. So when it comes to cards that prevent damage or interact with damage favorably in the format, there is zero cards. The only card that kind of gives you legs besides having more money into punitive decks is like T400 and having six cards in hand. But literally, oh, also Lilypad. I think Lilypad is another one, but it's hard to fire Lilypad on the corporation's turn in startup. I don't think there's a lot of ways to do it. So this is the issue. Is like It's hard for NSG to balance around startup, so there are just going to be holes in the card pool. Like, Should there be another Steel Skin in Anarch? I would say definitely not. But like currently, it is a problem that the card pool has as something you need to address, but there's just nothing in the startup card pool that addresses it. So anything that does big damage like punitive or arguably maybe even Neurospike, there's just no way to deal with it. So, oh, there's also no 5.3s pre-Borealis either. Uh, there's send a message, but there's also more 5.3s now in the format, let alone like Basalt Spire, which is just a wacky deck, uh, wacky of agenda. Shouldn't they just abandon startup after Dawn comes out? I think a lot of people will. Like once... Uh, FFG is out of the NSG card pool. I think startup is probably not going to be as popular as it is. I've seen a lot of people grind startup. I'm not the biggest startup head right now, but I think we're now experiencing uh, some like holes in the card pool that like it's hard for NSG to fix because they can't just continue to print cards for startup because they'll also be legal and standard. Why play startup? Wasn't the main appeal no FFG cards in the first place? I think that's half the appeal, Eric. The other half the appeal is like it's a very workable small subsection of cards. I think players like you and I underestimate how daunting understanding the whole card pool is and face checking into unres dice. As much as I think both of us agree we should just face check into ice more often than not and die into size and taunt on turn one. But um, yeah, I think that's a big thing. It's like it's a smaller card pool, so it's more approachable. I think that's actually like a really big thing that is in startup's advantage as well. It's like, say I want to go to a deck building and I go to new runner deck and then I go to startup, I'd be like, oh, there's only like six options. Some of them are really bad. Uh, so let's play a Zaya deck. And then we just go to collection up here, startup, and then I go to build and it's like, here's your, your seven events you can play. Here are your four hardware, right? Like that makes deck building really, really approachable. Um, I think that's a good reason. As opposed to if we go to standard, obviously it's a bit bigger, uh, but I think both of you and I appreciate that. Why did they remove NSG cards from the card pool? So startup is meant to be the smallest format, right? So it's system gateway, it's system update, wait, update and then it's just the last entire cycle. So when the final part of Rebellion of Rehearsal, the final part of the Liberation Cycle released, they removed all of Borealis from Startup. So Startup is always meant to be a manageable like 200, 250 cards. I don't know what the numbers comes down to. Uh, so they just cut Borealis from it recently. 
that's always been the plan with startup. It's meant to be smaller. So it's not all NSG card pools. Mind you, there is a, another format people play. It's not NSG supported. It's called Neo. And Neo is all of NSG cards plus a small curated ban list. So some people appreciate that too, I think. And a lot of people do play Neo, I think. Um, so it's up to you. But like the appeal of startup wasn't to be just NSG cards, it was meant to be NSG cards plus it was meant to be a small subsection. So when you only play Netrunner for four hours a week, having reasonable learning curve is good. Yeah, I agree. I agree. This is this is much more approachable. I'm on once dawn rotation happens, it looks like standard is going to look a lot more like startup. Yes, I agree. Like generally no BM, but do people actually play Neo? I don't know. I don't know. I've heard conversations about it. I know Neo was trying to like get itself to be a, a approved format on JNet, which was kind of difficult. I think as FFG card pool gets smaller and smaller, there's less reason to play Neo. But like if Neo is cool, Neo is cool. I've no doubt some people like Neo. I've been playing for about a year now overall and getting in standard is super fun, but face checking standard is still somewhat concerning for me. Yeah, the more you do it, Lockmanos, just do it with your face. It's usually fun. The fastest way to learn is with your face. I did die to size and on turn two on my first startup tournament a year ago. Good times. Yeah, Robin, don't worry. That still happens. I died on turn one in standard today on stream. It, it just happens. It's fine. Hey, Elwin, how's it going? The problem is basically that NSG design set with problems and solutions in the same set, but SU21 is reprints, so isn't internally balanced for startup. Yes. I think it's very, very hard, if not impossible, to design a card pool that exists to make startup healthy and standard healthy, right? And this is the first, I think, big example of it where people are saying, like, there's just no good way to deal with punitive. Um, so maybe creative deck builders will work around that. But it's just like hard. Like NSG can't just continue to present ways to deal with punitive and then hopefully standard is still healthy. It's really I think there are like 15 people who play Neo. I don't know. If people like Neo, it's cool. I'm not the one who's gonna say your format's good or not. I haven't played it. Yeah. Don't forget cupulation is a way to disrupt punitive. Yeah, yeah, there's other ways. Like there's cupulation, there's imp. Here's Heliamphora. Like, it's hard. The problem is, like, all of these besides Heliamphora don't work on archives, which is usually where, like, you steal the Basalt Spire. I've heard that currently in startup, like, Nuvum is really good because it can just print money and then just, like, consistently punitive you. But I don't know. When will all the FFG stuff rotate out? And when will NSG about sell their sets in a wider variety of stores after that? Very soon. So this is going to be a huge turning point for the game. Firstly, NSG does sell some of their sets in stores. You can go, I know in 401 Games in Toronto, they sell stores, stuff in stores, but it's not widely everywhere. Like some major stores don't sell them, but I've heard the fact that you can buy like this on a store shelf in Toronto has been bringing people into the game. If you just got into the game because you found Netrun on a store shelf, how's it going? Um, so the big thing that's coming out later this year is that they announced this at, can I not find it? Yeah, they announced this at Worlds last year, is that once Dawn comes out later this year, all of FFG will rotate, and then the game will only be NSG. That seems pretty like absurd, but like NSG has been making Netrunner for as long as FFG has this year. So pretty sick, actually. And once that's the case, I think we're going to see NSG move away from more of FFG stuff, right? Like, I think we're going to run into maybe some issues. Like, do the factions have to be renamed? Yeah, maybe. But NSG is going to do as much as they can to move away from Netrunner from FFG stuff. So will you see reprints of Sure Gamble and Hedge Fund? Maybe, but you're definitely not going to see System Update, which is like functional reprints of FFG cards. You're not going to see FFG cards at all. Once that's the case, I think there's a chance you'll see NSG stuff in more stores because I don't know, maybe it's it's hard. Like, I don't think you can sell System Update in a store. Obviously, you can't. But System Gateway, you definitely can because it's all, you know, unique. I think it's going to be a pretty big deal, but that's going to be later this year. Second half of 2024, Dawn comes out. It rotates all of FFG and System Update and Magnum Opus. So the stuff that is all FFG stuff. And then we're just in an NSG world. I'm really, really excited for that. I played Aaron once a week with a bunch of complete newbies. So I missed some of the more interesting ideas, I guess. I know. Hey, Sauce, gave an update. I'm not saying don't people. Yeah, people definitely play Neo. I'm generally excited to see how Dawn near Prince FFG staples like Rashida, given what they've done with Charlotte. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, to me, it's like a mixture. It's like such an important set. And I have faith that NSG can do a great job at it, but it's also like the most important set. So I'm like, oh, let's see what it looks like. Like it, it's, it's, it's nerves. It's genuinely nerves, but like in the best way possible. Cause like NSG has proven that their near prints of NSG cards or FFG cards have been genuinely cooler cards. So I'm in for that. Seems like it would be good for the game, but I'm a little sad for my collection. I have every FFG set. You can still play that stuff like there's still eternal stuff like that. It's just like there's no way that Netrunner can be healthy if you still need out of print FFG stuff to play competitively, right? Like so many people are out of the game because they can't pick up stuff. And very importantly, you know, at every tier of the game, you can play with proxies. So if you don't have FFG cards and you're going through this world, which will be the last worlds with NSG with FFG cards, I believe uh, you can still photocopy and print cards out. People are winning worlds with like photocopies. It's wild. Well, technically not, but 
They're in the top 16. I've seen that commonly. Technically, Sokka, I think, has a card set. Yeah, it makes total sense to rotate. There's no way around it. Um, for me, I have the whole FFG collection. I've got enough mileage out of my cards to not feel upset about it, and I'll still play cube and whatever table meta with my partner when we play. So I get it. I wonder if SU21 is going to have a strength subroutines only ice, given that we have none in liberation. Oh, it definitely will be. I think there's going to be a lot of stuff in system update that's going to be closer to the like more straightforward design mentalities of system gateway. Like, I don't think we're going to see, you know, uh, cloud eaters. I think we're going to see palisades or white spaces. Like, I do think we're going to see cards that are a bit more, you know, core set baseline learn to play. Design space problems are pretty big as well, I think. So moving away from effigies cards make design easier for energy goals. Yeah. So like, this is a weird one. Because I've played Neverrunner for a long time, and I agree with, like, you know, Jeff put out a video that the Tomata Initiative meta was one of my favorite Neverrunner metas of all time. And do you ask me, is it because the set was really good? Yes. But do you ask me also, is it because it was a big rotation of FFG cards? My answer to both questions is yes. I'm actually excited for a world without FFG cards. That being said, there's still going to be pain points. Of course there is. I don't like the Ashes cycle. I want Ashes to go, too. <laughs> it, can, it can go with FFG cards, if you ask me. But um, I'm definitely very excited for the future. I feel like essentials such as hedge fund can def just be reprinted with a new name. Yeah, I think that's what's going to happen, likely. Which is a weird thing for, like, System Gateway and then for Ashes. Because, like, Ashes has NSG, FFG cards in it. Like, uh, Cerebral Overrider, Daily Casts, I think, and uh, Self-Modifying Codes all exist within not uh, System Gateway. And that's a weird thing. So, I don't know. Maybe that's another reason why Ashes can't be around forever. I doubt that's a big point. Oh, I'm behind on chat in some ways. There needs to be a return to Ashes. Ashes remastered, remastered. Ashes has one cool card and it's Boomerang. Yo, Protocon, I agree with you, but a lot of people classically hated Boomerang. Yeah, I feel like we've kind of kicked the can down the road. My money's on Punitive getting a non-Trace near print. For sure, I don't think we're going to see Trace like the way it is. And Trace cards and Ashes getting banned just to remove the mechanic. Uh, I, I, th I think we're sooner to see not Trace cards and Ashes banned, but all of Ashes going. Because Trace does not exist outside of Ashes. I just think Ashes is not long for the world. And like, if you're tuning in and be like, why does Andre hate Ashes? Ashes is fundamentally one of the most important Netrunner sets of all time. It was the first NSG set that they ever put out. They were called Project Nisei back in the day. And they had to put out a set, first time ever. Doing anything for the first time is the hardest thing to do. They had to prove to the community that they were the horse that we wanted to back in the race. They did a lot of great stuff. They put out fantastic cards of great quality and people loved them. On that said, though, the safe the set had to be relatively safe. They couldn't really do anything that was like so wild with design, more that we're seeing now in the future with like new keywords and mechanics and stuff like that, which is like, okay. And so we ended up with a lot of like incremental, you know, cards. Uh, not my favorite set. I think NSG also has now designed, have figured out their design ethos, and it's different than what we've seen from Ashes and uh it's for the better but there is a difference like i feel like nsg modern and nisei ashes do feel like they're designed by two different groups and that is what it is just like older you know older ffg stuff does not feel like katara or rainer every the last time krim got an econ card yeah i feel like krim is kind of in the hb problem the last krim econ card was saucy got the latest nsg set and i have to say i'm super impressed with the art as good as better than ffg yeah a lot of the same artists too eh a lot of them are just the same artists. Shout out to the new artists who are also killing it. But like, we have a lot of artists that were doing FFG stuff. Like Mauricio Herrera is still doing fantastic stuff. Mauricio is doing like OG corset. I do love myself some Mauricio. Like best art in the set. I don't know best art set. One of my favorite art in the set is Hearts and Minds. This card sucks. This art is so good. Yeah. Yeah, art slaps. That's pretty good. Art is pretty good. We should talk about art criticism at some point. I think there's still criticism about the art in the set. It's a hard thing to talk about. Do you know what's the thing I noticed? Hear me out. This is a hard bridge to cross. I will comfortably say I do not like the design on this card. I will comfortably say I think this is bad design. I will medium say I don't like the lore. I don't like this writing. I don't like the flavor text. I will never say this is bad art. What's with that? They're all the same sort of effort where people put effort together. They show their skills and, you know, their their worldview and like their experiences. And fundamentally, there is bad design. Fundamentally, there is bad art. But yet one of them, to me, assailable as all hell. And the other one I'll never touch. Like, I will very rarely say this is terrible art. And yeah, there's some art I don't like in the set. But I don't feel comfortable talking about it. It's weird. What's with that? Why is it held on a different pedestal? It's strange. Maybe I'm rude and I shouldn't say I don't like the design on this card. But if I don't like the art on the card, will I tell you? Probably not. Shout out to Ben Gilletti. Benjamin did... I had a Benjamin Gilletti card, right? 
Pendulum did did see how they run. Yeah. IG art is much more subjective than others. I do think art is more subjective, but there is things you can point out about bad art. Like there is bad art. But there is, I think design can be subjective too. Art is maybe a bit more one person effort. That's true. Yeah. It does feel like I'm dunking on one person. Like I, I like to see how they run art a lot. But if I said this was bad, I'd feel like I'm attacking Benjamin Galletti, which like I don't want to do. I like this art. I do. They always have struck me as the capitalism works for everyone faction. Which one does, David? I love all of Aminga's arts generally, but Burner deserved better. <laughs> Shitter mom E for y'all bangers. I don't know. Uh, yeah, like I feel uncomfortable talking about art I don't like. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's weird. It's weird. It's like a different standard. I don't know what's with that. I can't, I can't deal with that. I don't think I'd be able to say something is bad art either. There's bad art out there. Okay. So maybe we don't say bad art, but I think you can easily give criticisms to certain cards, right? Like this one came up a while ago. Okay. Do you, do you play this? I play this daily and I freak out my part. Oops. I, uh, I freak out my partner cause I can do these in one. Usually if you don't know, Gordian blade is a website in which a card is obscured. Oh, I've already done this one yesterday. So I know what this is. Do you y'all have y'all done this? And basically you guess what the card is. This is all of eternal. So good luck. Um, and then it gets clearer and clearer. And I have a really weird skill set that comes from casting live games in which I can see the corner of a card and I can tell you what the card is. And one thing that's really important is cards have strong color and strong silhouette. There are some cards that don't look like anything else. Uh, and I think that's really, really important. And then sometimes every once in a while, there are cards that don't have strong silhouettes. I think a lot of part of this is that it's very soft colors. This card also doesn't have a really good focus. I think we see a couple cards like that from Oliver Morid, who's generally better at drawing. Like Oliver's been drawing a lot of spaces with a lot of people that my eyes don't know where to focus on this. And it makes this one a bit uncomfortable. The art is good, but like I think with a lot of the crowd scenes, you still need to focus because my eye doesn't know where to rest on this. And that I think is genuine art criticism. Whether you want to say the art's good or bad, I think fundamentally it's on the gooder side, but like cards like this are harder to tell from a distance from casting. And one of the things is not strong silhouetting. And another thing is like, I do not know where to focus my eyes when I look at this. So I'm not an art person. I went to school for like comp sci. Like, I don't know what I'm talking about, but that's my experience looking at a lot of card art. This card is very hard to hit on Gordian Blade. This one isn't. Uh, and I think this art is a stronger art. I went to art school for eight years and yeah, there's some terrible art on some cards. Art feels super personal and somewhat subjective, but it's important to be critical of art too. Yeah, it's important to be critical. And I'd love to hear what NSG does behind the scenes. Like what is their, uh, what are they called? Postmortems to be like, how did this work out? I think one of the ones that came up recently is like the art on Oppo research and federal fundraising are too damn similar. I'd argue HB also runs into this, where these cards from a distance, you cannot tell them apart. And I've heard, no, not federal fundraising, uh, the other one, uh, the other asset, what's it called? Balance coverage is too similar. They're from a distance. You can't tell these apart too easily. And so players don't want to play both of them in the deck. So they want, don't want to install them face down. That's a genuine feedback. And it's not so much to do with the quality of the art. It's just like the art is this art. I've seen full res on the card, especially in low res on RDB, does not do it any favors. I don't know if it's my favorite art in the set. I don't think it is. I'm, I'm expecting we'll see an opera. I can't believe we don't have an opera research alt art uh, from OP at some point. But uh, yeah, like that is genuine feedback that has to be kept in mind. Nico and Seamless are literally the same art. Yeah, it's same, the same art. And they also both have a silhouetting problem. I think Seamless has a harder silhouette where Nico does have a better silhouette because Nico has a bit more depth to it. Because Nico is, you know, a Nico walking down the runway. But I do know when the set came out, I was trying to inst uh, play Nikos from a hand thinking they're Seamlesses because it is one art. Uh, David Lay did a bunch of those that are one master art and they were divided into two cards, which is cool. Sometimes they're not the arts you think they are. Like Retribution and Send a Message are the same art. I don't think that's very obvious. That one's cool. It's technically over here. Like one ends here, the other begins here. Another one is like Managarm Skunkworks. On the right of Managarm Skunkworks is Jailbreak, right? Like some of them are like the colors, like the palettes between these two cards will never be confused. Unfortunately, the color palettes of these cards also never confused. The framing does help, but the color palettes of these cards are commonly confused. Uh, that's something to keep in mind. Some of them work really well, but yeah, not all of them. It's cool though. It's a learning process. Good thing we have flying car seamless. Yeah, seamless was another card that definitely wanted an alt art. Their harmonics are also one whole piece divided into five. The harmonics did a great job. 
And I think the harmonics are, this is, okay, this came up. This I need to say for two big reasons. Okay, I was playing at a CO. I was playing against Oda Nuvo, Nick, shout out to Nick. And Nick was playing a deck I don't personally like, but it was a Prob Devos consulting deck. And its job was to advance ice over and over and over again, and then never res the ice because I was playing Aqua Sarah's crew. And then in one turn, play Biotic Labor, get a click, and then play Red Planet Couriers, move all the counters to a single Project Beal and win the game, right? We know this deck. Don't like the deck, but we know the deck, okay? He conceded the game halfway through. He just like, oh, shit, and gave me a handshake. Because it turns out the ice on archives that he was advancing was a Vasilisa. This is firstly, shout outs to Nick. Uh, this was something only he could prove because he was never going to res this ice because he knew as soon as he res it, I would trash and he would lose the game. Uh, but he was advancing a Vasilisa, which is illegal. And so obviously the whole context of the game collapses in on itself. So he just revealed it to me. He's like, sorry, I messed up, shook my hand and took a game loss. Shout out to Nick. You know, it takes honesty to do that. He could have played the whole game and I would never known the wiser if he just packed up his cards. But like, that's not runner players. Never players are very honest. The reason why he ran into this and like this is true and for as much as this is a good thing in some ways is that a lot of these like NBN eyes that came out around this time have the same color profile. So Mesna Chesvo, Unsmiling Serevna, all of these have the same sort of color profile. In some ways, that's really cool. This one has a bit more blue to it, but I could see how he mixed these two ice up. Not saying that you shouldn't make ice like that, but just, yeah, keep that in mind. From a distance, you need to be able to tell two ice apart. And I think these can be kind of tricky because they do look very similar from a, a client's so obviously slightly different but just keep that in mind right like these sort of things do have impact on gameplay people have lost games to art yeah the old art version of mess Chesso, i found it the other day i forgot about it he wasn't playing it but the old art version of mess Chesso is even closer in color palette at least to sarevna not so much to uh to uh with the other one to Vasilisa. Where can one see the One Piece versions of those? Robin, it's a hard question. David Lay used to have them up on ArtStation. From my understanding, David Lay took them down for some reason. Uh, they used to be up there, Art Netrunner, but I don't think you can find them anymore. I'm not sure why it was, but I remember trying to look them up and they were not there. Uh, this is Docklands Pass and Wildcat Strike are also the same art. Yeah, I'm not sure. He removed his art from online. Uh, there's reasons to do that because of like AI, um, but um, yeah. I think it's fine, but out of the same set, it's sus. That's quality time? No, it's not quality time. Do you want to guess? Let's guess quality time. It's a good guess, though. Uh, similar to quality time. Quality time, the orange is in the middle. It is a three... Not a three cost. Cost is wrong. It is an event from Shaper that has the same subtype. Quality time has no subtype, so you know this card has no subtype. Yeah, you got it. It's Fear Occasion. I didn't get this one in one. I got this one in two. Uh, but yeah, this card, you can tell from a distance, no other card looks like this. And that's sick. It has strong color in certain places. It has good enough silhouetting where like the front and the background are different enough. I like this art a lot. Benjamin Gletty. Again, talk about Benjamin. Good stuff. Uh, VR Cation is another good, or sorry, Creative Commission is another good one. Like no card looks like Creative Commission because those colors slap. Benjamin Gletty. Gotta be honest, I'd watch you do a Gordian Blade stream. I should probably do it every day. I'm like very good at it, unfortunately. Um, are we allowed to contribute? Yes. Oh, you were meant to guess, but VR Cation was already guessed. A lot of artists left art station while it did not protect their art from AI scraping. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people pulled their art off the line for sure. Anywho, um, let's just do some news really quick. I wanted to shout out Nan PC. Mind you, Toronto has an event this weekend. If you don't know the North American player circuit, it is a grassroots tournament circuit being run by a lot of hardworking people just to get people excuses to come together and play Netrunner. This is in Toronto. I won't be there, unfortunately. I could be a mansion runner. There would be no stream on Thursday. They'll be on Tuesday. Uh, but the Toronto event is being run by Z, I believe, and folks from the local area. We've seen some of the prize support. There's like some pretty funny tokens. Uh, it's on 420. So enjoy your uh, Canadian maple leaf. Just a good old Canadian maple leaf. That's the one we have on our flag. No other questions. Uh, article? NAMPC Vancouver recap. Oh, that's new today. And welcome to NAMPC Toronto We Show. Is this one going to be Aziz House again? No, but Anarcho, the Aziz House one is going to happen uh, in the summer. I believe I was told it was August or mid-July. I forget which one, but Z reached out. Uh, Aziz House, like, so Z's been running these tournaments year after year called the uh, Suburban Wasteland, which is at his house. And last time he was there last summer, there was like 30 players there. It was wild. And Z has like food and like beer on tap if you want it. And we like, we're meant to play in the backyard, but it rained us out. So we were like across the whole house. It was sick. Just like a really nice event in such a different mood that I've ever played Netrunner. I would definitely travel in to do it again. I plan to. Big congratulations to Abraham Man of the Moon McBride for winning NAN PC Vancouver. Hey, Abraham. 
Abraham made great use of Holloman and R plus to crush a game on the day, while decks like Kid and the Return of Ag and Fusion Glacier also graced the top eight. The finals came down to a bout between Abraham and Jason Ford. That's uh uh keep trying to say it and forgetting the name, uh Joyride, with Abraham's Lou deck mulching up Ace of Server and pressuring down the corporation for a clean one. But still saying counter text box also looks a bit like Advanced Wise text box. Oh yeah, I could see that Piotr. Then McBride's dude again. Yeah, there's two McBride brothers, uh Santa and uh Man of the Moon, Abraham. I don't know Santa's first. It's Charlie, right? It's Charlie, I think. Congratulations on your win in NPC Vancouver. You choose to bring R Plus and Lou into the event. Why those decks? Mind you, this was like five days into the new meta. I feel like Boomer Lou was the strongest deck in the new meta before the new set was released. I didn't have a lot of time to create something new, and I felt really comfortable with that deck. This is sick. I'm not going to read through all of this, um, but this is awesome. Photos of events are fantastic. I think more people should see what these tournaments look like. This space looks great. Uh, a lot of folks came in. You can see a lot of familiar faces. Mind you, that's Sokka. Uh, I can recognize a bunch of people in these photos. This is uh, Jason, right? I don't know. I don't think I've ever met Jason in person. Maybe I have. That's Jason. I don't know what Jason looked like. That's a uh, ghost meat. Rongi, I think. One of these guys is Rongi, I'm pretty sure. Cool. Yeah, it looks so lovely. It's just nice. Like, that's a big thing. It's like very, I, I said this before. We're running an NPC event in Montreal later this year. If an NPC was a place for like competitive players to go out and grind for tournament ladder, I would not care about it. But if it's an excuse for you to make a trip down to Toronto, to Boston, to uh, San Francisco, to Montreal, just to hang out with friends, uh, 100% would do it. That's the reason why we're doing an event. I don't care about tournament grinding. Uh, so yeah, sick. I'll plug that in the comments. I think the other thing we want to plug before we close out the stream today is that it's nice it can be both. Yeah, it definitely can be both. Like that's the most important thing. It can be both. Announcing Run Together. So this is a big thing. I don't know if Bushi is still attached to it. Was an initiative started by Danby to help more people get back into Worlds. To get to Worlds. So if you don't know, Run Together has been an initiative for the last, I think, two years. It is a set of cards that the art has been commissioned. or not even commissioned. Donated by the community, if I'm not mistaken. And that art is, those sets are sold. And then the money from that goes to a fund in which if you want to go to Worlds and finance is something that's barring you from being able to afford Worlds, uh, you can get money from this fund. It just exists to allow people more accessibility to get the worlds which is sick this article is written by ams ams has art in the set so the set is up uh 35 us dollars it gets you a fair few cards you can see them uh once we click through the link i think it's actually sold from the nsg store which is like killer like that's really really cool for them sorry europe um we'll get there uh but you can see all the art and it's all credited uh, I want to shout out some of my favorites i think they have to be very clear here and i don't think they are clear which of these are tournament legal this is actually a very big thing. If you're playing these cards at a competitive tournament event, there is a set of standards which you need to hit for your card to be tournament legal. It needs to have ID. You have to tell what faction is, what influence. So I don't know if these are all tournament legal. I hope that's something we can hear back in the near future. Uh, but some of these cards, I guess, are actually not tournament legal. Most of them are. I think IDs, like this Ken ID, I don't think says criminal on it. So I think IDs are a bit more flexible because you can. Uh, but yeah, we'll just go through all these really quickly. And all the artist credits here are at the bottom underneath my camera, which is pretty sick. So you see a bunch of names here uh, that you probably recognize. Hush is baller. Hush might be my favorite. This is Ginevra's Hush. Oh my God, it's so good. This Hush is absurd. I would buy this pack just for this Hush. Oh, this Hush is so, so good. Oh, so funny. All of them are tournament legal. Okay, that's really good to know. So we got a ping, precision design, Ken, and Afrun. That is, mind you, Afroon is the oldest clam in the world, so you get to see the clam there. End of line, my favorite. Yeah, Sure Gamble Hedge Fund. These are Zoe Hope, sick. Mitosis. Looks like, you know, old Pokemon trainer card art. That's fantastic. Uh, Hush. I don't know what the Japanese says at the top. That's Japanese, right? Uh, that's amazing. Just like Pharaoh's quiet. And then the magnet. Hermes, and we've seen these two. These are from uh, Pranik. These are from Nicola Preda. We saw these on his um, Instagram. And I was wondering where these cards existed. This is modeled after some actor. I forget from which show. This is not somebody from the community, which I thought it was. But I really love the bold colors on both of the end of line and the Hermes. I like these a lot. I have a bunch of pre nick stuff. He sent me a couple of stuff. It's great. Hedge Fund is great. Yeah, these are good. These are quite good. Uh, Run Together. This just comes with the set. It's not a playable card. It just has whose names on it. Slap Vandal. That's a really fun color. I can't read the name on that one. Uh, I have to keep moving my head around. I think that is Detente. Who also does the Oppo, if I'm not mistaken. That Oppo's sick. I think Oppo needs a good altar. That's fantastic. Get a Gatchapon with the Gatchapon machine. Can I read? Is that Extract on the name? Yeah, it's Extract. Sick. Your Digital Life, also one of my favorites from the set. I think it says, sorry that it keeps sliding up and down. I'll check the names after because it's going to be a much more pleasant experience. That's a really nice Your Digital Life. If you see the, the log of who's calling, it's all like corporation people. The Hollow Man, Drago, Lil Lily, uh, Lizzie M. That's Lizzie McGuire, I'm assuming. Jackie H. 
Jackson Howard is labeled as Jackie H. Vicky J. Oh, that's sick. That's really, really funny. You got off-world office and salvo testing. One of these are a bit more playable than others, but I think people want an off-world office. Another card NSG organized play hasn't got a promo for. This overclock is Scottaminga. And I don't know if this was a version of overclock that existed earlier and then didn't get used, but it's like the overclock art, but overclocked with additional colors. I want to know more about the history of how this card came together. That's really cool. Then we have a Vampire Nasa playing the Jazz Sax. This is from Ams. Ams, mind you, is uh, doing the article talking about that. That's really fun. This Brawn, the preview article has this Brawn in a different language. I don't know what language it is, but it says Gorfin y Radiad. Like, I don't know what language this is. That Brawn art is pretty wild. Illustration by Rianne McCullough, 2024. That's probably like some sort of Celtic or Welsh or Gaelic or something. Yeah, probably Welsh, right? Which Brawn is... Welsh, right? Right? Braun is from the north. Yeah, that's Welsh. Yeah, really, really cool. I wonder if the Welsh version's on the other side of that card. That'd be sick. And we got a big old Stavka. I think we've seen this one before. I've seen this Stavka before. Yeah, it's two-sided. Oh, sick. So it has the Welsh on it. Because this is definitely a Welsh design, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it said it slaps. It's 49 Canadian dollars. Mind you, 35 American exchange rate. That, that'll get you good. But if you want to get involved here again, also, very importantly, if you would like any sort of assistance, you want to apply for funding, hit it up here. Even if it's the smallest amount, even if it would just help you to like not worry about a food for a couple of days, please just hesitate, reach out. I think you, I don't know exactly what the workflow goes like. I think you explain what you're looking for, what could help out. And then it's up to the run together people to help, you know, get people situated with what they need. So do hit that button. Please do. Don't be ashamed of needing help or Asking for help is one of the most difficult things for humans to do. So get involved with that. Huge shout out to everyone who's donating their time and their art for this. This is such a cool initiative. It's like one of my favorite things about Netrunner. Super, super cool. 10 out of 10. Um, I think that's it. I think that's all the news we got. We'll be back on Tuesday. Thanks for hanging out. I'm glad that we found out that World Tree list. Thanks for Seb K for posting that. I've been in a bit of, I'll be honest, I've been in a bit of a slump with RWR. I cannot make anything work for me. And so like, I'm trying to do deck dives. And it's like, here's an Atea deck. It works until you play against this. And then anyways, Stavka is meant to be in the previous run together, but there was a printing error, I think. Oh, that makes sense, Sauce. Yeah, I think I've seen that one before. I want to give a huge shout out again. Thanks so much for supporting the channel. If this is something uh, that you're interested in doing, we're supporting on Patreon. I just want to shout out, we had a new Patreon on a daily cast tier. I just want to make sure I get the person's name right or I'm going to feel like a bit of a fool. But if you like what this channel does, you want to support on Patreon, the link's in the description. We have a bunch of tiers. Mind you, this is just Sure Gamble and Degree Meal tiers. We have a lot of daily cast patrons and uh, this sort of like support allows me to put the time into recording and editing and live streaming and all this sort of stuff. Audrey, are we still anticipating the NPC commentary? So I got a bunch of footage. Now, the footage for the NPC Vancouver is a bit late right now. I'm probably going to edit together the finals. However, it's probably not going to happen for a couple weeks on the basis that I'm going to be popping out for a bit uh, because we have Manager Runner. So I'll be out of town for about a week. So I have the footage to go through. We're not going to be doing all the games, but we should be doing some stuff. Richard, Richard Biram, thanks so much for supporting. World Tree already got one of the coolest upgrades in RWR. You should totally explore more. I definitely should. I think it's going to be a lot of fun, uh, but I think it's one of the more taxing ones where like, oh man, if I'm struggling, I'm going to be struggling a bit more for sure. Thanks for the stream. Gonna crash now. Yeah, Jai, get some rest. Got some long streams. If you want to watch more Netrunner, check out Axie's channel. Mind you, the like six hour finale to Fight Club is up there and it's kind of incredible as much as like the two hour final games. I'll be honest, probably isn't for everyone, but if it's for you, you know it's for you and I do, uh, I cannot recommend it enough. Shout out to all the Fight Club people doing great stuff. I think that's it. Thanks for hanging out on the Sunday. Maybe you're watching this later. We'll be back on the Tuesday. Take care of yourselves and we'll be back in a bit. Thanks for the Sunday stream. Yeah, my pleasure. We should do this more. Cheers.